Talmud, Mosque edition A-C-H-A-P-T-E-R I Mishnah woman is acquired in marriage in three ways and acquires her freedom in two she is acquired by money by deed or by intercourse by money Beth Shammai maintained a dinar or the worth of a dinar Beth Hillel rule a paratot or the worth of a paratot and how much is a paratot an eighth of an Italian isar and she acquires her freedom by divorce or by her husband's death a Yabamah is acquired by intercourse and acquires her freedom by Eliza or by the Yabam's death Gemara a woman is acquired why does he the tennis state here a woman is acquired whilst elsewhere he teaches a man may betroth etc because he wishes to state money and how do we know that money affects betrothal by deriving the meaning of taking from the field of Ephron here it is written if any man take a wife whilst there it is written I will give you money for the field take it of me moreover taking is designated a decision for it is written the field which Abraham acquired Talmud mosque edition b alternatively men shall acquire fields for money therefore he teaches a woman is acquired then let him state there a man acquires he the tana first employs biblical phraseology but subsequently the rabbinical idiom now what does the rabbinical term connote that he the husband interdicts her to all men as hitish but why not teach here a man acquires because he desires to teach the second clause and acquires her freedom which refers to her the woman he therefore teaches the first clause likewise with reference to her then let him state a man acquires and makes her acquire because there is the husband's death where it is not he who frees her but it is heaven who confers her freedom on her alternatively where it taught he acquires I might have thought even against her will hence it is stated a woman is acquired implying only with her consent but not without now why does he the tana choose to teach shalash let him teach shalasha because he desires to state Derek way which is feminine as it is written and thou shalt chew them the way wherein body must walk if so when we learned the Zab is examined in seven Shivaways Derek King let him the Tana employ Shiva because he desires to state Derek which we find designated as masculine as it is written they shall come out against thee in one way be Derek hot and flee before the seven ways Shivaday Rakim if so the verses are contradictory and the Mishnahs. Likewise the verses are not contradictory here the first verse quoted the reference being to the Torah which is a feminine noun as it is written the law Torah of the Lord is perfect Temar restoring Meshabat the soul the feminine form is employed there however the reference is to war and it is the practice of men to wage war not of woman therefore the masculine is employed the Mishnahs are likewise not contradictory here since the reference is to a woman it is couched in the Feminine form there the reference being to a man since it is the nature of a man to be examined but not of a woman for a woman becomes unclean even through an accident the masculine form is employed now why does he employ shalasha account of the ways then let him teach the barren things and shalasha because he wishes to mention intercourse which is designated way as it is written and the way of a man with a maid such is the way of an adulterous woman now that answers for intercourse. But what can you say of money indeed they are on account of intercourse and are too taught on account of one these two are adjuncts of intercourse alternatively I can say the author of this mission is Arsimian for it was taught Arsimian said why did the Torah state if any man take a wife and not if a woman be taken to a man because it is the way of a man to go in search of a woman but it is not the way of a woman to go in search of a man this may be compared to a man who lost an article. Who goes in search of whom the loser goes in search of the lost article now as to what we learned as Zav is examined in seven ways let it state seven things there we are informed this it is the nature way of excessive eating to cause gonorrhea and it is the nature way of excessive drinking to cause gonorrhea further as to what we learned the citron is comparable to a tree in three ways let him state in three things because he wishes to teach the second clause and to vegetables in one way then in the second clause two let him state and to vegetables in one thing Talmud, Mosque edition there we are informed this that the nature way of a citron is like that of vegetables just as it is the nature of vegetables to grow by means of all waters and its tithing is determined by the time when it is gathered so is it the nature of the citron to grow by means of all waters and therefore its tithing is determined by its gathering again when we learned the koi is in some ways. Similar to beasts of chase and in other ways to cattle and again in some ways to both beasts of chase and cattle and in other ways to neither beasts of chase nor cattle let it be taught in some things moreover when we learned this is one of the ways wherein women's divorce deeds are similar to slaves rates of liberation let him state this is one of the things etc but answer thus wherever a distinction is drawn ways is employed wherever there is no distinction things respects this. Taught this may be proved too for the second clause teaches our Eliza maintain the citron is equal to trees in all things this proves it what does the number of the first clause exclude and what does the number of the second exclude the number of the first clause excludes Hubba but according to our who maintained Hubba as an act of betrothal acquires a woman by inferring it a minority what does it exclude it excludes barter I might have thought since we learned the meaning of taking. From Ephron's field, and just as a field may be acquired by barter, so may a woman to be acquired by barter. Hence, we are informed otherwise, and let us say that indeed, so barter is possible with less than a paratize worth, whilst a woman will not seat herself in marriage for less than a paratize worth. Talmud, Mosque edition, be the number of the second clause excludes Eliza. For I might have thought this may be inferred a minority from a Yebamah, if a Yebamah who is not freed by divorces. Freed by Eliza, then this one, a married woman who is freed by divorce, is surely freed by Eliza. Therefore, we are informed otherwise, and let us say that indeed, so scripture states that he shall write her a writ of divorcement, thus a writ may divorce her, but nothing else may divorce her by money. Whence do we know this? Moreover, when we learn the father has a privilege over his daughter, if a minor in respect of her condition by money deed or intercourse, how do we know that she can be? Acquired by money and that the money belongs to her father said Rab Judah in Rab's name because scripture said then she shall go out for nothing without money no money is due to this master when she leaves his control but money is due to another master of his her father yet perhaps it belongs to her how now her father receives her condition on her behalf for it is written and the damsel's father shall say I gave my daughter unto this man shall she take the money surely not but perhaps. This applies only to a minor ketna who has no power to accept condition but as for Nara who is empowered to accept condition let her betroth herself and take the money the writ set in her youth in her father's house teaching all the profit of youth belongs to her father if so when Arhuna said in Rab's name whence do we know that a daughter's labor belongs to her father from the verse and if a man shall sell his daughter to be a maidservant just as a maidservant's labor belongs. To her master so does a daughter's labor belong to her father learn it rather from in her youth in her father's house but you must answer that refers to the annulment of vows so here too you must admit that it is written in reference to annulment of vows and should you argue we may learn therefrom but civil law cannot be deduced from ritual law and should you say we may learn it from keenness but civil law cannot be deduced from keenness and should you say we may learn it from the indemnity. Payable for her shame and depreciation yet shame and depreciation are different since her father has an interest therein but answer thus it is logical that when a limitation is made Talmud, Mosque condition it applies to an analogous going forth but the one departure is dissimilar to the other there see a maid servant she passes from her master's authority completely whereas here she yet wants being given over for her nevertheless she passes out of his control in respect of annulment. A vows for we learned a betrothed maiden her father and husband together may annul her vows now this verse and she shall go out for nothing does it come to teach this surely it is needed for what was taught is and she shall go out for nothing this refers to the days of Bagrath without money to the days of Nar said Rabbana if so scripture should have written and Kezif without money why writing Kezif to teach no money is due to this master but money is due to another is her father and how do you know that such exegesis is permissible because it was taught if a priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger she may not eat of an offering of the holy things but if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no in child she shall eat of her father's meat I only know that her own child disqualifies her once do I know the same of her child's child from the verse and have no in child teaching examine her for issue again I only know. That legitimate seed disqualifies her once do I know it of illegitimate this all seed from the verse and have no in child examined her for any issue whatsoever but you have employed this for her child's child for her child's child no verse is required because grandchildren are as children hence the verse is required only for her illegitimate seed now how does the Tana himself know that such exegesis is permissible I will tell you it
One Hebrew slave acquired in perpetuity Sakir one purchased for a period of six years now let Tashav be stated but not Sakir and I would reason if one acquired in perpetuity may not eat how much more so one purchased only for a period of six years were it so I would say Tashav is one purchased for a limited period but one acquired in perpetuity may eat therefore Sakir comes and illuminates the meaning of Tashav teaching that though he is purchased forever he may not eat said Abeju. Him how compare there they are two persons and even had scripture explicitly written Tasha whose ear was bored and then added the other Sakir would be something which might be inferred a minori and a thing which is derived a minori scripture often takes the trouble to write but here in the case of a maidservant she is only one person having departed in an arith what business has she with him in Bagruth but said Abay it is necessary only for the majority of a constitutionally barren. Woman I might have thought she a Hebrew maidservant is freed only by Naarith but not by Bagruth hence we are informed otherwise Marsan of Arashi demurred but does this not follow a minori of symptoms of Naarith which do not free her from parental authority free her from her master's authority then Bagruth which liberates from parental authority surely liberates her from her master's authority but said Marsan of Arashi this is necessary only in respect of the sale itself of a barren. Woman I might have thought with one who will subsequently produce evidence of NAR if the sale is valid but with one who will not produce such evidence the sale is altogether invalid Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and be therefore the verse and she shall go out for nothing etc. teaches us otherwise now according to Marsan of Arashi who objected does this not follow a minori but we have said scripture takes pains to write something which could be inferred a minori that is only if no other answer is possible but if it is we answer but this tana is it from the following for it was taught when a man taketh a wife and hath intercourse with her then it shall be if she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some unseemly thing in her etc. taking is only by means of money and thus it is written I will give the money for the field take it of me but does this not follow a minori of a Hebrew maid servant who cannot be acquired by intercourse can be acquired by money this one a wife. Who may be acquired in marriage by intercourse can surely be acquired by money. Let a Yebama prove the contrary. She may be acquired by intercourse, yet she is not acquired by money. As for a Yebama, that may be because she cannot be acquired by deed. Will you say the same of this one? A wife who can be acquired by deed. Therefore, scripture teaches when a man taketh, etc. But what need of a verse for this? It has been inferred, said Arashi, because one can argue the deduction is vitiated of initia. Whence do you this is from a Hebrew maid servant? As for a Hebrew maid servant, that her acquisition is by money is because she is freed by money. Will you say the same of this one? A wife who is not freed by money. Therefore, scripture teaches when a man taketh a wife now both and she shall go out for nothing. And when a man taketh must be written for had scripture written. When a man taketh, I would have thought the condition given to her by the husband is her own. Therefore, scripture also writes. And she shall go out for nothing and had scripture written and she shall go out for nothing I would have thought if she the wife gives him the husband money and betrothed him it is valid kiddush and therefore scripture wrote when a man taketh but not when a woman taketh and hath intercourse with her this teaches that she may be acquired by intercourse but does this not follow a minori of a Yebama who cannot be acquired by money is acquired by intercourse then this one a wife who is acquired by money can surely be acquired by intercourse let a Hebrew maidservant prove the contrary for she may be acquired by money yet she is not acquired by intercourse as for a Hebrew maidservant that is because her acquisition is not for conjugal purposes will you say the same of this one who is acquired for conjugal purposes therefore it is stated and has intercourse with her but what need of a verse it has been inferred said Arashi because one can argue the deduction is vitiated of initia. Whence do you this it from a Yebama is for a Yebama that is because she already stands tied can you say the same of this one who does not stand tied therefore it is taught and hath intercourse with her Talmud, Mos Kiddush and whence do we know that a woman may be acquired by deed too but may it not be inferred a minority of money which cannot free effects betrothal and deed which frees can surely tie no as for money that is because Hippish and second tithe can be redeemed. Therewith can you say likewise of a deed by which Hippish and second tithe cannot be redeemed for it is written and if he that sanctified the field will in any wise redeem it then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation and it shall be assured to him therefore scripture saith and when she is departed out of his house she may go and be another man's wife thus becoming betrothed is assimilated to departure divorce just as the departure is by deed so is becoming too. Then let departure be assimilated to becoming just as the becoming may be by money so the departure too may be affected by money of a reply then it will be said money unites and money sunders shall the defender become the prosecutor if so of deed too it will be said deed sunders and deed unites shall the prosecutor become the defender the contents of each deed are distinct and here too the purpose of this money is distinct and that of the other is distinct nevertheless the impressive. The coin is the same Rabbah said scripture saith then he shall write her a writ of divorcement hence she can be divorced by writing not by money say rather she can be divorced by writing but not betrothed by writing but it is written and when she is departed she may go and be etc assimilating etc and why do you choose thus it is logical when treating of divorce one excludes a particular method of divorce but when dealing with divorce shall one exclude a form of marriage surely not. Now according to our Jose the Galilean who utilizes this verse then he shall write etc for a different purpose how do we know that she cannot be divorced by money the writ saith the writ of divorcement a deed can divorce her but nothing else can divorce her now how do the rabbis employ this word divorcement they employ it to show that it must be an instrument which completely sunders them from each other even as it was taught if the husband says behold here is your divorce on condition that you drink no wine or do not visit your father's house forever that is no divorcement for 30 days that is a divorcement and our Jose the Galilean he deduces it from the use of kiratath instead of koreth and the rabbis in their opinion the use of kiratath instead of koreth has no particular significance now one could not be inferred from another yet let one be inferred from two others which could be inferred should scripture omit deed that it might be inferred from the others but as for the others that is because their pleasure is great should scripture omit intercourse that it might be inferred from the others but as for the others that is because their powers of acquisition are great should scripture omit money that it might be inferred from the others but as for the others that is because they have compulsory powers and should you argue money too has compulsory powers over a Hebrew maid servant nevertheless we do not find this in respect to conjugal relationship are who not said hubba acquires a woman a minority of money which does not authorize one to eat terima affects possession and hubba which authorizes one to eat terima surely affects possession yet does not money authorize the eating of terima but Allah said by biblical law nourism may eat of terima for it is said and if a priest acquire any soul the purchase of his money he shall eat out and this one a betrothed woman too is the purchase of his money why then did they the sages say that she May not eat thereof for fear lest a cup of wine of terima be mixed for her in her father's house and she give it to drink to her brothers and sisters but argue thus if money which does not complete marriage acquires in marriage then hubba which completes marriage surely acquires as for money it may be asked that is because if it's hot and second tithe are redeemed therewith let then intercourse prove it as for intercourse that is because it acquires in the case of a yebama then let money prove it and thus the argument revolves the distinguishing feature of one is not that of the other nor is the distinguishing of this one that of the other the feature common to both is that they acquire elsewhere and acquire here in marriage so do I it is hubba which acquires elsewhere and acquires here to no talmud mosque and be the feature common to both is that they confer much pleasure let deed then prove it as for deed that is because it frees an israelitish daughter then let money and cohabitation prove it and thus the argument revolves the distinguishing feature of one is not that of another nor is the distinguishing feature of this one that of the other the feature common to all is that they acquire in general and here too so do I discover that it acquires in general and here too no as for the common feature it is that they have powers of compulsion and are who money at least has no compulsory powers in matrimonial relationships Rabbah said there are two refutations of the matter firstly we learn three not four and secondly can then have a complete marriage but through prior condition are we then to deduce how when not as a result of condition from the same one preceded by condition have answered him as for your objection we learn three not four only what is explicitly stated in scripture is taught but not what is not explicitly stated and as to
The condition is valid the first clause is exact while the second is mentioned incidentally but may a statement be made in the second clause contradictory to the first but this is its meaning if he gives the money and he speaks the condition is obviously valid but if he gives and she speaks it is accounted as though she both gives and speaks so that the condition is not valid alternatively if he gives and speaks she is betrothed if she gives and speaks she is certainly not betrothed but if he gives and she speaks it is doubtful and as a rabbinical measure we fear the validity of the condition Samuel said in respect to condition if he gave her money or its equivalent and declares behold our consecrated behold our betrothed or behold our wife then she is betrothed if he declares behold I am thy husband behold I am thy master behold I am thy ours there are no grounds for fear the same applies to divorce if he gives her the document of divorce and declares behold our sent forth behold our divorced or thou art henceforth permitted to any man then she is divorced but if he declares I am not thy husband I am not thy master I am not thy ours there are no grounds for fear our papa said to Abbe shall we say that in Samuel's opinion and explicit abbreviations are valid abbreviations but we learned if one declares I will be he becomes a nazir now we pondered thereon but perhaps he meant I will fast and Samuel answer ed that is only if a Nazir was passing before him thus it is only because a Nazir was passing before him but not otherwise the circumstances here are that he said unto me if so what does he inform us his teaching is with respect to these Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and the latter expressions for here it is written when any man taketh a woman but not that he taketh himself as a husband and there it is written and when he sent her away but not that he sends himself away or rabbis taught if one declares. Behold thou art my wife behold thou art my Rosa behold thou art acquired to me she is betrothed behold thou art mine behold thou art under my authority thou art tied unto me she is betrothed then let them all be combined and taught in one clause the Tana heard each three separately and memorized them in that order the scholars propounded what if one declares thou art singled out for me thou art designated unto me thou art my help thou art meet for me thou art gathered into me thou art. My rib thou art closed into me thou art my replacement thou art kept ceased unto me or thou art taken by me one at least you may solve for it was taught if one declares thou art taken by me she is betrothed for it is written when a man taketh a wife the scholars propounded what of thou art my hair of a betrothed come and here for it was taught if a man declares be thou my hair of she is betrothed for in Judea and Rosa is called hair of is Judea then the greater part of the world it is. Meant thus if he declares be thou my hair of she is betrothed for it is said that is a bond made near Rebeth betrothed to a man moreover in Judea and Rosa is called hair is the practice in Judea to support scripture but it means thus if he says in Judea be thou my hair of she is betrothed because in Judea and Rosa is called hair what are the circumstances shall we say that he was not speaking to her about her divorce or kiddush how does she know what he means but if he was speaking to her about her divorce or kiddush and then even if he said nothing at all but gave her money she is also betrothed for we learned if a man was speaking to a woman on matters concerning her divorce or betrothal and gave her her divorce or kiddush but made no explicit declaration our jose said it is sufficient our judah maintained he must make an explicit declaration whereon our said in samuel's name the halacha agrees with our jose i will tell you after all it refers to a case where he was speaking to her about her divorce or betrothal now had he given her the money or the deed of divorce and remained silent that indeed would be so but the circumstances here are that he gave them to her and made one of these declarations and this is the problem did he employ these expressions in the sense of kiddush or perhaps he meant them in reference to work the question stand over the above text stated if a man was speaking to a woman on matters concerning her divorce or betrothal and gave her her divorce or condition but made no explicit declaration our Jose said it is sufficient our Judah maintained he must make an explicit declaration said Rab Judah in Samuel's name providing that they were engaged on that topic when the divorce or condition was given our Eliezer said likewise in our Ashai's name providing that they were engaged on that topic this is disputed by Tanaim Rabbi said providing that they were engaged on that topic our Eliezer son of our Simeon said even if they were not engaged on that topic but if they were not engaged on that topic how does she know what he meant Abay answered they traveled from one matter to another in the same topic our Huna said in Samuel's name the Halacha agrees with our Jose our Yamar asked our Ashi then when Rab Judah said in Samuel's name he who does not know the peculiar nature of divorce and betrothal should have no business with them does it hold good even if he is ignorant of this ruling of our Huna in Samuel's name even so he replied the same applies to divorce if he gives her the document of divorce and declares behold thou art sent forth behold thou art divorced or thou art permitted to any man then she is divorced now it is obvious if he gives a divorce to his wife and says to her behold thou art a free woman Talmud, Mos Kiddush and be his words are null if he says to his female slave thou art permitted to all men his words are likewise null but what if he says to his wife behold thou art for thyself do we say he meant it in respect of labor or perhaps he meant it absolutely said Rabbanu to our Ashi come and here for we learned the essential part of a deed of monumission is behold thou art a free man behold thou art for thyself now if a heathen slave whose body belongs to him is master yet when he says to him behold thou art for thyself he means it absolutely how much more so in the case of a wife who does not belong bodily to him Rabbanu ask our Ashi what if he says to his slave I have no concern with you do we say he means I have absolutely no concern with you or perhaps he says it to him in reference to work our nom and observe to our ashi other state our huna opposes to our ashi come and here if one sells his heathen slave to a heathen he is emancipated and requires a deed of monumission from his first master said our simian b argamaliel when does this hold good if he the vendor did not make out for him an oni but if he did that is his deed of emancipation what is meant by when I said our she's hate if you wrote for him when you escape from him the heathen buyer I have no concern with you have said if a man betrothes a woman with a debt she is not betrothed with the benefit of a debt she is betrothed yet this may not be done as it constitutes an evasion of usury this benefit of a debt how is it meant shall we say that he fixed the interest as a loan he having said I am lending you for Zeus for five but that is real usury moreover it is in point of Fact a debt this holds good only if he extended the term for repayment Rabbi said if he says take this main on condition that you return it to me in respect to purchase he acquires no title in the case of a woman she is not betrothed in the matter of redemption of the firstborn the firstborn is not redeemed in respect of terima he fulfills the duty of giving yet it is forbidden to act thus as it looks like a priest who assists in the threshing floor what is Rabbi's opinion if he holds that a gift on condition that it be returned is a valid gift and even the others two are valid whilst if he holds that it is not a valid gift and even in the case of terima it is not valid furthermore it was Rabbi who ruled a gift on condition that it is returned is valid for Rabbi said if one says to another here you have the citron on condition that you return it to me if the other takes and then returns it he fulfills his duty if not he does not fulfill it but said our Ashi in the Case of all it the conditional gift is valid with the exception in that of a woman because a woman cannot be acquired by barter Arunam our son of our Nehemiah said to our Ashi we teach in Rabba's name even as you have stated Rabba said if a woman says give a mana to so and so Talmud, Mos Kiddush and I will become betrothed to thee she is betrothed by the law of assurity assurity though he personally derives no benefit from the loan yet obligates himself to repayment so this woman too. Though she personally derives no benefit from the money obligates and seeds herself in betrothal if a man says take this mana and be betrothed to so and so she is betrothed by the law of a Canaanite slave a Canaanite slave though he himself loses nothing yet acquires himself his freedom so this man too though he personally loses nothing acquires this woman if the woman declares give a mana to so and so and I will become betrothed to him she is betrothed by the laws of both assurity. Though he personally derives no benefit obligates himself so this woman too though she personally derives no benefit seats herself and should you object how compare as for a surety he who acquires a title loses money but shall this man acquire the woman at no cost to himself then let a Canaanite slave prove it who loses no money and yet acquires himself and if you demur how compare there he who gives possession acquires the money given for the slave's freedom but here shall this woman seat herself though she acquires nothing whatsoever then let a surety prove it though he personally
not betrothed have they demurred before Rabbah? Why does half of thee be betrothed to me differ that she is not betrothed? Because scripture said, when a man take a wife but not half a wife, then here too scripture said, a man but not half a man. How now you rejoin there a woman is not eligible to two men but is not a man eligible to two women. Hence this is what he said to her, should I desire to marry another? I may do so. Marzitra son of Armari said to Rabbah, yet let the condition spread through. The whole of her has it not been taught if one declares let the foot of this animal be a burnt offering the whole of it is a burnt offering and even on the view that it is not all a burnt offering that is only if one dedicates a limb upon which life is not dependent but if he dedicates a limb upon which life is dependent e.g. the heart it is all a burnt offering how compare there it is an animal whereas here we have an independent mind this can only be compared with our Yohanan's dictum animal belonging to two partners if one of them dedicates half and then purchases it the other half and dedicates it it is holy it cannot be offered up and it establishes the sanctity of a substitute and the substitute is as itself this proves three things Talmud, Moskidish and Bialib animals may be rendered permanently rejected two that which is rejected of initio is rejected three rejection applies to monetary sanctity Rabbah propounded what if one declares I happy. Betrothed to me for half a parata and the other half for half a parata since he says to her for half a parata he divided it or perhaps he was proceeding with his enumeration should you rule he was proceeding with his enumeration what if he declares I have be betrothed unto me for a parata and the other half for a parata since he said to her for a parata and a parata he divided his proposal or perhaps providing it was on the same day he was proceeding with his enumeration should you answer providing it was on the same day he was proceeding with his enumeration what if he declares I have be betrothed to me for a parata today and the other half for a parata tomorrow since he said to her tomorrow he divided it or perhaps he meant thus the condition commence immediately but shall not be completed until tomorrow further what if he says that two halves for a parata here he certainly proposed to her in once or perhaps a woman cannot be betrothed at all by have the question stand over Rabba propounded what if he declares thy two daughters be betrothed to my two sons for a parata do we consider the giver and the receiver so that there is money or perhaps we consider them who betrothed and are betrothed and there is not the question stands over our papa propounded what if he declares thy daughter and thy cow be mine for a parata do we say it means thy daughter for half a parata and thy cow for half a parata or perhaps he meant thy daughter by a parata and thy cow by meshika the question stands over our ashi propounded what if one declares thy daughter and thy land be mine for a parata does he mean thy daughter for half a parata and thy land for half a parata or perhaps thy daughter for a parata and thy land by Hazaka the question stands over a certain man betrothed a woman with silk wrapper ruled no valuation is necessary our Joseph maintained it must be valued now if he declared to her be thou betrothed to me for whatever it is worth all agree that valuation is unnecessary if he declared to her be thou betrothed to me for fifty zoos and this the silk is not worth fifty then of course it is not worth it they differ only if he stipulated fifty and it was worth fifty rabbi maintained prior valuation is unnecessary since it is worth fifty our joseph said prior valuation is required since the woman has no expert knowledge of its value she does not rely there on other state they disagree in the case of for whatever it is worth to our joseph maintained the equivalent of money must be as money itself just as the latter is definite talmud moskidish and so must the equivalent be definite our joseph said once do i know it for it was taught if there be yet many years according unto them he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money with which he was acquired thus he may be acquired by money but not by produce or utensils now what is meant by produce or utensils shall we say that he cannot be acquired through these at all but scripture says he shall return the price of his redemption to include the equivalent of money as money whilst if they are worth less than a parata why specify produce and utensil the same applies to money too hence it must surely mean that they are worth a parata but since they are not definite they cannot acquire the slave and the other this is its meaning he can be acquired in virtue of money but not in virtue of produce or utensils and what is that barter but according to our nomin who rule produce cannot affect the barter what can be said but after all it means that they are not worth a parata and as to your objection why specify produce and utensils the same applies to money the tana proceeds to a climax thus it is unnecessary to state that money only if worth a parata is it valid not otherwise but as for produce and utensils i might argue since the benefit derived is immediate he resolves and lets Himself be acquired, therefore we are informed otherwise. Our Joseph said, How do I know it? For it was taught if one declares this calf be for my son's redemption, this garment be for my son's redemption, his declaration is invalid, this calf worth five sellers be for my son's redemption, or this garment worth five sellers be for my son's redemption, his son is redeemed. Now, how is this redemption meant? Shall we say that if the calf or the garment is not worth five sellers, does it rest with him? Hence it must surely mean even if it is worth it, yet since it was not defined, it is not valid. No, after all, it means that it was not worth it, but we suppose the priest accepted it for the full value, as in the case of Arkahana who accepted a scarf for a son's redemption, observing to him to me it is worth five sellers. Our Ashi said this holds good only of e.g. a man like Arkahana who is a great man and needs a scarf for his head, but not a people in general. Thus it happened that Mar son of Ar. As she bought a scarf from the mother of Rabbi of Kilby worth 10 for 13 R. Eliezer said if a man declares be betrothed to me with a mina and he gives her a dinar she is betrothed and he must complete the amount why since he stipulated a mina but gave her a dinar it is as though he had said to her on condition that I give you a mina and Arunah said in Rab's name he who says on condition is as though he says from now an objection is raised if a man declares be betrothed to me with a mina and is proceeding with the counting out of the money and either party which is to retract even at the last dinar he or she can do so the reference here is to one who declares with this mina but since the second clause refers to this mina the first treats of an unspecified mina for the second clause teaches if he declares to her be thou betrothed unto me by this mina and it is found to be a mina short of a dinar or containing a copper dinar she is not betrothed if it contained a debased dinar she is betrothed but he must change it no the first and the second clauses both refer to with this main of the second being explanatory of the first thus if either party wishes to retract even at the last dinar he or she can do so how so e.g. if he said to her for this main reason to supports this view for should you think that the first clause refers to an unspecified main seeing that it is not kiddush in the case of an unspecified main is it necessary to teach it in the case of for this main as for the tight does not prove it the second clause may be stated in order to eliminate the first that you should not say the first clause deals with this main but in the case of an unspecified main it is valid kiddush and therefore the second clause is taught with reference to this main once it follows that the first refers to an unspecified main yet even so the kiddush is null or as she said if he is proceeding with the counting it is different because then we Assume her mind is set on the wholesome this copper dinar how is it meant if she knew thereof and she understood and accepted this is only if he gave it to her at night or she found it among the other Zeus how is this debased dinar meant if it has no currency is it not the same as a copper dinar said our papa Egypt circulates with difficulty Rabbah said in Arnaman's name if he says to her be thou betrothed to me with a mina and gives her a pledge on it she is not betrothed Talmud, Moss. Kiddush and be here is neither a mina nor a pledge Rabbah raised an objection against Arnaman if he betrothed her with a pledge she is betrothed there the reference is to a pledge belonging to others and it is in accordance with our Isaac for our Isaac said how do we know that a creditor has a title to a pledge because it is written and if the man before thou shalt not sleep with his pledge thou shalt surely restore to him the pledge when the sun goeth down and it shall be accounted unto thee. Charitable deed if he has no title thereto once is his charity this proves that the creditor has a title to the pledge the sons of Arhuna be Abin bought a female slave for copper coins not having them the coins at hand they gave a silver ingot in pledge subsequently the slave's value increased so they came before our said he to them there are neither coins nor an ingot our rabbis taught if a man says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me with a mina and she takes and throws it into the see the fire or into anything where it is lost she is not betrothed and if she throws it down before him it is valid kiddushin but she thereby declares to him take it I do not want it he the tana proceeds to a climax thus it is unnecessary to state that if
The case of so and so I might have thought that only there is a condition invalid when she says give it to so and so because she is not sufficiently intimate with him to present it the minute to him as a gift but as for my father or thy father with whom she is intimate I might think that she was making a gift of it to them thus both are necessary our rabbis taught if he says be thou betrothed unto me with a mina and she replies place it on a rock she is not betrothed but if the rock was hers she is betrothed rbb asked what if the rock belonged to both of them the question stands over if he says be thou betrothed unto me for a loaf of bread and she replies give it to the dog she is not betrothed but if it was her dog she is betrothed armari asked what if the dog was pursuing her do we say that in return for the benefit of saving herself from it she resolves and cedes herself to him or perhaps she can say to him by biblical law you were indeed bound to save me the Question stands over if he says be thou betrothed unto me with a loaf and she replies give it to the poor man she is not betrothed even if he was a poor man who relies on her why she can say to him just as I have a duty towards him so hast thou a duty to him a man was selling Talmud, mosque edition glass beads when a woman came and said to him give me a string of these if I give it you he replied will you become betrothed to me oh indeed do give it to me she retorted said arham every such expression oh indeed do give it to me means nothing a man was drinking wine in a tavern when a woman came and said to him give me a cup if I give you he replied will you become betrothed to me oh indeed do let me have a drink she retorted said arham every such expression oh indeed do let me have a drink means nothing a man was throwing down dates from a palm tree when a woman came and said to him throw me down too if I throw them down to you he replied will you become betrothed to me Oh, indeed, do throw them down. She retorted, said Arzi, but every such expression, oh, indeed, do throw them down, means nothing. The scholars propounded, what if she replies, give me, let me drink, or throw them down. Rubin rule, she is betrothed. Arsamia Biratha said, by the royal crown, she is not betrothed, and the law is she is not betrothed. The law is also the silk needs no valuation, and the law agrees with our Eliezer, and the law agrees with Rabbis dictum, and our name, our rabbis taught by deed. How so if he writes for be on a paper or a chart, even if not intrinsically worth a parata, thy daughter be consecrated unto me, thy daughter be betrothed unto me, or thy daughter be my wife, she is betrothed, Arzara be mammal demurred, but this deed is dissimilar from a deed of purchase there. The vendor writes, my field is sold to thee, whereas here the husband writes, thy daughter be consecrated unto me. Robber replied, there the form is determined by scriptural context, and here likewise by scriptural. Context there it is written and he sells some of his possessions thus scripture made it dependent on the vendor whereas here it is written when a man taketh a woman thus making it dependent upon the husband but there too it is written men shall buy fields for money red men shall transmit i.e. sell now why do you read transmit because it is written and he sell and here too read if a man be taken for it is written I gave my daughter unto this man for wife but said Rabbi these are traditional laws which the rabbi supported by scriptural verses alternatively there too it is written so I took the deed of the purchase Rabbi said in our Naman's name if one writes on a paper or chart even if not intrinsically worth a parata thy daughter be consecrated unto me thy daughter be betrothed unto me or thy daughter be my wife whether she accepts it through her father or herself she is betrothed by his sc her father's consent providing that she has not attained her majority if he writes on a paper or a chart, even if not intrinsically worth a parata, behold, thou art consecrated unto me, behold, thou art my wife, behold, thou art betrothed unto me, she is betrothed, whether it is accepted by her father or herself with her consent, providing that she is of age. Our Simeon Belakish propounded what if a deed of betrothal was not written expressly for her sake, do we assimilate modes of betrothal to divorce just as Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and be divorce must be expressly for her sake, so must betrothal be two or perhaps different modes of betrothal are assimilated to each other just as betrothal by money need not be for her sake, so betrothal by deed need not be for her sake. After putting the question, he himself decided it betrothal is assimilated to divorce for scripture rights, and when she is departed, i.e., divorced, she may be another man's wife. It has been stated if the deed of betrothal is written for her sake, but without her knowledge, Rabba and Rabbin rule she is. Betrothed our papa and our Sharabia say she is not betrothed said our papa I will explain their reason and I will explain mine I will explain their reason because it is written and when she is departed she may be another man's wife assimilating betrothal to divorce just as divorce must be written for her sake yet without her consent so must betrothal be for her sake yet without her consent and I will explain my reason and when she departed then she shall be etc this assimilates betrothal to divorce as in divorce the giver's knowledge is required so in betrothal the giver's knowledge is required an objection is raised deeds of Arison and Nisuin may only be written with the knowledge of both surely actual deeds of Arison and Nisuin are meant no the reference is to deeds of apportionment and it is in accordance with our Gittles dictum in Rab's name is how much do you give your son so much how much do you give your daughter so much if they thereupon arose and made a Betrothal they acquire a title to the promised sums and these are the things which are acquired by a verbal undertaking or by intercourse whence do we know this Arabab said in our Yohanan's name because scripture said if a man be found lying with a woman who had intercourse with a husband thus teaching that he became her husband through intercourse Arzara said to Arabab others state Rush Lakish said to our Yohanan is this what Rabbi taught on satisfactory is when a man taketh a wife and hath intercourse with her this teaches that she is acquired by intercourse if from there I might have thought he must first betroth her e.g. by money and then cohabit with her therefore we are informed otherwise our Abu Bimamal objected if so when scripture decrees stoning in the case of a betrothed maiden how is it conceivable if he first betrothed and then cohabited with her she is a beulah if he betrothed but did not cohabit with her it is nothing the rabbis answered this before Abbe, it is possible if the Arus cohabited with her unnaturally thereupon Abbe observed to them even Rabbi and the Rabbis dispute this matter only in reference to a stranger but as for the husband all agree that if he cohabits with her unnaturally he renders her a Beula what is this for it was taught if ten men cohabited unnaturally with her as a betrothed maiden and she is still a virgin all are stoned Rabbi said I maintain the first is stoned but the rest are strangled our nomin B. Isaac said it would be possible if he betrothed her by deed since it completely sunders it completely unites and our Yohanan how does he utilize this and hath intercourse with her he needs that to shishi a wife is acquired by cohabitation but not a Hebrew bond made for I might have thought it may be inferred a minori from the Yebamah if a Yebamah who cannot be acquired by money is acquired by cohabitation this one Hebrew bond made who can be acquired by money may surely be acquired by Cohabitation no as for a Yebamah that is because she is already tied I might have argued since it is written if he take him another wife scripture compared her the bonds made to the other the wife just as the other is acquired by intercourse so is a Hebrew bonds made acquired thus therefore we are informed otherwise and Rabbi how does he know this conclusion if so scripture should have written and hath intercourse why state and hath intercourse with her thus both are deduced but according to Rabbi who said Barah he not explained it to me when a man taketh a woman and hath intercourse with her this teaches condition that can be followed by intercourse is valid condition that which cannot be followed by intercourse is not valid condition what can one say if so scripture should have written or hath intercourse with her why state and hath intercourse with her thus all are inferred and Rabbi how does he employ this phrase who had intercourse be with the husband he utilizes it to teach her husband renders her a beulah unnaturally but not a stranger but does rabbi hold this view has it not been taught if ten men cohabited unnaturally with her as a betrothed maiden and she is still a virgin all are stoned rabbi said I maintain the first is stoned but the rest are strangled Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and Asar rabbi admits in respect to the fine that they must all pay wherein does it differ from the death penalty there it is different because scripture writes and the man alone that lay with her shall die and the rabbis how do they employ this word alone they need it even as it was taught if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband and they shall both of them die this implies they must both be equal as one this is our Josiah's view our Jonathan maintained and the man alone that lay with her shall die and our Yohanan how does he know this ruling if so scripture should have written who had intercourse with a man what? State who had intercourse with the husband hence both are inferred the scholars propounded does the beginning of intercourse
Reference to the other privileges Rabbis said come and hear a maiden aged three years and a day may be betrothed by intercourse and if the Abam has intercourse with her he acquires her the penalty of adultery may be incurred through her if a menstruant she defiles him who has connections with her Talmud, Mos Kiddush and be so that he in turn defile that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon the Zab if she married a priest she may partake of Teramah if any of the forbidden. Degrees interdicted by scripture cohabited with her they are executed on her account but she is exempt if an unfit person cohabits with her he disqualifies her from priesthood thus here too intercourse is taught and also if she married this may be its meaning if this marriage was with a priest she may partake of Teramah come and hear Yohanan be bag bag had already sent word to Arjuna be with her at Nisibis I have heard of you that you maintain an Arisa the daughter of an Israelite. Betrothed to a priest may he Teramah he sent back and do you not rule likewise I am certain of you that you are well versed in the profundities of the Torah and able to infer a minori do you not know if a Gentile bondmaid whose intercourse does not permit her to eat of Teramah yet her money permits her to eat of Teramah and this one in Arisa whose intercourse with a priest permits her to eat of Teramah surely her money permits her to eat Teramah but what can I do seeing that the sages Ruled in Arisa, the daughter of an Israelite may not eat Teramah until she enters Hava house. So, if the reference is to intercourse following Hava and money followed by Hava, in both cases she may certainly eat. But if to intercourse with Hava and money without Hava, here there are two. While there is only one, hence it must surely refer to both intercourse and money without Hava. Now, if you say that it intercourse affects Nisuin, it is well, hence it is obvious to him that intercourse is stronger than money. But if you say that it affects only Kiddush and Ayyaris, and why is he certain in the one case and doubtful in the other? Said Arnam and B. Isaac, after all, I can tell you that the reference is to intercourse with Hava and money without Hava. And as to your objection, here there are two. While there is only one, nevertheless, the Amenori proposition holds good, and it was thus he sent word to him if a Gentile bondmaid whose intercourse does not permit her to eat of Teramah. Even after Hava yet her money even without Hava authorizes her to eat Teramah and this one whose intercourse when accompanied by Hava permits her to eat Teramah surely her money even without intercourse permits her to eat Teramah but what can I do seeing that the sages ruled in Arusa the daughter of an Israelite may not partake of Teramah until she enters Hava on account of Ola's statement and Yohanan be bag bag in the case of a Gentile bondmaid he omits nothing of her acquisition. But here he has left undone part of her acquisition Rabbin has said by biblical law he was quite certain that she may eat and it was only by rabbinical law that here Yohanan be bag bag sent word to him that she is forbidden and he sent us to him I have heard of you that you rule in Arusa the daughter of an Israelite may eat of Teramah and you disregard the possibility of nullification he sent back and do you not rule likewise I am certain that you are well versed in the profundities of it. Torah and able to infer a minority do you not know if a Gentile bondmaid whose intercourse does not permit her to eat Teramah yet her money does and we do not fear the possibility of nullification and this one SC and Arisa whose intercourse permits her to eat Teramah surely her money does and we may disregard the possibility of nullification but what can I do seeing that the sages rule in Arisa the daughter of an Israelite may not partake of Teramah Talmud, Mos Kiddush and until she enters Hava on account of Ola's statement and the son of Bagbag he disregards the possibility of nullification in the case of slaves if there are open bodily defects then he has seen them if on account of concealed bodily defects what does it matter to him he needs him for work and so does not care if he the slave is found to be a thief or a rogue he is his what can you say he was discovered to be an armed robber or proscribed by the state these are well known let us see both agree. That she and Arisa may not eat wherein and do they differ they differ where he the husband accepted bodily defects or he the father delivered her to the husband's messengers to be taken to her husband's home or if they the father's messengers were on the way with the husband's messengers to escort the bride to her new home by money Beth Shammai maintained by a dinar etc. What is Beth Shammai's reason said Arzera because a woman is particular about herself and will not permit herself to become betrothed with less than a dinar they objected to him if so then eg are Janay's daughters who are particular about themselves and will not become betrothed with less than a tarka full of denarii if she stretches out her hand and accepts a Zeus from a stranger as Kiddushin is a Kiddushin indeed invalid he replied if she stretches out her hand and accepts I do not say thus I refer to a case where he betrothes her at night or if she appoints an agent are Joseph said Beth. Shammai's reason is in accordance with Rab Judah's dictum in R.C.'s name is wherever money is mentioned in scripture Tyrian coinage is meant whereas the rabbinical usage refers to provincial coinage and was stated above Rab Judah said in R.C.'s name whenever money is mentioned in scripture Tyrian coinage is meant whereas the rabbinical usage refers to provincial coinage now is this a universal rule Talmud, Mos Kiddush and B but what of a claim concerning which it is written if a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or utensils to keep etc. yet we learned the oath taken before judges is imposed for a minimum claim of two silver myhs and an admission of a paratather it is similar to utensils just as utensils implies at least two so must money refer to two coins and just as money implies something of worth so does utensils mean something of worth but what of the second tithe in regard to which it is written then thou shalt turn it into money and bind up it. Money in thine hand yet we learned if one changes a sell out second tithe copper coins the money is an extension but what of Hippish concerning which it is written then he shall give the money and it shall be assured to him yet Samuel said if Hippish worth a mina is redeemed with the equivalent of a pair of tithe is redeemed thereto we deduce the meaning of money from tithes but what of a woman's kiddushin concerning which it is written when a man taketh a wife and marry her and we deduce the meaning of taking from the field of Ephraim yet we learned Bethilel rule by a pair or the worth of a pair shall we say then that R.C. ruled in accordance with Beth Shammai but if stated it was stated thus Rab Judah said in R.C.'s name whenever a fixed sum of money is mentioned in the Torah Tyrian coinage is meant whereas the rabbinical usage refers to provincial currency then what does he teach us we have already learned that the five cell is mentioned in connection with a Firstborn the thirty of a slave, the fifty of a ravisher, and a seducer, and the hundred of a slanderer, all these are computed by the holy shekel according to the Tyrian mena he wishes to state, whereas the rabbinical term refers to provincial currency which we did not learn, for we learned if one boxes his neighbor's ears he must pay him a sellah. Now you should not say what is a sellah for Zeus, but what is a sellah half a Zeus, for it happens that people call half a Zeus is here, are Simeon be like said. Beth Shammai's reason is in accordance with Hezekiah, for Hezekiah said scripture said, then shall he let her be redeemed. This teaches that she deducts from her redemption money and goes out free. Now if you say that he the master gave her a dinar, it is well, hence she can go on deducting until a paratah, but if you say that he gave her a paratah, what can be deducted from a paratah, but perhaps scripture ordered thus if he gave her a dinar, she can go on deducting until a paratah, but if he Gave her a paratah she cannot deduct at all Talmud, Mos Kiddush and you cannot think so for it is similar to designation just as designation though he the master can designate her or not as he will yet where he may not designate her the sale is invalid so here too where he cannot deduct the sale is invalid and a woman's Kiddush according to Beth Shammai is deduced from a Hebrew maid servant just as a Hebrew maid servant cannot be acquired for a paratah so a woman cannot be betrothed by a paratah then say half a dinar or two paratah since a paratah was excluded it was fixed at a dinar Rabbah said this is Beth Shammai's reason is that the daughters of Israel should not be treated as Hefker and Beth Hillel rule by a paratah or Joseph thought to rule a paratah whatever it is said obey to him but thereon we learned and how much is a paratah an eighth of an Italian is and should you answer that was only in the time of Moses but nowadays it is as generally estimated but when are Dimi came he said our semi computed in his time how much is a paratai an eighth of an Italian isar and when Rabin came he said our dostai our and our Oshia estimated how much is a paratai a sixth of an Italian isar our Joseph answered him if so when we learned go out and estimate how many paratas are there in two cells more than two thousand seeing that there are not even two thousand can he the tana call it more than two thousand thereupon
In media, but we learned Bethilel rule by a paratah or the worth of a paratah. There is no difficulty. The one refers to certain kiddush and the other to doubtful kiddush. And a certain man betrothed the woman with a bundle of tokat. And now our semi behai sat before Rab and examined it. If worth a paratah, it is well. If not, not now. If not worth a paratah, it is not well. But Samuel said, We fear, etc. There is no difficulty. In the former case, it is certain kiddush. In the latter, doubtful kiddush. A certain man betrothed the woman with a black marble stone. Now our hisda was sitting and appraising it. If worth a paratah, it is well. If not, not now. If not worth a paratah, it is not well. But Samuel said, We fear, etc. Our hisda did not accept Samuel's view. Said his mother to him. But on the day he betrothed her, it was worth a paratah. It does not rest entirely with you. Replied he to render her forbidden to the other man Talmud. Mos kiddush and before is this not comparable to the case of Judith R. Hi's wife who had severe travail in childbirth said she to him my mother told me your father accepted kiddushin on your behalf from another man when you were a child he replied to her it does not rest entirely with your mother to forbid you to me the rabbis protested to our hisda why so but there are witnesses in it who know that on that day it was worth a paraton nevertheless at present they are not before us is this not analogous to our Hananist dictum for our Hananist said her witnesses are in the north yet she is to be forbidden Abbe and Rabbah however do not agree with this ruling of our hisda if they, the rabbis were lenient in respect of a captive woman who suffered disgrace under her captors shall we be equally lenient in the case of a married woman some of that family remained in Surah and the rabbis held aloof from them not because they agreed with Samuel but because they agreed with Abbe and Rabbah a certain man betrothed the woman with a myrtle branch in the marketplace. Thereupon our Ahabi who now sent a question to our Joseph how is it in such a case he sent back have him flagellated in accordance with Rab and demanded divorce in accordance with Samuel for Rab punished any man who betrothed a woman in the marketplace or by intercourse or without previous shidukin or who annulled a divorce or who lodged a protest against a divorce or harassed a messenger of the rabbis or permit a band to remain upon him thirty days and a son-in-law who dwelt in his mother. In law's house thirty days only him who dwelt but not him who merely passed by his mother-in-law's house but a certain son-in-law passed by his mother-in-law's door for which Arshis hate chastised him there his mother-in-law was already under suspicion through him and the Hardians maintained for all these Rab inflicted no punishment excepting for betrothing a woman by intercourse without shidukin other state even with shidukin on account of licentiousness a certain man betrothed a woman with a mat of myrtle twig said they to him but it is not worth a paratah and let her be betrothed for the four zoos it contains replied he having taken it she remained silent said Rabbah it is silence after receipt of the money and such silence has no significance Rabbah said once do I know this for it was taught if he says to her take the cell as a bailment and then he says to her be thou betrothed unto me therewith if he made the declaration when giving the money and she accepted it without protest she is betrothed after giving the money if she consented she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed what is meant by she consented she did not consent shall we say she consented means that she said yes and she did not consent that she said no then it follows that the first clause means Talmud Mos Kiddushin that even if she said no it is valid Kiddushin but why seeing that she said no hence surely she consented means that she said yes whilst she did not consent that she kept silence thus proving that silence after receipt of money has no significance a difficulty was raised thereon at Pumnihar in the name of Arhuna son of Arjashu how compare there it was given her as a deposit therefore she thought if I throw it away and it is broken I am liable for it but here he gave it to her as Kiddush and if she did not want it as such she should have thrown it away Araha retorted do then all women know the law here too she might have thought if I throw it away and it is broken I will be held responsible for it Araha Birab sent an inquiry to Rabbana what is the ruling in such a case he sent back we have not heard the subjection of Arhuna son of Arjashu but you who have heard it must have regard to it a certain woman was selling silk skeins when a man came and snatched one away from her give it back to me she exclaimed if I give it to you he queried will you become betrothed to me she took it and was silent thereupon Arnaman ruled she can say Indeed, I took it and was my own. I took Rob objected before Arnaman if he betrothes her with an article of robbery violence or theft, or if he snatches a seller from her hand and betrothes her, she is validly betrothed. There it means that he had discussed the preliminaries of marriage. And how do you know that we draw a distinction between one who discussed the preliminaries and one who did not? Because it was taught if one says to a woman, Take the seller which I owe thee, and then he says, Be thou betrothed unto me therewith. If he said this when giving the money and she consented, she is betrothed. If she did not consent, she is not betrothed. After giving the money, even if she consented, she is not betrothed. Now, what is the meaning of she consented? She did not consent. Shall we say she consented means that she said yes, she did not consent, that she said no, but if she remained silent, the condition is valid, then it should simply have been taught she is betrothed just as there, but we must. Say she consented means that she said yes whilst she did not consent that she was silent and it was taught that she is not betrothed what is the reason because she can say indeed I took it and was mine I took but in that case this very day if he betrothed her with robbery violence or theft or if he snatches a seller from her hand and betrothed her she is betrothed presents a difficulty hence it must surely be inferred that in the one case he had discussed the preliminaries whereas in the other he had not when R.C. died the rabbis went up to assemble his legal tradition said one of the rabbis are Jacob by name to them thus did R.C. say in Armani's name just as a woman cannot be acquired by less than a paratise worth so can real estate not be acquired with less than a paratise worth but they protested to him it was taught although a woman cannot be acquired for less than a paratise worth land can be acquired for less than a paratise worth that was taught only in respect to Harder he answered them for it was taught acquisition can be affected through an article even if it is not worth a pair again they sat and related in reference to Rab Judah's statement in Rab's name that one who does not know the peculiar nature of divorce and betrothal should have no business with them R.C. said in Aryohanan's name and they are more harmful to the world than the generation of the flood for it is written by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery they spread forth and blood touch it blood how does this imply it as our Joseph translated they beget children by their neighbors wives thus piling evil upon evil and it is written therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven yet the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away whereas in the case of the generation of the flood not was decreed against the fish of the sea for it is written of all that was in the dry land died implying but not the fish in the sea whilst here even the fish of the sea are to be destroyed but perhaps that is only when all these are perpetrated you cannot think so for it is written for because of swearing the land mourneth yet perhaps swearing stands alone and these others combined alone Talmud, Mos Kiddush and B is it then written and they spread forth they spread forth is written again they sat and related in reference to what we learned if a woman brought her sin offering after childbirth and then died her ears must bring her burnt offering Rab Judah said in Samuel's name providing that she had separated it during her lifetime but not otherwise thus proving that in his opinion the hypothecary obligation is not biblical but R.C. said in Aryohanan's name even if she did not separate it during her lifetime thus proving that he holds that hypothecary obligation is biblical but they have already disputed this matter once for Rab. And Samuel both maintained a debt contracted by word of mouth cannot be collected from heirs or purchasers while Aryohanan and Reshlagish both rule a debt contracted by word of mouth can be collected both from heirs and purchasers both are necessary for if it were stated in the latter case alone only there I would say did Samuel rule thus because it is not a debt decreed in scripture but in the former instance I might say that he agrees with Aryohanan and Reshlagish and if we were taught this dispute in the former instance only there I would say did Aryohanan rule thus because a debt decreed in scripture is as one indicted in a bond but in the latter case I might say that he agrees with Samuel hence both are necessary our papa said the law is a debt contracted by word of mouth can be collected from heirs but not from purchasers it can be collected from heirs because the hypothecary obligation involved is biblical and it cannot be collected from the purchasers because if the debt is not generally known and she acquires her freedom by divorce or her husband's death as for divorce it is well
a trespass offering but may still not be sheared or worked with but it is known since scripture said and what man is there his house lest he die in the battle and another man take her to this arshish son of R.E.D. demurred perhaps who is meant by another man the yabam said arashi there are two answers to this firstly the yabam is not designated another man and furthermore it is written and if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement or if the latter husband Die thus death is compared to divorce just as divorce completely frees her so does death completely free her. Yebamah is acquired by intercourse whence do we know that she is acquired by intercourse scripture Seth Talmud, Moskidish and her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife then perhaps she is like a wife in all respects you may not think so for it was taught I might think that money or deed can complete her acquisition just as intercourse does therefore. It is written and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her teaching intercourse alone completes the acquisition of her but money or deed does not complete the acquisition of her yet perhaps what is the purpose of and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her it is that he can take her by force if so scripture should have stated and perform the duty of a husband's brother why add unto her hence both are learned from it and acquires her freedom by Eliza whence do we know it. From the verse and his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that hath his shoe loose once there has been a loosening of the shoe in her case she is permitted to all Israel does then this word Israel come to teach this but it is necessary for what our Samuel be Judah learned Eliza must be performed at a beth din of naturally born Israelites but not at a beth din of proselytes in Israel is written twice yet it is still required for what was taught our Judah said we were once. Sitting before our Tarfan when a woman came to perform Eliza thereupon he instructed us to all of you respond and say he that hath his shoe loose he that hath his shoe loose that is derived from and his name shall be called or the Yabam's death how do we know it a fortiori if a married woman who is forbidden to others on pain of strangulation is freed by her husband's death then a Yabamah who is forbidden only by a negative precept is surely freed by the Yabam's death as for a married. Woman, it may be asked that is because she is freed by divorce. Will you say the same of this one? A Yabama who is not freed from a Levi tie by divorce, she too is freed by Eliza, but refute it thus as for a married woman, that is because he who binds her frees her. Said Arashi in her case too, he who binds her frees her, the Yabam binds her, the Yabam frees her. Now let a married woman be freed by Eliza. Menori of a Yabama who is not freed by divorce is freed by Eliza. Then this one, a married woman who is freed by divorce is certainly freed by Eliza. Scripture said, then he shall write her a deed of divorcement, thus a deed may divorce her, but nothing else can divorce her. Now let a Yabama be freed by divorce. A Menori of a married woman who is not freed by Eliza is freed by divorce. Then this one, a Yabama who is freed by Eliza is surely freed by divorce. Scripture states, thus shall it be done, etc. And thus intimate indispensableness now wherever there is. An intimation of indispensableness do we not infer a minority but what of the day of atonement where lot and statute are written yet it was taught and Aaron shall present the goat upon which the lot fell for the Lord and offer him for a sin offering the lot renders it a sin offering but designation does not render it a sin offering for I might have thought does not the reverse follow a minority if designation sanctifies where lot does not how much the more would designation satisfy where lot does therefore it is said and offer him for a sin offering teaching the lot renders it a sin offering but designation does not render it a sin offering thus it is only because scripture excluded a designation but otherwise we would infer a minority notwithstanding that statute is written scripture saith then he shall write her a deed of divorcement for her but not for a Yabama yet perhaps her teaches that it must be for her sake her is written twice yet even so they are needed one her Intimating that it must be for her sake and the other her teaching, but not for her and her companion. But scripture set the house of him that hath a shoe loose only a shoe can set her free, but nothing else can does shoe come to teach this. But it is necessary for what was taught, and she shall lose his shoe. I know only that she must loosen his shoe once do I know that it may be any man's shoe from the verse the house of him that hath the shoe loose shoe is an extension if so. Who state his shoe his shoe intimates that it must fit him, thus excluding one too large in which he cannot walk and one too small which does not cover the greater part of his foot, excluding Talmud, Moskidish and be a sandal consisting of a mere soul which has no heel if so scripture should have written shoe why the shoe that both may be inferred therefrom Mishnah Hebrew slave is acquired by money and by deed and acquires himself by years by jubilee and by deduction from the purchase. Price a Hebrew maidservant is more privileged in that she acquires herself by signs he whose ear is bored is acquired by boring and acquires himself by jubilee or his master's death Gemara a Hebrew slave is acquired by money how do we know the scripture states he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for this teaches that he was acquired by money we have thus learned it in the case of a Hebrew slave sold to a heathen since his sole method of acquisition is by money how do we know it of one sold to an Israelite scripture states then shall he let her be redeemed this teaches that she deducts part of her redemption money and goes out free we have thus learned it in the case of a Hebrew bondmaid since she is betrothed with money she is acquired with money how do we know it of a Hebrew slave the writ saith if thy brother an Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman be sold unto thee and serve thee six years thus a Hebrew manservant is Assimilated to a Hebrew maidservant, we have now learned it of one sold by Beth Din since he was sold against his will. How do we know it of one who sells himself? We learn identity of law from the repeated use of Sakir now that is well according to him who accepts the deduction of the repeated use of Sakir, but according to him who does not what can be said scripture states and if a stranger or sojourner with thee be wax enriched thus continuing the preceding section so that the subject above may be deduced from that below and which Tana does not admit the deduction from the repeated use of Sakir the following Tana for it was taught he who sells himself may be sold for six years or more than six years if sold by Beth Din, he may be sold for six years only he who sells himself may not be bored if sold by Beth Din, he may be bored he who sells himself has no gift made to him if sold by Beth Din, a gift is made to him to him who sells himself his master cannot give a Canaanite. Bond made if sold by Beth Din his master can give him a Canaanite bond made. Our Eliezer said neither may be sold for more than six years both may be bored to both a gift is made and to both the master may give a Canaanite bond made. Surely they differ on this point. The first Tana does not admit the deduction of the repeated use of Sakir while our Eliezer does said our Tabiomi and Abay's name all admit the deduction of the repeated use of Sakir but here they differ on the following what is the reason of the first Tana who maintained he who sells himself may be sold for six years or more than six years because scripture expressed a limitation in connection with one sold by Beth Din and he shall serve thee six years he but not one who sells himself and the other and he shall serve the intimates thee but not thine heir and the other another serve thee is written and the other that comes to teach that the master must be willing to make a gift what is the reason of the first Tana who Maintain that one who sells himself is not bored because scripture expressed a limitation in connection with one sold by Beth Din and his master shall bore his ear through with an all implying his ear but not the ear of him who sold himself Talmud, Moskidish and A and the other that comes for the purpose of Gezerish a it was taught our Eliezer said how do we know that the boring must be through the right ear here is said here and elsewhere is said and the priest shall take some of the blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear etc just as there the right is meant so here too the right is meant and the other if so scripture should have written ear why his ear and the other that is needed his ear but not her ear and the other he deduces that from but if the bondsman shall plainly say the bondsman but not the bondmate and the other he needs that to teach he must say it while yet a slave and the other that is derived from the bondsman instead of bondsman. And the other the difference between the bondsman and bondsman affords no basis for exegesis what is the reason of the first Tana who maintained he who sells himself no gift is made to him scripture expressed a limitation in connection with one sold by Beth Din thou shalt furnish him liberally him but not one who sells himself and the other he needs that him but not his heirs his heirs why not the all merciful designated him a hired servant Sakir just as the wages of a hired servant belong to his heirs so here too his wages belong to his heirs but say thus him but not his creditor this is necessary because elsewhere we agree with our Nathan as it was taught our Nathan said how do we know that if a man claims from another and then one claims the same amount from a third
with his consent but not against his will therefore we are told otherwise than which Tana does not accept the deduction from the repetition of Sakir it is this Tana for it was taught and if thy brother sell himself unto thee he shall serve thee unto the years of Jubilee and then he shall return unto his family etc. Our Eliezer B. Jacob said of whom the scripture speak of him who sells himself then it was already stated if of him whose ear was bored that too was already stated. Hence scripture refers here only to him whom Bethin sold two or three years before Jubilee thus teaching that Jubilee liberates him now should you think that he or Eliezer B. Jacob accepts the deduction of the repeated use of Sakir why is it the verse cited necessary let him make the aforementioned deduction said Arnaman B. Isaac after all he does make this deduction nevertheless if the verse quoted is necessary I might have thought only he who sells himself because he committed no offense but as for one sold by Bethin who committed an offense I might say let him be punished therefore we are informed that it is not so the master said if of him whose year was bored that too was already stated what is this for it was taught it shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession and ye shall return every man unto his family to what does scripture refer if to one who sells himself it was already stated if to one sold by Bethin that too was already stated hence the writ can only refer to one whose year was bored two or three years before jubilee teaching that jubilee liberates him how is this implied said Rabbi Bishila scripture said and ye shall return every man now what thing is practiced in the case of a man but not of a woman say boring now both cases one sold by Bethin and one who was bored must be written for had we been informed this of him whom Bethin sold I might say that is because his term had not Expired, but as for him whose year was bored, seeing that his term had already expired, I might have said, Let him be punished. And if we were informed this of him whose year was bored, I might say, That is because he had already served six years. But as for him who has been sold by Bethin, who had not yet served six years, I might have argued, He is not liberated, thus both are necessary now. Both and ye shall return, and, and he shall serve him forever must be written for had the all merciful. Written forever only, I would have thought literally forever, therefore the all merciful wrote, And ye shall return, and had the all merciful written, and ye shall return only, I would have thought, When is that if he had not served six years after being bored, but if he had already served six years, his last phase should not be more stringent than his first, just as his first phase was for six years, so should his last be for six years only, hence forever teaches us for the eternity of Jubilee. Then the question again arises which Tana does not accept the deduction of Sakir Sakir it is Rabbi for it was taught Talmud, Mos Kiddush and B and if he be not redeemed by these etc. Rabbi said he may be redeemed by these but not by six years for I might have argued does it not follow a minority if he who cannot be redeemed by these is redeemed by six years then this one who may be redeemed by these is surely redeemed by six years therefore it is written by these teaching he may be redeemed by these but not by six years now should you think that he Rabbi accepts the deduction from Sakir used twice why does he say if he who cannot be redeemed by these let us to do similarity of law from the repetition of Sakir said Arnaman B Isaac after all he does accept the deduction of Sakir Sakir yet here it is different because scripture saith one of his brethren shall redeem him implying him but not another and what Tana disagrees with Rabbi Jose the Galilean and for it. Was taught, and if he be not redeemed by these, our Jose the Galilean said, If by these it is for freedom, if by strangers it is for servitude, our Akiva said, If by these it is for servitude, if by strangers it is for freedom, what is the reason of our Jose the Galilean scripture said, And if he be not redeemed by these, but by a stranger, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, while our Akiva interprets, And if he be not redeemed by any but these, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, and our Jose. The Galilean is it then written by any but these, but they differ in respect of the following verse, or his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, this is redemption by relations, or if he be wax and rich, this is self redemption, and he shall be redeemed, this is redemption by strangers. Now our Jose the Galilean holds the verse is interpreted with what precedes it, hence link redemption by relations with self redemption, just as self redemption is for freedom, so is that by relatives, while our Akiva. Maintains a verse is interpreted with what follows hence link redemption by strangers with self redemption just as the latter is for freedom so is the former if so why state by these but for by these I would have said the verse is interpreted with what precedes and what follows it so that the redemption of all is for freedom if so the difficulty remains in its place but they differ on a matter of logic our Jose the Galilean holds it is logical that redemption by strangers is for servitude. For should you say it is for freedom they will refrain from redeeming him while our Akiva holds it is logical that redemption by kinsmen is for servitude for should you say that it is for freedom he will go every day and sell himself or high be Abba said these are the views of our Jose the Galilean and our Akiva but the sages maintain the redemption of all is for freedom who are the sages rabbi who employs this by these for a different exegesis while the verse is interpreted with both what precedes. And what follows it and Rabbi how does he utilize this verse then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee he needs it for what was taught and he shall go out in the year of Jubilee Talmud, Mos Kiddush and this refers to a heathen who is under your rule yet perhaps it is not so the reference being to a heathen who is not under your rule you can answer if so what can be done to him hence scripture speaks only of a heathen who is under your rule and by deed whence do we know it said Scripture saith if he take him another wife thus the writ assimilated her the Hebrew bond made to another wife just as the other sc the wife is acquired by deed so is a Hebrew maid servant acquired by deed now that is well on the view that the deed of a Hebrew bond made is written by her master but on the view that her father writes it what can be said for it has been stated as to the deed of a Hebrew bond made who writes it or who not maintained the master writes it or his da said her father. Writes it hence it is well according to Arhuna but on Arhistah's view what can be said Arahabi Jacob answered scripture said she shall not go out as a men servants do implying but she may be acquired as even men servants are and what is that by deed then say but she may be acquired as even men servants are and what is that Hazaka scripture said and ye shall make them the heathen slaves an inheritance for your children after you only they are acquired by Hazaka but not another then say only they are acquired by deed but not another but it is written she shall not go out as men servants do and why do you prefer it so it is logical that deed is included as a means of acquisition since it divorces an Israelite daughter on the contrary one should rather include Hazaka since it acquires the property of a proselyte still we do not find it in marriage relationship alternatively if he take another serves that very purpose and Arhuna how does he expound this? Verse she shall not go out as a men's servants do he employs that as intimating that she does not go out free through the loss of her outstanding limbs as a heathen slave and are his if so scripture should have written she shall not go out as men's servants why is the going out of men's servants that both may be inferred and acquires himself by years for it is written six years he shall serve and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing and by jubilee for it is written he shall serve with the unto the year of jubilee and by deduction from the purchase price Hezekiah said because scripture saith then shall he let her be redeemed this teaches that she makes a deduction from her redemption money and goes out free attended taught and he may acquire himself by money its equivalent and by deed now as for money tis well for it is written he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money he was bought for as for its equivalent to scripture wrote he shall give Back the price of his redemption to include the equivalent of money as being equal to money, but this deed how is it meant? Shall we say that he the slave indicts a bond for the redemption money? Then it is money, but if it is a deed of monumission, why is a deed necessary? Let him say to him in the presence of two or in the presence of a beth thing go said Rabbi, this proves that a Hebrew slave belongs bodily to his master, hence if the master remits his deduction, the deduction is not remitted. A Hebrew maid servant is more privileged than Hirush Lakish said a Hebrew bond maid is freed from her master's authority by her father's death, a minority of signs which do not free her from her father's authority, free her from the authority of her master, then how much the more death which frees her from her father's authority should free her from her master's authority are Hashi raised an objection. A Hebrew maid servant is more privileged than he in that she acquires herself by signs, but if this Resh Lakish be so let her father's death also be stated he the Tana teaches some ways and omits others but what else does he omit that he omits this he omits her master's death if it is on account of her master's death that is no omission since that applies to a male slave too
The master's death too is not taught and what are the four I years two jubilee three jubilee for him whose year was born and four a Hebrew bond made free by signs reason two supports this view for the second part teaches and you cannot say four in the case of either because signs do not apply to a man nor boring to a woman now if it be so then in the case of a woman at least four may be found this proves it are objected now the following are furnished with gifts he who is free by six years by jubilee and by his master's death and a Hebrew bonds made free by signs but if this be correct the father's death too should be taught and should you answer he teaches and leaves over but he states the following and should you reply he teaches that which is fixed but not that which is not fixed but what of signs which are not fixed and which he nevertheless teaches and should you answer here too it is as our sapper but there is a master's death this refutation of Reshlakish is Indeed a refutation but Reshlakish reason a memory it is in a memory which can be refuted for one can refute it thus as for signs that is because there is a physical change in her will you say the same of her father's death seeing that there is no physical change one buried the taught the outfit of a Hebrew male slave belongs to himself and that of a Hebrew female slave to herself while another buried the taught the outfit of a Hebrew female slave and her findings belong to her father. And the master can claim only for loss of time now surely one buried the refers to where she was liberated by signs while the other means that she was liberated by her father's death no both buried refer to liberation by signs yet there is no difficulty in the one case she has a father in the other she has not now as for teaching the outfit of a female slave belongs to herself that is well for it is to exclude her brothers for it was taught and ye shall make them the heathen slaves. An inheritance for your sons after you them for your sons but not your daughters for your sons hence we learn that one cannot transmit his rights in his daughters to his sons but as for the outfit of a male slave belongs to himself that is obvious to whom else should it belong said our Joseph I see here you turned into a town of a said thus did our she's hate say who is the authority for this totai for it was taught totai said thou shalt furnish him liberally him but not his creditor too. Turn to the main text above now the following are furnished with gifts he who is freed by years jubilee and his master's death and a Hebrew bond made freed by signs but no gift is made to a runaway or him who is freed by a deduction from his purchase price our said no gift is made to a runaway but he who is freed by a deduction from the purchase price is furnished with a gift our Simeon said four are presented with gifts three in the case of a man and three in the case of a woman and you cannot say for in the case of either because signs do not apply to a man nor boring to a woman how do we know this for our rabbis taught I might think that only he who is freed by six years is furnished with a gift how do I know to include one who is freed by jubilee or by his master's death and a Hebrew bond made freed by signs from the verses thou shalt let him go free from thee and when thou lettest him go free from thee again I might think that I include a runaway and one who goes out through a deduction from the purchase price therefore it is stated and when thou lettest him go free from thee teaching only he whose dismissal is from thee thus excluding a runaway and one who is freed by deduction from the purchase price whose dismissal is not from thee or mayor said a runaway is not furnished with a gift since his dismissal is not from thee but one who is freed by deduction from the purchase price whose dismissal is from thee is presented with a gift runaway but he must complete his term for it was taught how do we know that a runaway is bound to complete his term from the verse six years he shall serve Talmud, Moskid I might think even if he fell sick therefore it is stated and in the seventh he shall go out free our she's hate answered the reference here is to one who escaped and then Jubilee supervened I might have thought since Jubilee would have emancipated him we apply to him his dismissal is from thee and do not punish but furnish him. With a gift therefore we are informed that it is not so the master said I might think even if he fell sick therefore it is stated and in the seventh he shall go out free even if he was sick the whole of the six years but it was taught if he was sick three years and served three years he is not bound to complete his term but if he was ill the whole of the six years he is bound to make it up our she's hate replied this means that he was able to perform needlework this is self. Contradictory you say if he was sick three years and served three years he is not bound to complete his term which implies if four years he must complete it then consider the second clause but if he was ill the whole of the six years he is bound to make it up implying if only four he is not this is its meaning if he was four years ill it is accounted as though he were indisposed the whole of the six years and he must make it up our rabbis taught with how much is he the freed slave. Presented with five cellars worth of each kind which is fifteen cellars in all this is our mayor S. Judah maintain thirty as the thirty paid for a heathen slave our Simeon said fifty as the fifty of Iraq and the master said with five cellars worth of each kind which is fifteen cellars this is our mayor's view does then our mayor come to teach us arithmetic he tells us this he may not indeed diminish his total but if he gives him less of one kind and more of another we have no objection what is. Our mayor's reason he learns the meaning of empty from a firstborn just as their five cellars is meant so here two five cellars is meant and perhaps five cellars in all were empty written at the end of the verse it would be as you say now however that empty is written at the beginning apply the word empty to flock threshing floor and wine press individually but let us learn the meaning of empty from the pilgrimage burnt offering scripture saith as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee thou shalt give unto him our Judah maintain thirty as the thirty paid for a heathen slave what is our Judah's reason he learns the meaning of giving from a slave just as their thirty is meant so here two thirty is meant but let us learn the meaning of giving from a rack and just as their fifty so here two fifty firstly because if you seize much you cannot hold if you seize little you can hold moreover one should rather do slave from slave our Simeon said fifty as the fifty of a rack and what is our Simeon's reason he learns the meaning of giving from Arachan just as their fifty so here two fifty but perhaps the comparison is with the least sum of Arachan it is written as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee but let us learn the meaning of giving from a slave just as their thirty so here two thirty four firstly if you seize much you cannot hold if you seize little you can hold and moreover one should rather deduce slave from slave our Simeon deduces poverty from poverty now as for our Meir. It is well for that reason flocks threshing floor and wine press are specifically stated but on the views of our Judah and our Simeon why are these necessary they are necessary even as it was taught I might think that the gift can be made only of flocks the threshing floor and the wine press how do I know that all things are included from the verse as i.e. with whatever the Lord thy God hath blessed thee thou shalt give unto him if so why state flocks threshing floor and wine press to inform you. Just as these are distinguished in that they fall within the scope of blessing, so must everything given to the slave fall within the scope of blessing, thus excluding cash money. This is our Simeon's view. Our Eliezer B. Jacob said, excluding mules and our Simeon mules are themselves capable of improvement, and our Eliezer B. Jacob one can engage in business with money. Now they are all necessary for had scripture mentioned flocks, I would have thought only livestock may be given, but not agricultural. Produce therefore scripture wrote threshing floor and had it written threshing floor, I would have said only agricultural produce. Therefore scripture wrote threshing floor and had it written threshing floor, I would have said only agricultural produce, but not livestock. And scripture wrote flocks, why do I need one press Talmud? Mosque edition be according to one master to exclude money, according to the other to exclude mules. Our rabbis taught as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, I might. Think if the house was blessed on his account a gift is made to him but if the house was not blessed on his account no gift is made to him therefore scripture states thou shalt surely furnish him etc teaching in all cases if so what is intimated by as the lord thy god hath blessed thee give him according to thy blessing our Eliezer B. Ezra I said the matter is as it is written if the house was blessed on his account a gift is made to him if the house was not blessed on his account no gift is made to him if so what is intimated by thou shalt surely furnish him the torah employed human idiom our rabbis taught a hebrew male slave serves his master's son but does not serve his daughter a hebrew female slave serves neither son nor daughter one who was born or is sold to a heathen serves neither son nor daughter the master said a hebrew male slave serves his master's son but not his daughter how do we know this for our rabbis taught if thy brother be sold unto thee Shall serve thee six years, thee but not thine heir. You say thee but not thine heir. Yet perhaps it is not so, but thee but not thy son. When it is said six years, he shall serve the son is included. Then how am I to interpret? He shall serve thee six years, thee but not thine heir. Why do you choose to include the son and exclude the brother? I
Bond woman thou shalt do likewise does it come to teach this but it is required for what was taught and also unto thy bond woman thou shalt do likewise i.e. furnish her with a gift you say furnish a gift yet perhaps it is not so but in respect to boring when it is stated but if the man servant shall plainly say boring is already dealt with how then do I interpret and also unto thy bond woman thou shalt do likewise in respect of a gift if so scripture should write and also to thy bond woman. Likewise why state thou shalt do hence both may be inferred one who was bored or is sold to a heathen serves neither son nor daughter one who was bored for it is written and his master shall bore his ear through with an all and he shall serve him forever but neither son nor daughter once do we know it of one who is sold to a heathen said Hezekiah because scripture writes and he shall reckon with his purchaser but not with his purchaser's heirs Rabbah said by biblical law even is his father's heir for it is said and he shall reckon with his purchaser implying but not with his purchaser's heirs whence it follows that he has heirs but the succession of a proselyte to the estate of a heathen is not in accordance with biblical law but by the law of the sovereign for we learned if a proselyte and a heathen succeed their father a heathen the proselyte may say to the heathen you take the idols I will take money you take the wine of libation and I will take fruit but once they have come into the proselyte's possession this exchange is forbidden now should you think that the proselyte succeeds by biblical law even if they have not yet come into his possession when he takes the money or the produce he takes something in exchange for an idol hence it is succession is only by rabbinical law the rabbis having enacted a preventive measure lest he return to his evil ways it has been taught likewise when was this said if they inherited the property but if they went into partnership it is forbidden a heathen succeeds a proselyte or a proselyte succeeds a proselyte neither by biblical law nor by the law of the sovereign for we learned if a man borrows money from a proselyte whose children were converted together with him he must not return it to his children and if he does the spirit of the sages is not pleased with him but it was taught the spirit of the sages is pleased with him there is no difficulty the former refers to where his sc the child's Conception and birth were not in sanctity Talmud, Mos Kiddush the latter to where his conception was not in sanctity but his birth was our high Aven said in our Yohanan's name a heathen succeeds his father by biblical law since it is written because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for an inheritance yet perhaps an apostate Israelite is different but it follows from this because I have given our unto the children of Lot as a heritage now our high Aven why does he not agree with Rabbah? Is it then written and he shall reckon with his purchaser but not with his purchaser's heirs and Rabbah why does he not agree with our high Aven there it is different it being on account of Abraham's honor our rabbis taught a Hebrew bondman has features which a Hebrew bondwoman lacks and there are features in a Hebrew bondwoman which a Hebrew bondman lacks a Hebrew bondman has these features because he goes out free through the passage of six years by Jubilee and by his master's death. Which is not so in the case of a Hebrew bondwoman, and a Hebrew bondwoman has these features. Because a Hebrew bondwoman goes out by signs, she cannot be sold and resold, and is redeemed against her will. Which is not so in the case of a Hebrew bondman. The master said, a Hebrew bondman has features which a Hebrew bondwoman lacks. But the following contradicts this: a Hebrew maid servant is more privileged than he in that she acquires herself by signs. Said Arshis Hadiji, if he designated her as his wife, he designated her. But that is obvious. She needs a divorce. I might have thought the regulations are not annulled in her case. Hence, we are informed otherwise. If so, why does she go out free by signs? This is its meaning. If he, her master, did not designate her, she goes out free by signs too, and she cannot be sold and resold. Hence, it follows that a Hebrew male slave may be sold and resold. But it was taught, if he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft, but not for his double. Repayment for his theft, but not for his refuted testimony. For his theft having been sold once, he may not be sold again. Said Rabbah, there is no difficulty. The latter refers to one theft, the former to two thefts. Abay the murder for his theft may imply even many thefts. But said Abay, there is no difficulty. The latter refers to one man, the former to two men. Our rabbis taught if his theft was thousand sous and he was only worth five hundred, he is sold and then sold again. If his theft was five hundred, whereas he is worth thousand, he is not sold at all. Our Eliezer said if his theft corresponded to his purchase price, he is sold. If not, he is not sold. Rabbah said in this matter, our Eliezer triumphed over the rabbis. For why is it different if his theft was five hundred and he was worth thousand that he is not sold? Because Scripture said and he shall be sold all of him, but not half. And here too, Scripture ordered he shall be sold for his theft, but not for half his theft, and is redeemed against. His will Rabbah thought to interpret against the masters will set Abbe to him how so that a bond is drawn up for him for her value but why he holds a pearl in his hand shall we give him a shard but set Abbe against her father's will on account of the family disgrace if so in the case of a Hebrew bondman to let the members of his family be forced to redeem him on account of the family disgrace then he will go and sell himself again and here too he the father will go and sell her. Again was it not taught she cannot be sold and then sold again and this agrees with our Simeon for it was taught a man may sell his daughter for marital relationship and then repeat it for servitude and then repeat it for marriage after servitude but not for servitude after marriage our Simeon said just as a man cannot sell his daughter for servitude after marriage so a man cannot sell his daughter for servitude after servitude now this enters into the dispute of the following tanaim for it was. Taught to sell her unto a strange people, he shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. Be by Jito Batalmud, Mos Kiddush, and be once he spread his cloak over her, he can no longer sell her. This is our Akibah's view. Our Eliezer said, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her, having dealt deceitfully with her, he may not sell her again. Wherein do they differ? Our Eliezer maintains the traditional text, i.e., letters without vowels, is authoritative. Our Akibah maintains the text as read is authoritative. Whereas our Simeon holds both the traditional text and the vocalization, our authoritative Rabbi Abu propounded does designation affect Nisuin or Eris, and the difference is in respect of inheriting her property, defiling himself on her account, and annulling her vows. What is the law come? And here, seeing that he hath dealt deceitfully with her, be by Jito once he spread his cloak over her, he can no longer sell her, thus he merely may not sell her, yet may indeed designate her. But if you say it affects Nisuin once she was married, her father has no more authority over her, hence we may surely infer that it affects Eris and Arnam and B. Isaac said the reference here is to Kiddush in general, and this is its meaning once her father delivers her to one who becomes responsible for her food, Raiment and conjugal rights, he may no longer sell her, come and here he the father may not sell her to relations on the authority of our Eliezer, it was said he may sell her to relations. And both agree that he may sell her if a widow to a high priest and if divorced or a halyza to a common priest. Now as to this widow, how is it meant? Shall we say that she accepted Kiddush for herself? Can she be called a widow? Then it means that her father betrothed her, but a man cannot sell his daughter for servitude after marriage, and thereon our Amram said in our Isaac's name the reference here is to the Kiddush of designation and was taught according to our Jose son of our Judah, who Maintain the original money was not given as Kiddushin but if you say it affects Nisuin once she is married her father no longer has any authority over her what then it affects Eris and then how say and both agree etc surely a man cannot sell his daughter to servitude after marriage then what can you answer her own Eris and differs from her father's then even if you say that it affects Nisuin her own Nisuin differs from her father's how now as for Eris and differing from Eris and that is well but can Nisuin differ from Nisuin Talmud, Mos Kiddushin and now according to our Naman B. Isaac who maintained even on the view of our Jose son of Arjuna the original money was given for Kiddushin how can he explain it he explains it as agreeing with our Eliezer who held it is only for servitude after servitude that he may not sell her but he can sell her to servitude after marriage Resh Lakish propounded can a man designate his bondmate for his son a minor the all merciful said his son his son whatever his state or perhaps his son must be similar to himself just as he is an adult so must his son be an adult said our Zara come in here and a man that committed adultery with another man's wife a man excludes a minor that committed adultery with another man's wife excludes the wife of a minor but if you say that he can designate if so we find matrimonial relationship in the case of a minor what then he cannot designate why does scripture exclude it then on the
There must be sufficient time left of the day to necessitate redemption. Hence, our Jose, son of Arjuna, ruled. If there is sufficient time in that day for her to do work to the value of a pair, Tashi is betrothed. This proves that in his opinion, the original money was not given as Kiddush. In Arnaman B. Isaac said, You may even say that it was given as Kiddush. Yet here it is different since scripture said, And he shall let her be redeemed. Rabbah said, In Arnaman's name, a man can say to his daughter, A minor, go forth and receive thy Kiddush. This follows from our Jose, son of Arjuna. As dictum, did he not say the original money was not given as Kiddush? Yet when he, the master, leaves her a pair, tithes worth of her labor, it is Kiddush. Hence, here too, it is not different. Rabbah also said, In Arnaman's name, if a man betrothes a woman with a debt upon which there is a pledge, she is betrothed. This follows from our Jose, son of Arjuna. As dictum, did he not say the original money was not given as Kiddushin hence this her labor is alone and she herself is a pledged Talmud, Mas Kiddushin be it when he the master leaves her a pair of worth of her labor and designates her there with it is Kiddushin so here too it is not different our rabbis taught how is the law of designation carried out he her master declares to her in the presence of two people behold thou art designated unto me or behold thou art betrothed unto me or behold thou art become an Uruza unto me even at the end of the six years even just before sunset he must then treat her as a wife not as a bondmate our Jose son of Arjuna said if there is sufficient time in that day for her to do work to the value of a pair she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed this may be compared to a man who says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me from now and after thirty days and then another man comes and betrothes her within the thirty days the law of designation teaches that she is betrothed to it. First on whose view is this analogous shall we say on our Jose son of Arjuna's but he maintained if there is sufficient time in that day for her to do work to the value of a pair she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed said Araha the son of Rabbah it is analogous on the view of the rabbis but that is obvious I might have thought but he her master did not say from now hence we are informed that it is not so another bury the taught if a man sells his daughter and then goes and betrothes her to another man her master is powerless and she is betrothed to the second this is our Jose son of Arjuna's view but the sages maintained if he wishes to designate her he can do so this may be compared to a man who declares to a woman behold thou art betrothed unto me after thirty days and another man comes and betrothes her within the thirty days then she is betrothed to the second on whose view is this analogous shall we say on the rabbis but they maintained if he wishes to designate her he can do so, but said Araha the son of Rabbah, it is analogous on the view of our Jose son of Arjuna, but that is obvious I might have argued, but he did not say to her after thirty days, hence we are informed otherwise another bury the taught if a man sells his daughter and stipulates on condition that he her master shall not designate her. The condition is binding, this is our Meir's opinion, but the sages maintain if he wishes to designate her, he can do so because he her father has stipulated contrary to what is written in the Torah, and he who makes a stipulation contrary to what is decreed in the Torah, his stipulation is null, does then our Meir hold that the stipulation is valid, but it was taught if a man says to a woman, Behold, thou art betrothed unto me on condition that thou hast no claims upon me of sustenance, rhyme, and conjugal rights, she is betrothed, but the condition is null, this is our Meir S. View said in respect of financial matters, his condition is. Binding said Hezekiah here it is different because the writ said and if a man sell his daughter to be a bond woman sometimes he can sell her to be only a bond woman and the rabbis how do they utilize this to be a bond woman they employ it even as was taught to be a bond woman this teaches that he can sell her to unfit persons but does this not follow for she or I if he can betroth her to unfit persons shall he not sell her to unfit persons as for betrothing her to unfit persons that may be because a man can betroth his daughter as an heir shall he then sell her to unfit persons seeing that a man cannot sell his daughter as an heir therefore scripture states to be a bond made teaching that he can sell her to unfit persons or Eliezer said if it is to teach that he can sell her to unfit persons behold it was already said if she displeased her master so that he hath not espoused her which means she was displeasing in respect of marriage what then is taught by to be a bond woman it Teaches that he may sell her Talmud, Moskidish, and age to consanguineous relations, but does this not follow a forciori if he can sell her to unfit persons? Shall he not sell her to relations as for selling her to unfit persons? That may be because if he wishes to designate her in spite of the interdict, he can do so. Shall he then sell her to consanguineous relations, seeing that if he wishes to designate her, he cannot therefore the writ set to be a bond woman teaching that he can sell her to relations and our that he can sell her to unfit persons? He deduces from the same verse from which our Eliezer deduces it, and in the matter of relations, he agrees with the rabbis who maintain he may not sell her to relations. One bury the taught he may sell her to his father, but may not sell her to his son. Another bury the taught he may sell her neither to his father nor to his son, as for saying he may sell her neither to his father nor to his son, that is well agreeing with the rabbis, but he may sell her to his father but may not sell her to his son with whom does this agree neither with the rabbis nor with our Eliezer after all it agrees with the rabbis they admit that he can sell her where there is a possibility of designation our rabbis taught if he come in by himself Bigapo he shall go out by himself Bigapo he comes in with his whole body Bigapo and goes out with his whole body our Eliezer B. Jacob said having come in single he goes out single what is meant by he comes in with his whole body and goes out with his whole body said Rabbah it means that he is not free through the loss of his outstanding limbs as a heathen slave Abbe protested but that is deduced from she shall not go out as a bondman do it from there I would have thought he must pay for his eye and then he goes free hence we are informed otherwise our Eliezer B. Jacob said having come in single he goes out single what is meant by he goes out single said Arnaman B. Isaac this is meant if he has a wife and children when entering service his master may give him a heathen bondmate if he has no wife and children his master may not give him a heathen bondmate or rabbis taught if he was sold for a mina and appreciated in value and stood at 200 zoos how do we know that he is assessed only at a mina because it is written he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for if he was sold for 200 and appreciated and stood at a mina how do we know that he is assessed only at a mina because it is written according unto his ears shall he give back the price of his redemption now I know this only of a slave sold to a heathen since he may be redeemed by his kinsman is the master's hand is nethermost how do we know it of one who is sold to Israelite because Sakir and hired servant is stated twice for the purpose of Israel why said behold I am like Benazay in the streets of Tiberias one of the scholars said to Abbe, consider these verses may be interpreted leniently and stringently. Why do you choose to interpret them leniently to the slave's advantage? Let us interpret them stringently. You cannot think so since the all-merciful favored him for it was taught because he is well with thee. He must be with thee equal to thee in food and drink that thou shouldst not eat white bread and eat black bread. Thou drink old wine and he new wine. Thou sleep on a feather bed and he on. Straw hence it was said whoever buys a Hebrew slave is like buying a master for himself. Yet perhaps that is only in respect to food and drink that he should not be grieved. But in the matter of redemption let us be stringent with him as follows from our Jose son of Arhanan. For our Jose son of Arhanan said come and see how hard are the results of violating the provisions of the seventh year. A man who trades in seventh year produce must eventually sell his movables for it is said in this year of Jubilee shall return every man unto his possession and in juxtaposition thereto and if thou sell aught into thy neighbor or buy of thy neighbor's hand which refers to what is acquired from hand to hand if he disregards this he eventually sells his estates for it is said if thy brother be waxen poor and sell some of his possession he has no opportunity of amending his ways until he sells his house for it is said and if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city why state there if he disregards this but here he has no opportunity in accordance with Arhuna for Arhuna said once a man has committed a transgression and repeated it, it is permitted to him permitted to him can you think so but say it becomes to him as permitted it is not brought home to him until he sells his daughter for it is said and if a man sell his daughter to be a bond woman and though the sale of his daughter is not mentioned in the section yet he teaches us that one should even sell his daughter and not borrow on usury what is the reason his daughter makes a deduction and
years and decreased i.e. shortened years but the meaning is if his value increases and his redemption shall be out of the money that he was bought for if his value decreases the basis of redemption is according unto his years yet remaining but perhaps the meaning is this if he served two years for remaining he must repay him for four years out of the money that he was bought for while if he served four years to remaining he must repay him for two according unto his years if so. Scripture should write if there be yet many years to name if there remain but few years to name why in years be a name to teach if his value increased in these years his redemption is out of the money that he was bought for if his value decreased in these years he is redeemed according unto his years said our Joseph Arnaman interpreted these verses as sign on slave house half slave relations are who not behind and ask our she's hate can a Hebrew slave sold to a heathen behalf redeemed or can he not be half redeemed do we learn the meaning of his redemption from a field of possession just as a field of possession cannot be half redeemed so he too cannot be half redeemed or perhaps we may interpret it in his favor but not to his disadvantage he answered him did you not say there he shall be sold entirely but not half hence here too he shall be redeemed entirely Abbe said should you rule that he can be half redeemed it will be found both to his advantage and disadvantage to his advantage if he the heathen bought him for a hundred zoos and he the slave then refunded him fifty half of his value then he appreciated and stood at two hundred if you say that he can be half redeemed he pays him an additional hundred and goes out free but if you say he cannot be half redeemed he must pay him a hundred and fifty and then go out but you said if his value increased his redemption is out of the money that he was bought for suppose he was dear when bought and slumped then rose again it will be found to his disadvantage if he bought him for two hundred zoos he the slave refunded a hundred half of his value and then slumped to a hundred if you say he can be half redeemed he must pay him fifty and go out but if you say that he cannot be half redeemed then this hundred was a bailment in his master's charge hence he the slave gives it to him and goes out free are who not behind and ask are she's hate if a man sells a house in a Walled city can he half redeem it or not do we learn the meaning of his redemption from a field of possession just as a field of possession cannot be half redeemed so this too cannot be half redeemed or perhaps where scripture revealed it it revealed it where not it did not he answered him from the exegesis of our Simeon we learn that he can borrow and redeem and redeem half for it was taught and if a man shall sanctify unto the Lord part of the field of his possession and if he that sanctify the field will indeed redeem it this teaches that he can borrow and redeem and redeem half said our Simeon what is the reason because we find in the case of him who sells a field of possession that since he has a great privilege in that if jubilee comes and it has not been redeemed it reverts to its owners his rights are weakened in so far that he cannot borrow and redeem and redeem half hence he who sanctifies a field of possession whose rights are impaired in that if jubilee Comes and it has not been redeemed, it goes out to the priest at Jubilee, therefore his privilege is strengthened in so far that he may borrow and redeem and redeem half hence this one too who sells a house in a walled city since his rights are impaired so that if a complete year elapsed and it is not redeemed, it is absolutely sold, therefore his privilege is strengthened in that he can borrow and redeem and redeem half he raised an objection and if he will indeed redeem it this teaches. That he may borrow and redeem and redeem half for I might have thought does it the reverse not follow a memory if he who sells a field of possession whose privilege is great in that if Jubilee comes and it has not been redeemed, it reverts to its original owner, yet his power is impaired in that he cannot borrow and redeem and redeem half, then he who sanctifies whose rights are impaired in that if Jubilee comes and it has not been redeemed, it goes out to the priest at Jubilee, it surely follows. That his rights are also impaired so that he cannot borrow and redeem and redeem half as for one who sells a field of possession that is because his privilege is weak and that he cannot redeem it immediately will you say the same of one who sanctifies whose privilege is strong that he can redeem it immediately let one who sells a house in a walled city prove it whose privilege is strong to redeem it immediately and yet he cannot borrow and redeem and redeem half there is no difficulty. Talmud, Moscow edition that the one agrees with the rabbis the other with our Simeon one bury the taught he who sells a house in a walled city may borrow and redeem and redeem half another taught he may not borrow and redeem nor redeem half there is no difficulty the latter agrees with the rabbis the former with our Simeon Nemonic Harish Habash Zeman Araha son of Rabbah said to Arashi it can be refuted as for one who sells a house in a walled city that is because his privilege is impaired that he can never redeem it any longer will you say the same of him who sanctifies whose privilege is great that he can redeem it forever Ara Hasaba the elder remarked to Arashi because one can say let the argument revolve and infer it by what is common to both thus let him who sells a field of possession prove it whose privilege is great that he can redeem it forever and yet he may not borrow and redeem or redeem half as for him who sells a field of possession that is because his rights are impaired in that he cannot redeem it immediately then let one who sells a house in a walled city prove it and thus the argument revolves the feature of one is not that of the other what is common to both cases is that they may be redeemed and he the vendor cannot borrow and redeem nor redeem half so may I also adduce the case of one who sanctifies an inherited field it may be redeemed and he cannot borrow and redeem nor redeem half Marzitra son of Armari said to Rabin, this may be Refuted what is their common feature that their privileges are impaired for they cannot redeem it in the second year will you say the same of him who sanctifies seeing that his privilege is strong to redeem in the second year Robin answered him because one may reply let a Hebrew slave sold to a heathen prove it his rights are unimpaired for he may be redeemed in the second year and yet he cannot borrow and redeem nor redeem by half are who not behind him a propounded of our she's hate if one sells a house in a walled city can the house be redeemed by relations or not do we learn the meaning of his redemption from a field of possession just as a field of possession cannot be half redeemed yet can be redeemed by relations so this too cannot be half redeemed yet can be redeemed by relations or perhaps redemption is written only in reference to half but not in reference to relations it cannot be redeemed by relations answered he, he objected before him and in all the land of your Possession yet shall effect redemption for the land this is to include houses and Hebrew slaves surely that means houses in a walled city no it means houses in villages but of houses in villages it is explicitly stated they shall be reckoned with the fields of the country that is to make an obligation and is in accordance with our Eliezer for it was taught if thy brother be waxen poor and sell some of his possessions then shall his kinsman that is next unto him come and shall redeem that which his brother hath sold that is an option you say an option yet perhaps it is not so but an obligation hence it is taught and if a man have no kinsman but is there a man in Israel who has no kinsman hence it must refer to him who has a kinsman who however refuses to repurchase it thus showing that he has merely an option our Eliezer said and he shall redeem that which his brother hath sold implies an obligation you say an obligation yet perhaps it is not so but an option hence it is taught and in all ye shall effect redemption the rabbi said to Arashi or as other state Rabbin said to Arashi on the view that it includes houses in walled cities it is well but on the view that it includes houses in villages why in all this is indeed a difficulty of a raised an objection before him why is he shall redeem him he shall redeem him he shall redeem him stated three times to include all cases of redemption that they are to be redeemed in this order surely that refers to houses in walled cities and Hebrew slaves no to houses in villages and fields of possession houses in villages and fields of possession these are explicitly provided for they shall be reckoned with the fields of the country it is as Arnaman B. Isaac said elsewhere to teach that the nearer the relation the greater his precedence so here too it is to show that the nearer the relation the greater is his precedence whereon was Arnaman's dictum stated on what was propounded can a Hebrew slave Sold to an Israelite be redeemed by kinsmen or not on Rabbi's view that is no question since he said he who cannot be redeemed by these SC relations can be redeemed by the passage of years thus proving that he cannot be redeemed our question is on the opinion of the Rabbis what is the law do we infer Sakir Sakir and do not interpret the emphasis of one of his brethren may redeem him or perhaps may redeem him implies him but not another come and here in all ye shall effect a redemption. This is to include houses and Hebrew slaves surely that means houses in a walled city and Hebrew slaves sold to Israelites no it means Hebrew slaves sold to heathens but of a Hebrew slave sold to a heathen it is explicitly stated or his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him Talmud, Moscow edition B that is to make it an obligation and even on our
interprets by the method of general propositions and particularizations thus then thou shalt take this as a generalization and all this is a specification through his ear unto the door is again a generalization now in a sequence of generalization specification and generalization you can include only what is similar to the specification just as the specification is explicit as of metal so must everything used for this purpose be of metal our Jose interprets by the method of Amplification and limitation thus then thou shalt take this is an amplification and all this is a limitation through his ear unto the door is again an amplification a sequence of amplification limitation and amplification extends the law to everything what is included all things and what is excluded chemicals the master said the all is to teach that the great all is meant how is this implied as Rabbah said therefore the children of Israel eat not the sinew of the hip which is upon the hollow of the thigh implies the right thigh so here too the all implies the most distinguished of all Sar Eliezer said Judah used to expound when at his ear was bored only the lobe was bored but the sages maintained a Hebrew slave who is a priest cannot be bored because he is thereby blemished then let him be blemished Rabbah son of Arshila said scripture said and he shall return unto his own family i.e. to the established rights of his family the scholars propounded a Hebrew. Slave who is a priest can his master give him a heathen bondwoman is it an anomaly and so there is no difference between priests and Israelites or perhaps priests are different since the writ imposes additional precepts upon them. Rab said it is permitted Samuel ruled it is forbidden Arnaman said to Arain and when you were at Mar Samuel's academy you wasted your time in chess why did you not refute him with this but the sages maintained a Hebrew slave a priest cannot be bored as he is thereby. Blemish now if you say that his master cannot give him a heathen bondmate it follows because we require that he should say I love my master my wife and my children which is absent nothing more is possible the scholars propounded may a priest take a woman of goodly form is it an anomaly and so there is no difference between priests and Israelites or perhaps priests are different since the writ imposes additional precepts upon them. Rab said he is permitted while Samuel maintained he is. Forbidden with respect to the first intercourse, there is universal agreement that it is permitted since the Torah only provided for man's evil passions. Their dispute refers to the second intercourse. Rab ruled it is permitted, and Samuel ruled it is forbidden. Rab ruled it is permitted since it was once allowed, it remains so. But Samuel said it is forbidden because she is a proselyte and so ineligible to marry a priest. Others state with respect to the second intercourse, it is generally agreed that it is forbidden since she is a proselyte. Their dispute refers to the first intercourse. Rab maintained it is permitted since the Torah only provided for man's evil passions. Whilst Samuel ruled that it is forbidden where one can read, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house. We also read and cease among the captives, etc. But where we cannot read, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house. We do not read and cease among the captives, etc. Our rabbis taught and thou among the Captives when taking her captive a woman even married of beautiful countenance the Torah only provided for human passions it is better for Israel to eat flesh of Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and A animals about to die yet ritually slaughtered than flesh of dying animals which have perished and thou hast a desire even if she is not beautiful unto her but not her and her companion and thou shalt take thou hast marriage rights over her to thee to wife teaching that he must not take two women one for himself and another for his father or one for himself and another for his son and thou shalt bring her home to thine house teaching that he must not molest her on the field of battle our rabbis taught but if the servant shall plainly say he must say and reiterate it if he declares thus at the beginning of the sixth year but not at the end he is not bored for it says I will not go out free hence he must say it when about to depart if he says it at the end of the sixth year but not at the beginning he is not bored for it is said but if the slave shall plainly say he must say it while still a slave the master said if he declared thus at the beginning of the sixtieth year but not at the end he is not bored for it is said I will not go out free hence he must say it when about to depart why choose to learn this from I will not go out free to do it because we require that he shall say I love my master my wife and my children which is absent furthermore if he says it at the end of the sixtieth year but not at the beginning he is not bored for it is said the slave is he then not a slave at the end of the sixth year said Rabbah it means at the beginning of the last paratah's worth of service and at the end thereof our rabbis taught if he has a wife and children but his master has no wife and children he may not be bored for it is said because he loveth the end thine house if his master has a wife and children but he has no wife and children he may not be bored for it is said I love my master my wife and my children if he loves his master but his master does not love him he may not be bored for it is said because he is well with thee if his master loves him but he does not love his master he may not be bored for it is said because he loveth thee if he is an invalid but his master is no invalid he may not be bored for it is said because he is well with thee if his master is an invalid but he is no invalid he may not be bored for it is said with thee our BBB have a propounded what if both are invalids do we require with thee to be applicable and it is or perhaps we require because he is well with thee which is absent the question stands our rabbis taught because he is well with thee he must be with thee equal to thee in food and drink that thou shoots not eat white bread and eat black bread thou drink old wine and he new wine thou sleep on a feather bed and he on straw hence it was said whoever buys a Hebrew slave is like Buying a master for himself, our rabbis taught, and he shall go out from thee and his children with him. Our Simeon said, If he is sold, are then his sons and daughters sold? Hence we learn that the master is liable for his children's keep. Similarly, you read, If he is married, then his wife shall go out with him. Our Simeon said, If he is sold, is then his wife sold? Hence we learn that the master is responsible for his wife's keep. Now both are necessary, for if we were informed this of his children, I would say that is because they cannot work for a living. But as for his wife who can work for a living, I would say, Let her earn her keep. While if we were informed this of his wife, that is because it is not me for her to go begging. But as for his children for whom it may be seemly to go begging, I might say, It is not so. Hence both are necessary. Our rabbis taught Talmud, Mosque Kiddush, and B. If it were stated, then thou shalt take an all and place his ear unto the door, I would think, Let a hole be. Bored against his ear through the door, hence only the door, but not his ear, not his ear, is it not written, and his master shall bore his ear through with an all, but I would say the ear is to be bored outside and then placed on the door, and a hole bored through the door opposite the ear, therefore it is stated, and thou shalt thrust it through his ear unto the door, how so he continues boring until the door is reached, the door I understand from this whether it is removed from its hinges or not, therefore it is stated unto the door or unto the doorpost, just as the doorpost must be standing, so must the door be standing. Rabbi Yohanan Bizakai used to expound this verse as precious stone, why was the ear singled out from all the other limbs of the body, the Holy One, blessed be he said, this ear which heard my voice on Mount Sinai when I proclaimed for unto me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants and not servants of servants, and yet this man went and acquired a Master for himself, let it be bored. Our Simeon be rabbi to expounded this verse as a precious stone. Why were the door and doorpost singled out from all other parts of the house? The Holy One, blessed be he, said the door and the doorpost which were witnesses in Egypt when I passed over the lintel and the doorpost and proclaimed for unto me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants and not servants of servants, and so I brought them forth from bondage to freedom. Yet this man went and acquired a master for himself, let him be bored in their presence. Mission, a heathen slave is acquired by money deed or by Hazaka and reacquires himself by money through the agency of others and by deed through his own agency. This is our mayor's view. The sages maintained by money through his own agency and by deed through the agency of others, providing that the money is furnished by others. Gemara, how do we know this? Because it is written and ye shall make them the heathen slaves an inheritance. For your children after you to possess as an inheritance just as a field of possession is acquired by Hazaka so is a heathen slave acquired by money deed or Hazaka if so just as a field of possession reverts to its original owner at Jubilee so should a heathen slave revert to its former owner at Jubilee therefore it is stated of them shall ye take your bondman forever a taught he may be acquired by Halifin too and Artana what is absent in the case of movables he teaches what is present in the case of movables he does not teach Samuel said a heathen slave may be acquired by Meshika how so if he the purchaser seizes him the slave and he goes to him he acquires him if he merely calls him and he goes to him he does not acquire him as for Artana at the omission of Meshika is well what is
Baths if he undresses, washes him, anoints, scrapes, dresses him, puts on his shoes, or lifts him, he acquires him. Our Simeon said, Let Hazaka not be greater than lifting, for lifting acquires everywhere. What does he mean? Said Arashi, the first Tana implies if he the slave lifts his master, he acquires him. If his master lifts him, he does not acquire him. Thereupon our Simeon observed, Hazaka should not be greater than lifting, seeing that lifting acquires everywhere. Now that you say that if he lifts his master, he acquires him. If so, a heathen bondmaid should be acquired by intercourse. When do we say this? When one derives pleasure and the other pain, but here both derive pleasure, then what can be said of unnatural intercourse? Said Araha Abiyat Abaha, who is to tell us that both do not derive pleasure. Moreover, it is written, Thou shalt not lie with mankind with the lines of a woman. Thus the rig compared unnatural to natural intercourse. Arjuda the Indian was a proselyte who had no heirs. He fell sick and Marzitra went and paid him a sick visit seeing him in extremis he said to his Arjuda slave remove me my shoes and take them to my house some maintained he the slave was an adult Talmud Mosque Kiddush and the one Arjuda departed to death and the other the slave departed from his former master to life others maintained he was a minor and this was not in accordance with Abyssal for it was taught if a proselyte dies without ears and Israelites take possession of his property which includes slaves whether adults or minors they gain their liberty Abyssal said adults acquire their freedom but as for minors whoever takes possession of them even afterwards gains a title to them and reacquires himself by money etc by money only through the agency of others but not through his own what are the circumstances shall we say without his the slave's knowledge then consider we know that our mayor maintains it is to a slave's disadvantage to leave his master for Freedom and we learned one may obtain a privilege for a person in his absence but cannot so act to his disadvantage hence it obviously means with his knowledge consent and we are informed this only through the agency of others can he be emancipated thus but not through his own thus proving that a slave has no rights of acquisition apart from his master if so cite the second clause by deed through his own agency only through his own agency but not through that of others but if with his consent why not through the agency of others and should you answer what is meant by through his own agency through his own agency too and we are thus informed that his deed of emancipation and his hand i.e. the right to acquire for himself come simultaneously but it was not taught so for it was taught by deed through his own agency but not that of others this is our mayor's view said Abbe after all it means without his knowledge yet money is different since he the master may acquire him the slave against his will he can liberate him against his will if so the same applies to deed this deed is separate and that deed is separate but here too this money is separate and that money is separate the impress is nevertheless the same robber said in the case of money it's received by the master affects it is liberation but as for deed it's received by others affects it the sage is maintained by money through his own agency only through his own agency but not through the agency of others why granted that it is without his knowledge yet consider we know that the rabbis hold that it is to his advantage to go out from his master's authority to liberty and we learned you may obtain a privilege for a person in his absence but can act to his disadvantage only in his presence and should you answer what is meant by through his own agency through his own agency too and we are thus informed that a slave has rights of acquisition independently of his master if so cite the second clause by Deed through the agency of others implying but not through his own but it is an established ed law that his deed and hand come simultaneously and should you answer what is the meaning of through the agency of others through the agency of others too and we are thus informed that it is to the slave's advantage to leave his master for freedom if so they should be combined and taught together by money and by deed through the agency of others or his own but it means this by money both through the agency of others and his own by deed through the agency of others but not his own and it agrees with our Simeon B. Eliezer for it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said by deed to only through the agency of others but not his own thus there are three different opinions in the matter Rabbi said what is our Simeon B. Eliezer's reason he learns the meaning of law to her here from a married woman just as a woman is not freed until she withdraws the divorce into a domain that is not his her Husband so a slave too is not freed until he withdraws his deed of emancipation into a domain that is not his. The master's rabble propounded Talmud, Mos Kiddushin be according to our Simeon B. Eliezer can a heathen slave appoint an agent to receive his deed of emancipation from his master since he deduces law from a married woman he the slave is as a married woman or perhaps a woman who can accept the divorce herself can also appoint an agent whereas a slave who cannot accept his deed of emancipation himself cannot appoint an agent either after propounding he solved it himself we deduce law from a married woman hence he is as a married woman if so when our Huna son of our Joshua said these priests are agents of the all merciful one for should you think they are ours is there ought which we ourselves may not do while they may do it on our behalf is there not one of a slave who cannot accept his deed of monumission himself can yet appoint an agent but that Analogy is fallacious and Israelite has no connection with the laws of sacrifices at all whereas a slave has a connection with deeds of monumission for it was taught it appears correct that a slave can accept his companion's deed from his companion's master but not from his own providing that the money is furnished by others shall we say that they differ in this armor holds a slave has no powers of acquisition distinct from his master nor a wife distinct from her husband whereas the rabbis maintain a slave can acquire independently of his master and a wife of her husband said rabbi in Arsheshit's name all hold that a slave cannot acquire independently of his master nor a wife of her husband but the circumstances are here that a stranger gave him a mina saying on condition that your master has no right to it armor maintains when he says to him acquire it the slave acquires it and ipso facto his master and when he says to him on condition etc he says nothing whereas it Rabbis hold since he stipulates on condition the stipulation is effective but our Eliezer said in such a case all agree that the slave acquires it and ipso facto his master but the circumstances are here that a stranger gave him a mina saying on condition that you obtain your freedom there with our mayor holds that when he says to him acquire it the slave acquires it and ipso facto his master when he says on condition he says nothing whereas the rabbis maintain he did not give possession of it. Even to him the slave since he said to him only on condition that you gain your freedom there with now our mayor is self-contradictory and the rabbis likewise for it was taught Talmud, Mos Kiddush and a, a woman cannot redeem second tithe without adding a fifth our Simeon B. Eliezer said on our mayor's authority a woman can redeem second tithe without adding a fifth now how is this meant shall we say she redeems it with her husband's money the second tithe also being her husband's then she Merely acts as her husband's agent, but if with her money and his tithe the divine law said, and if a man will redeem out of his tithe, then he shall add there to the fifth part thereof, but not his wife. Hence it surely refers to such a case as that a stranger gave her a mina and said on condition that you redeem the tithe therewith, and thus we learn that they hold contrary opinion. Said Abbe, then reverse it. Rabbi said, after all, you need not reverse it, but here the reference is to tithe, which came to her from her father's estate. Our mayor following his opinion that tithe is sacred property, so that her husband does not acquire it. The rabbis too are in accord with their view that tithe is secular property, the use of fruct of which her husband acquires. Therefore, she is merely deputizing for her husband. A tanna taught he the heathen slave goes out free through the loss of his eye tooth and projecting limbs, which do not return now as for the loss of his tooth or eye it is. Well, these are written, but how do we know the loss of the projecting limbs by analogy with tooth and eye? Just as these are patent blemishes and do not return, so is he freed for the loss of all limbs which are patent blemishes and do not return. But let us say that tooth and eye are two laws which come as one, and whenever two verses come as one, they do not illuminate other cases. Both are necessary. For had the all merciful mentioned tooth only, I would have argued it refers even Talmud. Moskidish and be to a milk tooth. Therefore, the all merciful wrote I and had the all merciful written I. I would have thought just as the eye is created with him, so must all for whose loss he is emancipated be created with him. I.e. at birth, but not a tooth. Thus both are necessary. But let us say and if a man smite that is a general proposition, the tooth, the eye that is a specification, and in a general proposition followed by a specification, the former includes only that contained in. The latter hence only tooth and eye but nothing else he shall let him go free is another general proposition and in a sequence of generalization specification and generalization you can only include what is similar to the specification just as the specification is explicit as a patent blemish and does not
seeing that the Torah conferred the privilege of freedom upon him as compensation and our Akiva's view in respect of other limbs since it is a punishment of the sages that the slave is freed of punishment surely scriptural verses are here expounded but say thus since it is an exposition of the sages what is our Simeon's reason he learns the meaning of sending here from a married woman just as a woman is sent forth by deed so is a slave to sent forth by deed and our Meir were to freedom written at the end of the verse it would be as you say since however it is written to freedom shall he send him away it implies that he is free at the very outset our rabbis taught if he smites his eye and blinds it or his ear and deafens it the slave goes out to freedom on their account near his eye so that he cannot see or near his ear and he cannot hear the slave does not go out free on their account our shaman said to our ashi are we to assume that sound is nothing but Rami B. Ezekiel learned if a cock stretches its head into the cavity of a glass vessel crows there and breaks it he its owner must pay for it in full also our Joseph said the scholars of rap said if a horse neighs or an ass brays and breaks utensils in a house either owner must pay for half the damage man is different he replied since he is an intelligent being he frightens himself as it was taught if one frightens his neighbor he is exempt by the law of man yet liable by the law of heaven e.g. if he blows into his ear and deafens him he is exempt but if he seizes him blows into his ear and deafens him he is liable our rabbis taught if he strikes his eye and dims it or his tooth and loosens it if he can nevertheless still use them the slave does not go out free on their account if not the slave goes out free on their account another buried the taught if his eyesight was dim and he altogether blinds him or his tooth was loose and he knocks it out if he could use them before the Slave goes out free on their account if not the slave does not go free on their account now both are necessary for if we were taught the first only I would say that is because his eyesight was originally sound and now it is weak but here in the second paragraph seeing that his eyesight was impaired before too I would say that he does not go free and if we were taught the second that is because he completely blinds him but there in the first paragraph that he does not completely blind. Himmel would say that he does not go free hence both are necessary our rabbis taught if his master is a doctor and he asks him to paint his eye with anointment and he blinds him or to drill his tooth and he knocks it out he laughs at his master and goes out free our Simeon B. Gamaliel said and he destroy it implies only when he intends to destroy and the rabbis how do they employ and he destroy it they need it for what was taught our Eliezer said if he inserts his hand in his bondmaids. Womb and blinds the child within her, he is free from punishment. What is the reason? Because scripture said, and he destroy it, implying only when he intends to destroy it, and the other he deduces this from, and he destroy it instead of, and he destroy it, and the other he does not interpret, he destroy it, and he destroy it. Our she's hate said, if he has a blind eye, and he the master removes it, the slave is freed on its account, and Atana supports this perfection, and male sex are required in animals. But not in birds, I might think, even if its wing is palsied, its foot cut off, or its eye picked out, the bird is still fit, therefore it is said, and if the bird sacrifice be of fowls, but not all fowls are high, be as she said in Rab's name, if he had Talmud, Moskidish, and an additional freak finger, and he his master cut, if off the slave goes out free, said, are who not provided that it is counted upon the hand, some scholars of Nizuni have sent it themselves from Arhista's session thereupon he instructed Arham not to go put them under the band he went and said to them why did you not attend the session why should we attend replied they when we ask him questions which he cannot answer have you ever asked me anything he retorted which I could not solve thereupon they asked him what if a slave stones are castrated by his master is it an open blemish or not as he was unable to answer it they said to him what is your name Hamnana he replied you are not Hamnana but Karnanajir they went he came before Arista he said to him they asked you a mission for we learned as to the 24 tips of limbs of a man none of these become unclean on account of raw flesh and these are they the tips of the fingers of the hands and the toes of the feet the tips of the ears the tip of the nose the tip of the member and the nipples of a woman our Judah said also those of a man now it was taught thereon for the loss of all these a slave obtains his freedom rabbi said for castration to Ben Isaiah said for the loss of the tongue to the master said rabbi said for castration to castration of what shall we say castration of the membrane but that is identical with the loss of the membrane hence it surely means castration of the stones rabbi said castration to and rabbi does he not include the tongue but the following contradicts it if he a priest is sprinkling and the sprinkling water spurts onto his the unclean man's mouth rabbi said he has validly besprinkled him but the sages maintain he has not validly besprinkled him surely that means upon his tongue no upon his lips upon his lips but that is obvious i might have thought sometimes his lips are tightly pressed together hence we are informed that they are still regarded as exposed but it was taught on his tongue moreover it was taught and if the greater length of the tongue was removed rabbi said even the greater length of the speaking part of the tongue but answer thus rabbi said castration Two and the tongue goes without saying Ben Eze said the loss of the tongue but not castration and to what does to refer to the first clause if so Ben Eze's statement should have been given priority the Tana first heard Rabbi's view and inserted it in the teaching then he learned Ben Eze's view and inserted it while the teaching remained unchanged Ola said all agree in the matter of uncleanliness that the tongue is considered exposed as far as reptiles are concerned what is the reason the divine law said and whomsoever he that hath the issue touch it and this too can be touched with respect to people it is as hidden what is the reason scripture said then he shall bathe his flesh in water just as the flesh is exposed so must all which requires contact with the water be exposed they differ in respect to sprinkling Rabbi compares it to uncleanliness whereas the Rabbis compare it to table and both differ on this verse and the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean etc. Rabbi holds the verse reads thus and the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day and purify him whereas the rabbis maintain the verse is read thus and on the seventh day he shall purify him and he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and the rabbis too let it be compared with uncleanliness purification should be learned from purification and rabbi let it be compared to table and he shall wash his clothes. Disconnects the subject now does rabbi hold that the tongue is as concealed in respect of table but rabbin said in the name of our Adda in our Isaac's name it once happened that a bond made of rabbi's household performed table ascended from the water and a bone was found between her teeth whereupon rabbi ordered her to perform a second table granted that we do not require the water to enter we insist that there shall be room for it to enter and it is in accordance with our Zerahu. Said whatever is fit for perfect mixing the mixing is not indispensable whatever is not fit for perfect mixing the mixing is indispensable Talmud, Moskidish and be this is disputed by Tanaim and that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut ye shall not offer unto the Lord all these refer to the stones that is our Judah's opinion to the stones and not to the membrane but all these refer to the stones too that is our Judah's opinion our Eliezer B. Jacob said they all refer to the membrane are. Jose said bruised and crushed refer to the stones too whereas broken or cut refer only to the membrane but not to the stones Mishnah large cattle are acquired by Mezra small cattle by lifting this is the opinion of our Meir and our Eliezer but the sages rule small cattle are acquired by Meshika Gemara Rab lectured in Kimhuni large cattle are acquired by Meshika Samuel meeting Rab's disciple said to them did Rab rule that large cattle are acquired by Meshika but we learned by Mezra and Rab. Two previously ruled by Mezra did he then retract from that view he ruled in accordance with this tana for it was taught but the sages maintain both large cattle and small are acquired by Meshika. Our Simeon said both by lifting our Joseph demurred if so how can an elephant be acquired according to our Simeon said Abbe to him by elephant or by renting its place our Zara said he the purchaser brings four utensils and places them under its feet and you may infer from this that when the purchaser's utensils are in the vendor's domain and the commodity is placed in them the purchaser obtains a title the reference here is to an Ali Talmud, Moskidish and alternatively this refers to bundles of faggots Mishnah property which offer security is acquired by money by deed or by Hazaka property which does not offer security can be acquired only by Meshika property which does not offer security may be acquired in conjunction with property which provides security by Money deed or hazaka and it obligates the property which provides security to take an oath concerning them. Gemara by money whence do we know it said Hezekiah scripture saith men shall acquire fields
you it is sold and gifted he raised the objection and he answered it this refers to one who sells his field because of its poor quality or as he said he really wished to present it to him as a gift why then did he indict it with the phraseology of purchase in order to strengthen his rights therein and by Azaka how do we know it said Hezekiah scripture set and dwell in the cities that ye have taken how did ye take it by dwelling there in the school of our Ishmael taught and ye shall possess it and dwell therein whereby shall ye possess it by dwelling therein property which does not provide security can be acquired only by Meshika whence do we know it because it is written and if thou sell out unto thy neighbor or by of thy neighbor's hand intimating that an article is acquired by passing from hand to hand but according to our Yohanan who maintained by biblical law money gives a title what can be said the Tana teaches the rabbinical enactment property which does not provide security etc how do we know it said Hezekiah because scripture said and their father gave them gifts with fenced cities in Judah the scholars propounded need they the movables be heaped up upon the land or not said our Joseph come and hear our Akiba said land whatever its size is liable to PEI and first fruits Talmud Mosque edition B is fit for a proposal to be written thereon and that property which does not provide security movables shall be acquired along with it but if you say they must be heaped thereon for what is a very small piece of land fit our Samuel Bebus explained it in our Joseph's presence e.g. if he sticks a needle therein said our Joseph to him you annoy us as a tanna trouble to teach us about a needle said our Ashi who tells us that he did not suspend the pearl on it worth a thousand zoos come and hear our Eliezer said it once happened that a certain Maronite in Jerusalem had a large quantity of movables which he desired to give away he was thereupon informed that he had no other means but to transfer them along with land what did he do he went and bought Bethsela near Jerusalem and declared the north of this belongs to so and so and together with it go a hundred sheep and a hundred barrels on his death his directions were carried out but if you say that the movables must be heaped up thereon for what is Bethsela fit do you think that by Bethsela literally a coin is meant what is Sela a large area and why was it called Sela because it was as hard as a rock come and here for Rab Judah said in Rab's name it once happened that a certain man who fell ill in Jerusalem that is in accordance with our Eliezer's view other state he was in good health which agrees with the rabbis had a large quantity of movables which he desired to dispose of as a gift thereupon he was told that he had no other option but to transfer it along with land what did he do he went and purchased a field a quarter cab sowing an area and declared lay square hand breadth belonged to so and so and with it go a hundred sheep and a hundred barrels on his death the sages confirmed his testimony now if you say that they, the movables must be heaped up thereon for what is a square hand breadth fit the reference here is to money reason to supports this for should you think that a hundred sheep and a hundred barrels are meant literally he should have transferred them by barter what then money then he could have transferred it to him by Meshika, but it must mean that the recipient is absent then here too it means that the recipient is absent then he should have transferred it to him by another he could not rely thereon fearing that the other would steal and consume it then what is meant by he had no other option it means this in view of the fact that he has no confidence in a stranger there is no other course but to transfer it in virtue of real estate come and your Rabban Gamaliel and some elders were once traveling in a ship set Rabban Gamaliel to the elders let the tent which I am to measure out Talmud, Mosque edition be given to Joshua and its place where it is lying be rented to him and the other tent which I am to measure out be given to Akiba be Joseph that he shall acquire it on behalf of the poor and its place be rented to him this proves that they must be heaped up thereon no there it was different for he did not wish to give them trouble come and here for Rabbi Isaac said in Rab's name there are two. Different kinds of deeds thus if a man declares acquire a title to this field on behalf of so and so and indict a deed for him he can retract from the deed but not from the field but if he stipulates on condition that you indict a deed for him he can retract from both the deed and the field are high b often said in Arhuna's name there are three kinds of deeds too as just stated the third if the vendor anticipates payment and indicts a deed for him the vendee in accordance with what we learned a deed may be written for the vendor even though the vendee is not with him and as soon as he takes possession of the land the deed is vested in the vendee wherever it is this proves that they need not be heaped up there on a deed is different as it is a bit of the land but there on it was taught this is an example of what we learned property which does not provide security may be acquired in conjunction with property which provides security by money by deed or by azaka this Proves that they need not be heaped up thereon. This proves that the scholars propounded is by dint thereof necessary or not come and here for all these cases are taught and yet by dint of is not mentioned and on your view is let him acquire it taught but it must mean only when he says acquire it then here too it may mean only when he says by dint of now the laws they need not be heaped thereon whereas acquire it and by dint of are essential the scholars propounded what if the field is sold and the movables are gifted come and here the tent which I am to measure out to be given to Joshua and its place be rented to him this proves that the scholars propounded what if the field is transferred to one person and the movables to another come and here a tent which I am to measure out be given to Akiba be Joseph that he shall acquire it on behalf of the poor and its place be rented to him this does not solve it what is meant by rented rented for the tithe alternatively are Akiba was different for he was the hand of the poor Rabbah said this was taught only if he the purchaser had paid the money for them all but if he had not paid the money for them all he acquires only to the extent of his money it was taught in agreement with Rabbah the power of money is superior to that of a deed and the power of a deed is superior to that of money the power of money is superior etc in that hippish and the second tithe are redeemed therewith which is not so in the case of deed and the power of a deed is superior for a deed can free an Israelite daughter which does not hold good of money and the power of both is superior to that of Hezaka and the power of Hezaka is superior to that of both the power of both is superior etc in that both give a title to a Hebrew slave which is not so in the case of Hezaka and the power of Hezaka is superior to that of both for with Hezaka if a sells B ten fields situated in ten countries as soon as B takes possession of one he Acquires all Talmud, Mosque edition B when is this if he has paid him for all but if he has not paid the money for all he gains a title only to the extent of his money the support Samuel for Samuel said if a sells B ten fields situated in ten countries as soon as B takes possession of one he then acquires all said Araha son of Araka the proof is if he delivered him ten cows tied by one court and said to him acquire them would he not acquire then all how compare he objected there the tie is in his hand whereas here the tie is not in his hand other state Araha son of Araka said the proof that he does not acquire them all is if he delivered him ten cows tied by one court and said to him acquire this one would he acquire them all how compare there they are separate entities but here the earth is one block and they obligate the property etc Ola said how do we derive the law of the superimposed oath from the Torah because it is said and the woman shall say amen amen and we Learn to what does she say amen amen to the curse amen to the oath amen that she was not unfaithful by this man amen that she was not unfaithful by any other man amen that I did not go aside as an Aruza and Nisua when waiting for the Yavam or as a Kanduza now how is this Aruza meant shall we say that he the Aruz warned her when an Aruza and makes her drink the bitter waters likewise as an Aruza but we learned an Aruza and one who waits for the Yavam neither drink nor receive their Kethuba why because the divine law said and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanliness being under thy husband which condition is absent but if it means that he warned her as an Aruza she privily closeted herself with the man against whom she was warned likewise when an Aruza and he makes her drink when an Nisua then can the water test her surely scripture said and the man shall be free from iniquity which means when the husband himself is free from sin water test his wife if the husband himself is not free from sin water cannot test his wife hence it is possible only by means of superimposition now we have found this a superimposed oath in the case of Soda which belongs to ecclesiastical law how do we know it of civil law the school of our Ishmael taught a minori if we superimpose an oath in the case of a Soda Talmud, Mosque edition to Talmud, Mosque edition though if the oath cannot be demanded of her on the evidence of one witness only then in the case of a monetary claim where a demand for an oath can be made on the evidence of one witness it surely follows that we superimpose an oath now we have thus learned this of a positive claim how do we know it of a case of doubt it was taught our Simeon B.O. he said an oath was ordered without the temple court and an oath was ordered
is given in exchange how so if one barters an ox for a cow or an ass for an ox as soon as one party takes possession the other becomes liable for what is given in exchange tomorrow what is the barter money then this proves that coin can become an object of barter said Rab Judah this is its meaning whatever is assessed as the value of another object Talmud, Mosque Edition B as soon as one party takes possession the other assumes liability for what is given in exchange this follows too from the statement how so if one barters an ox for a cow or an ass for an ox this proves it now on the original hypothesis that coin can affect the barter what is meant by how so it means this and produce two can affect the barter how so if one barters an ox for a cow or an ass for an ox as soon as one party takes possession the other assumes liability for what is given in exchange now this agrees with Arshis who maintained produce can affect the barter but on Arnaman's view is that produce cannot Effect of barter what can be said it means this money sometimes ranks as an object of barter how so if one barters the money of an ox for a cow or the money of an ass for an ox what is the reason he agrees with Aryohanan who said biblically speaking money affects a title why then was it decreed that only Meshika gives possession as a precautionary measure lest he say to him your weed was burnt in the loft now the rabbis enacted a preventive measure only for a usual occurrence but not for an unusual occurrence now according to Resh Lakish who maintains that Meshika is explicitly required by biblical law as well if he agrees with Arshis hate who rules that produce can affect the barter then he can explain it as Arshis hate but if he holds with Arnaman that produce cannot affect the barter whilst money does not affect the title at all how can he explain it you are forced to say that he agrees with Arshis hate mission of the sanctuary's title to property is acquired by money the Title of a common man to property by Hazaka dedication to the sanctuary is equal to delivery to a common person. Gemara our rabbis taught how is the sanctuary's title acquired by money if the temple treasurer pays money for an animal even if the animal is at the world's end he acquires it whereas a common person gains no title until he performs Meshika how is dedication to the sanctuary equal to delivery to a common person if one declares this ox be a burnt offering this house be hippish. Even if they are at the world's end it hippish acquires them whereas a common person gains no title Talmud, Mosque Edition until he performs Meshika or Hazaka if one a common person performs Meshika with it when it is worth a mana but has no time to redeem it pay the money until it rises to 200 Zeus he must pay 200 what is the reason scripture said then he shall pay the money and it shall be assured to him if he performs Meshika when it is worth 200 and has no time to redeem it until it falls to Amena he must pay 200 what is the reason that the rights of a layman should not be stronger than those of Hittish if he redeems it when it is worth 200 and has no time to perform Meshika before it falls to Amena he must pay 200 what is the reason scripture said then he shall pay the money and it shall be assured to him if he redeems it at Amena and has no time to perform Meshika before it rises to 200 what he has redeemed is redeemed and he pays only Amena why here too let us say the rights of a layman should not be stronger than those of Hittish must not a common person submit to the curse he who punished etc remission all obligations of the son upon the father men are bound but women are exempt but all obligations of the father upon the son both men and women are bound all affirmative precepts limited to time men are liable and women are exempt but all affirmative precepts not limited to Time are binding upon both men and women and all negative precepts whether limited to time or not limited to time are binding upon both men and women excepting ye shall not round the corners of your heads neither shall thou mar the corner of thy beard and he shall not defile himself to the dead tomorrow what is the meaning of all obligations of the son upon the father shall we say all which the son is bound to perform for his father are then women i.e. daughters exempt but it was taught every man his mother and his father ye shall fear every man i know this only of a man whence do i know it of a woman when it is said every man his mother and his father ye shall fear behold two are mentioned here said rab judah this is the meaning all obligations of the son which lie upon the father to do to his son men are bound but women mothers are exempt we thus learned here what our rabbis taught the father is bound in respect of his son to circumcise redeem teach him for a take a wife for him and teach him crap some say to teach him to swim too our Judah said he who does not teach his son a crap teaches him brigandage brigandage can you really think so but it is as though he taught him brigandage to circumcise him how do we know it because it is written and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac and if his father did not circumcise him Bethdin is bound to circumcise him for it is written every male among you shall be circumcised and if Bethdin did not circumcise him he is bound to circumcise himself for it is written and the uncircumcised male who will not circumcise the flesh of his foreskin that soul shall be cut off how do we know that she the mother has no such obligation because it is written and Abraham circumcised his son as God had commanded him him but not her the mother now we find this so at that time how do we know it for all times the school of our Ishmael taught whenever command is stated its only purpose is to denote exhortation for then at all time exhortation as it is written but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him then and for all time as it is written front the day that the Lord gave commandment and onward throughout your generations to redeem him how do we know it because it is written and all the firstborn of man among thy sons shalt thou redeem and if his father did not redeem him he is bound to redeem himself for it is written nevertheless the firstborn of man thou shalt surely redeem and how do we know that she his mother is not obliged to redeem him because it is written thou shalt redeem today which may also be read thou shalt redeem thyself to pay day one who is charged with redeeming oneself is charged to redeem others whereas one who is not charged to redeem oneself is not charged to redeem others and how do we know that she is not bound to redeem herself because it is written thou shalt redeem today which may be read thou shalt redeem thyself the one who others are commanded to redeem is commanded to redeem oneself the one who mothers are not commanded to redeem is not commanded to redeem oneself and how do we know that others are not commanded to redeem her because the writ saith and all the firstborn of men among thy sons shalt thou redeem thy sons but not thy daughters are rabbis taught if there is himself to redeem and his son to redeem he takes precedence over his son our judah said his son precedes him for the precept in respect to the latter lies primarily upon his father whereas that concerning his son lies primarily upon himself said our jeremiah all agree talmud mosque edition b if only five sellers are available he takes precedence over his son what is the reason a precept affecting his own person is more important they differ when there are five sellers worth of property sold and five sellers free our judah holds a dead decreed in scripture is as one indicted in a bond hence with these five sellers that are free he redeems his Son, while the priest goes and seizes the five sellers worth that is sold on account of himself, the father, but the rabbis maintain the debt decreed in scripture is not as one indicted in a bond. Therefore, a precept touching his own person is more important. Our rabbis taught if one has his son to redeem and the duty of making a festival pilgrimage, he must first redeem his son and then make the festival pilgrimage. Our Judah said he must first make the festival pilgrimage and then redeem his son. For the one is a passing precept, whereas the other is not a passing precept. As for our Judah, it is well the reason being as he states, but what is the reason of the rabbis? Because scripture states, All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and only then is it stated, and none shall appear before me empty. Our rabbis taught, How do we know that if one has five firstborn sons by five wives, he is bound to redeem them all from the verse, All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, but that is. Obvious since the divine law made it dependent upon the opening of the womb I might have argued let us learn the meaning of firstborn here from inheritance just as there the beginning of his strength is meant so here too therefore we are informed that it is not so to teach him for how do we know it because it is written and ye shall teach them your sons and if his father did not teach him he must teach himself for it is written and ye shall study how do we know that she the mother has no duty to teach her children because it is written we limited him and ye shall teach which also reads you limited him and ye shall study hence whoever is commanded to study is commanded to teach whoever is not commanded to study is not commanded to teach and how do we know that she is not bound to teach herself because it is written we limited him and ye shall teach you limited him and ye shall learn the one who mothers are commanded to teach is commanded to teach oneself and it one whom others are not commanded to teach is not commanded to teach oneself how then do we know that others are not commanded to teach her because it is written and ye shall teach them your sons but not your daughters our rabbis taught if he
Around the neck shall one study Torah, yet they do not differ. The one refers to ourselves, Babylonians, the other to them, Palestinians, are his top race. Arham, Hanna, before Arunah is a great man, said he to him, When he visits, you bring him to me. When he arrived, he saw that he wore no head dash covering. Why have you no head dress? Asked he, Because I am not married, was the reply. Thereupon he, Arunah, turned his face away from him. See to it that you do not appear before me again before you are married. Said he, Arunah, was thus in accordance with his views, for he said he who is twenty years of age and is not married spends all his days in sin. In sin, can you really think so? But say, spends all his days in sinful thoughts. Rabbi said, and the school of our Ishmael taught likewise until the age of twenty. The Holy One, blessed be he, sits and waits. When will he take a wife as soon as one attains twenty and has not married? He exclaims, Blessed be his bones are his dust. Said the reason that I am superior to my Colleagues is that I married at sixteen and had I married at fourteen Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and A I would have said to Satan an arrow in your eye Rabbah said to our Nathan BMI whilst your hand is yet upon your son's neck marry him is between sixteen and twenty-two others state between eighteen and twenty-four this is disputed by Tanaim train of the youth in the way he should go our Judah and our Nehemiah differ thereon one maintains youth means between sixteen and twenty-two the other affirms. Between eighteen and twenty-four to what extent is a man obliged to teach his son Torah said Rab Judah in Samuel's name e.g. Zebulun the son of Dan whom his grandfather taught Micra scripture Mishnah Talmud Halacha and Agadoth an objection is raised if he his father taught him Micra he need not teach him Mishnah Baran Rabbah said Micra means Torah like Zebulun be Dan yet not altogether so like Zebulun be Dan whom his grandfather taught yet not altogether so for whereas there he was taught. My promise Natal Mut Halacha and Gadoth here as a general rule, my cry alone suffices now is the grandfather under this obligation. Surely it was taught, and ye shall teach them your sons, but not your sons' sons. How then do I interpret the verse and thou shalt make them known unto thy sons and thy sons' sons, eschewing that to him who teaches his son Torah the describes merit as though he had taught him his son and his son's son until the end of all time he agrees with the following. Tana for it was taught, and ye shall teach them your sons, hence I only know your sons. How do I know your sons' sons from the verse and thou shalt make them known unto thy sons and thy sons' sons? If so, why state thy sons to teach thy sons, but not thy daughters are Joshua Belevi said he who teaches his grandson Torah the regards him as though he had received it direct from Mount Sinai for it is said, and thou shalt make them known unto your sons and your sons' sons, which is followed by that is. The day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb Arhai Abba found our Joshua Belevi wearing a plain cloth upon his head and taking a child to the synagogue for study. What is the meaning of all this? He demanded, Is it then a small thing? He replied, That it is written, and thou shalt make them known to your sons and your sons' sons, which is followed by that is the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb. From then onwards, Arhai Abba did not taste meat before revising the previous day's lesson with the child and adding another verse. Rabbi son of Arhuna did not taste meat until he took the child to school. Our Safra said on the authority of our Joshua Behanania, What is meant by and thou shalt teach them diligently? We shall add them unto thy children. Read not, we shall add them, but we shall teach them. You shall divide into three. One should always divide his years into three, devoting a third to Micra, a third to Mishnah, and a third to Talmud. Does one then know how long? He will live. This refers only to days the early scholars were called Sofrim because they used to count all the letters of the Torah. Thus they said the Bob and Gahan marks half the letters of the Torah. Derosh, Derosh, half the words. We have half the verses. The bore out of the wood. Me, Yayar, doth ravage at the iron of Yayar marks half of the Psalms. But he being full of compassion forgiveth their iniquity. Half of the verses are Joseph propounded. Does the Bob of Gahan belong to the first half? Or the second said they the scholars to him, Let a scroll of the Torah be brought and we will count them. Did not Rabbi be Barhana say they did not stir from there until a scroll of the Torah was brought and they counted them. They were thoroughly versed in the defective and full readings. But we are not our Joseph propounded. Does we have belong to the first half? Or the second said Abay to him for the verses. At least we can bring a scroll and count them in the verses too. We are not. Certain for when our Ahabi Adda came, he said in the West Palestine, the following verses divided into three, and the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, etc. Our rabbis taught there are 5,888 verses in the Torah. The Psalms exceed this by eight, while Chronicles are less by eight. Our rabbis taught, and thou shalt teach them diligently, means that the words of the Torah shall be clear cut in your mouth, so that if anyone asks you something, you should not shoot out and then answer him, but be able to answer him immediately. For it is said, Talmud, Mosque Kiddush, and be say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and it is also said, Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart, and it is also said, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of thy youth, and it is also said, Sharp arrows of the mighty, and it is also said, Thine arrows are sharp, the peoples fall under thee, and it is also said, Happy. Is the man that hath his quiver full of them, they shall not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. What is meant by with their enemies in the gate said our high Abba, even father and son, master and disciple who study Torah at the same gate become enemies of each other, yet they do not stir from there until they come to love each other, for it is written, wherefore it is said at the book of the wars of the Lord, love is be so read not be so but be so our rabbis taught. We Samtam read Samtam a perfect remedy. This may be compared to a man who struck his son a strong blow and then put a plaster on his wound, saying to him, My son, as long as this plaster is on your wound, you can eat and drink it will and bathe in hot or cold water without fear, but if you remove it, it will break out into sores. Even so did the Holy One bless be he speak unto Israel, my children, I created the evil desire, but I also created the Torah as its antidote if you occupy yourselves. With the Torah you will not be delivered into his hand, for it is said, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be exalted, but if you do not occupy yourselves with the Torah, ye shall be delivered into his hand, for it is written, Sin couch at the door, moreover, he is altogether preoccupied with thee to make thee sin, for it is said, And unto thee shall be his desire, yet if thou wilt, thou canst rule over him, for it is said, And thou shalt rule over him, our rabbis taught the evil desire is hard to bear. Since even his creator called him evil, as it is written, for that the desire of man's heart is evil from his youth, our Isaac said, Man's evil desire renews itself daily against him, as it is said, Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil every day, and our Simeon believe, I said, Man's evil desire gathers strength against him daily and seeks to slay him, for it is said, The wicked watch out the righteous and seek to slay him, and were not the Holy One blessed be he to help him, man he would not be able to prevail against him, for it is said the Lord will not leave him in his hand. The school of our Ishmael taught my son, if this repulsive wretch assail thee, lead him to the schoolhouse. If he is of stone, he will dissolve if iron, he will shiver into fragments. For it is said, is not my word like as fire saith the Lord, and like a hammer that break the rock in pieces. If he is of stone, he will dissolve. For it is written, O everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and it is said the waters where the stones to take a wife for him. How do we know it? Because it is written, Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands. As for marrying his son, it is well, for it rests with him. But with respect to his daughter, does it then rest with him? This is his meaning. Let her be dowered, clothed, and adorned, that men should eagerly desire her to teach him a craft. Whence do we know it? Said Hezekiah, Scripture saith, See to it. Livelihood with the wife whom thou lovest, if wife is literal, this teaches just as he the father is bound to take a wife for him, so is he bound to teach him a craft for a livelihood. If it is a metaphor for Torah, then just as he is bound to teach him Torah, so is he bound to teach him a craft, and some say he must teach him to swim in water too. What is the reason his life may depend on it? Our Judah said he who does not teach him a craft teaches him brigandage, brigandage, can you think so? But it is like teaching him brigandage wherein do they differ, they differ where he teaches him business, but all obligations of the father upon the son, etc. What is meant by all obligations of the father upon the son shall we say all precepts which the father is bound to perform for his
had dwelt among them and they had honored me it was taught rabbi said it is revealed and known to him who decreed and the world came into existence that a son honors his mother more than his father talmud mosque because she sways him by words therefore the holy one blessed be he placed the honor of the father before that of the mother it is revealed and known to him who decreed and the world came into existence that a son reverences his father more than his mother because he teaches him for her therefore the holy one blessed be he put the fear reverence of the mother before that of the father Atan recited before Arnaman when a man vexes his father and his mother the holy one blessed be he says i did right in not dwelling among them for had i dwelt among them they would have vexed me or isaac said he who transgresses in secret is as though he pressed the feet of the shechen offer it is written thus saith the lord the heaven is my throne and the earth is my Footstool our Joshua believe I said one may not walk four cubits with haughty mean for it is said the whole earth is full of his glory our son of our Joshua would not walk four cubits bareheaded saying the Sheshan is above my head a widow's son asked our Eliza if my father orders give me a drink of water and my mother does likewise which takes precedence leave your mother's honor and fulfill the honor due to your father he replied for both you and your mother are bound to honor your father then he went before our Joshua who answered him the same rabbi said he to him what if she is divorced from your eyelids it is obvious that you are a widow's son he retorted pour some water for them into a basin and screech for them like fowls will a rabble lectured at the entrance to the Nasai's house what is meant by all the kings of the earth shall make admission unto the O Lord for they have heard the words of thy mouth not the word of thy mouth but the words of thy mouth is said when the Holy One Blessed be he proclaimed Lamb the Lord thy God and thou shalt have none other gods before me the nations of the world said he teaches merely for his own honor as soon as he declared honor thy father and thy mother they recanted and admitted the justice of the first command to Rabbah said this may be deduced from the following the beginning of thy word is true the beginning of thy word but not the end but from the latter portion of thy declaration it may be seen that the first portion is true it was propounded of Arullah how far does the honor of parents extend he replied go forth and see what a certain heathen Dhamma son of Nethin by name did in Askel and the sages once desired merchandise from him in which there was six hundred thousand gold denarii profit but the key was lying under his father and so he did not trouble him Rab Judah said in Samuel's name Arulizer was asked how far does the honor of parents extend said he go forth and see what a certain heathen Thomas son of Nathan by name did in Askel and the sages sought jewels for the ephod at a profit of six hundred thousand gold denarii Archahana taught at a profit of eight hundred thousand but as the key was lying under his father's pillow he did not trouble him the following year the holy one blessed be he gave him his reward a red heifer was born to him in his herd when the sages of Israel went to him to buy it he said to them I know you that even if I ask you for all the money in the world you would pay me but I ask of you only the money which I lost through my father's honor now our Hannah observed thereon if one who is not commanded to honor his parents yet does so is thus rewarded how much more so one who is commanded and does so for our Hannah said he who is commanded and fulfills the command is greater than he who fulfills it though not commanded our Joseph said originally I thought that if anyone would tell me that the Halacha agrees with our Judah that a blind person is exempt from the precepts I would make a banquet for the rabbi seeing that I am not obliged yet fulfill them now however that I have heard our Hannah's dictum that he who is commanded and fulfills the command is greater than he who fulfills it though not commanded on the contrary if anyone should tell me that the Halacha does not agree with our Judah I would make a banquet for the rabbis when our Dimi came he said he Dhamma son of Nethin was once wearing a gold embroidered silken cloak and sitting among Roman nobles when his mother came tore it off from him struck him on the head and spat in his face yet he did not shame her Abami son of Arabad recited one may give his father pheasants as food yet this drives him from the world whereas another may make him grind in a mill Talmud Mosque Kiddush and B and this brings him to the world to come Arabab said eg my son Abami has fulfilled the precept of honor Abami had five ordained sons in his father's lifetime yet when Arabab came and called out at the door he himself speedily went and opened it for him crying yes yes until he reached it one day he asked him give me a drink of water by the time he brought it he had fallen asleep thereupon he bent and stood over him until he awoke it so happened that Abami succeeded in interpreting a song of Azaf Jacob Jacob asked Abai for instance for whom my father pours out a cup of wine and my mother mixes it on my returning from the school what am I to do except it from your mother he replied but not from your father for since he is a scholar he may feel affronted our Tarfan had a mother for whom whenever she wished to mount into bed he would bend down to let her ascend and when she wished to descend she stepped down upon him he went and boasted thereof in the school said they to him you have not yet reached half the honor do as she then thrown a purse before you into the sea without your shaming her when our Joseph heard his mother's footsteps he would Say I will arise before the approaching Sheshanah or Yohanan said happy is he who has not seen them or Yohanan's father died when his mother conceived him and his mother died when she bore him and Abbe was likewise but that is not so for Abbe said my mother told me that was his foster mother R.C. had an aged mother said she to him I want ornaments so he made them for her I want a husband I will look out for you I want a husband as handsome as you thereupon he left her and went to Palestine on hearing that she was following him he went to our Yohanan and asked him may I leave Palestine for abroad it is forbidden he replied but what if it is to meet my mother I do not know said he he waited a short time and went before him again as he said he you have determined to go may the omnipresent bring you back in peace then he went before our Eliezer and said to him perhaps God forbid he was angry what then did he say to you inquired he the omnipresent bring you back in peace was the answer had he been angry he rejoined he would not have blessed you in the meanwhile he learned that her coffin was coming had I known he exclaimed I would not have gone out our rabbis taught he must honor him in life and must honor him in death in life e.g. one who is heated in a place on account of his father should not say let me go for my own sake speed me for my own sake or free me for my own sake but all for my father's sake in death e.g. if one is reporting something heard from his mouth he should not say thus did my father say but thus said my father my teacher for whose resting place may I be an atonement but that is only within twelve months of his death thereafter he must say his memory before a blessing for the life of the world to come our rabbis taught a sage must change his father's name and his teacher's name but the interpreter does not change his father's name and his teacher's name whose father shall we say the father of the interpreter is then the interpreter not obliged to honor his parents but said Rabbah it means the name of the sage's father or the name of the sage's teacher as when Marsan of Arashi lectured at the college sessions he said to the interpreter my father my teacher said thus whereas his interpreter said thus did Arashi say our rabbis taught what is fear and what is honor fear means that he the son must neither stand in his the father's place nor sit in his place nor contradict his words nor tip the scales against him. Honor means that he must give him food and drink clothes and cover him lead him in and out the scholars propounded Talmud, Mosque Edition at whose expense Rab Judah said the sons are Naman B. Ashai said the fathers the rabbis gave a ruling to our Jeremiah other state to our Jeremiah son in accordance with the view that it must be at the father's expense and objection is raised it is said honor thy father and thy mother and it is also said honor the Lord with thy substance just as it. Letter means at personal cost so the former two but if you say at the father's expense how does it affect him through loss of time come and here two brothers two partners a father and son a master and disciple may redeem second tithe for each other and may feed each other with the poor tithe but if you say at the son's expense he is thus found to fulfill his obligations with what belongs to the poor this refers only to an extra quantity if so could it be taught thereon our Judah said a curse may alight upon him who feeds his father with poor tithe but if the reference is to an extra quantity what does it matter even so the matter is humiliating to the father come and here our Eliza was asked how far does the honor of parents extend said he that he should take a purse throw it in his presence into the sea and not shame him but if you say at the father's expense what does it matter to him it refers to a potential heir as in the case of Rabbi son of Arhuna Arhuna tore up silk in the presence of his son Rabbi saying I will go and see whether he flies into a temper or not but perhaps he would get angry and then he or who not would violate thou shalt not put a stumbling block before the blind he renounced his honor for him but he or who not violated thou shalt
Father, it is thus written in the Torah, it is thus written in the Torah, but he surely grieves him, but he must say to him, Father, such and such a verse is written in the Torah, Eliezer B. Matthew said, If my father orders me, give me a drink of water while I have a precept to perform, I disregard my father's honor and perform the precept, since both my father and I are bound to fulfill the precepts, is he be Judah maintained, if the precept can be performed by others, it should be performed by others while. He should bestir himself for his father's honor, said Armatina the Halacha agrees with his Ibijud, our Isaac B. Sheila said in Armatina's name in the name of our Histadi, if a father renounces the honor due to him, it is renounced, but if a rabbi renounces his honor, it is not renounced, our Joseph ruled, even if a rabbi renounces his honor, it is renounced, for it is said, and the Lord went before them by day, said Rabbah, how compare there with respect to the Holy One, blessed be he, the world is his, and it. Torah is his, hence he can forego his honor, Talmud, Mosque, Hitchin, B, but here is then the Torah, his the rabbi subsequently Rabbah said, indeed the Torah is his, the scholars, for it is written, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, but that is not so, for Rabbah was serving drink at his son's wedding, and when he offered a cup to our Papa and our Huna, son of our Joshua, they stood up before him, but when he offered our Mari and our Phineas, son of our Histadi, they did not stand up before him thereupon. He was offended and exclaimed, Are these rabbis and the others not? It also happened that our Papa was serving drink at the wedding of Abamar his son when he offered a cup to our Isaac son of Rab Judah. He did not rise before him, whereupon he was offended, even so they should have shown him respect. Our Ashi said, Even on the view that if a rabbi renounces his honor, it is renounced, yet if an Asi renounces his honor, his renunciation is invalid. An objection is raised, it once happened that our Eliezer are. Joshua and Arzadak were reclining at a banquet of Rabban Gamaliel's son while Rabban Gamaliel was standing over them and serving drink on his offering a cup to our Eliezer. He did not accept it, but when he offered it to our Joshua, he did say, Our Eliezer to him, What is this Joshua? We are sitting while Rabban Gamaliel is standing over us and serving drink. We find that even a greater than he acted as survivor. He replied, Abraham was the greatest man of his age, yet it is written of him, and he stood over. The men should you say that they appear to him as ministering angels, they appear to him only as Arabs, then shall not our Gamaliel purify stand over us and offer drinks at Arzadak unto them. How long will you disregard the honor of the omnipresent and occupy yourselves with the honor of men? The Holy One, blessed be he, causeth the winds to blow, the vapors to ascend, the rain to fall, the earth to yield, and sets a table before everyone, and we shall not our Gamaliel purify stand over us and offer drink. But if stated it was thus stated, our Ashi said, even on the view that if an Asi renounces his honor, it is valid, yet if a king renounces his honor, it is not for it is said, Thou shalt surely set a king over the teaching that his authority shall be over the our rabbis taught, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, I might think even before an aged sinner, therefore it is said, and honor the face of Azakin, and Zakin can only refer to a sage, for it is said, Gather unto me seventy men. Of the elders of Israel are Hosea the Galilean said Zakin means only he who has acquired wisdom for it is said the Lord possessed me as he wisdom personified as the beginning of his way I might think that one might stand up before him even at a great distance therefore it is written thou shalt rise up and thou shalt honor implying I ordered one to rise up only where it confers honor I might think that one must honor him with money therefore it is written thou shalt rise up and thou shalt honor just as rising up involves no monetary loss so does honoring also mean without monetary loss I might think that one must rise up before him out of a privy or a bathhouse therefore it is written thou shalt rise up and thou shalt honor implying I ordered to rise up only in a place where it confers honor I might think that one may shut his eyes as though he has not seen him therefore it is taught thou shalt rise up and thou shalt fear the God of what is known to the heart only. It is said, and thou shalt fear thy God. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said, How do we know that the sage must not trouble the people from the verse old man? And thou shalt fear is he be Judah said, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head implies even any hoary head, but is not our Jose the Galilean identical with the first tana? They differ in respect to a young sage. The first tana holds that a young sage is not included in the precept, whereas our Jose the Galilean holds that he is what is our Jose the Galilean's reason he can tell you should you think as the first tana asserts, if so, the Almerciful should have written, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head Zakin and honor him. Why did the Almerciful divide them to teach that the one hoary head is not identical with the other Zakin and vice versa? This proves that even a young sage is included in the first tana that is because it is desired to place old man in proximity to and thou shalt fear now what is the first tana? Reason should you think as our Jose the Galilean maintains if so the Almerciful should have written Talmud, Mosque that thou shalt rise up before and honor the hoary head thou shalt rise up before and honor the old man and since it is not written thus it follows that they are identical the master said I might think that one must honor him with money therefore it is written thou shalt rise up and thou shalt honor just as rising up involves no monetary loss so does honoring also mean without monetary loss but is there no monetary loss involved in rising does it not refer even to him who is piercing pearls and whilst he rises up before him he is disturbed from his work but rising is compared to honoring just as honoring involves no cessation of work so rising to means such as involves no cessation of work and honoring is compared to rising to just as rising involves no monetary loss so honoring means such as involves no monetary loss hence it was said artisans may not rise before scholars whilst engaged in their work must they not but we learned all artisans rise before them give them greeting and exclaim to them our brethren men of such and such a place enter in peace set are you hand and before them they must stand up yet before scholars they may not our Jose B. Avin said come and see how beloved a precept is in its time for behold they rose up before them yet not before scholars but perhaps it is different therefore otherwise you may cause them to offend in the future the master said I might think that one must rise up before him out of a privy or a bathhouse is it then not so but our high was sitting in a bathhouse when our Simeon son of rabbi passed by but he did not rise before him whereat he was offended and went and complained to his father I taught him two fifths of the book of psalms yet he did not rise up before me it also happened that our other state our Ishmael son of our Jose was sitting in a bathhouse when our Simeon B. Rabbi Entered and passed by, yet he did not rise before him. Thereat he was offended and went and complained to his father. I taught him two thirds of a third of the law. Priests said he to him, perhaps he was sitting and meditating thereon. Thus it is only because he might have been sitting and meditating thereon, but otherwise it would not be excusable. There is no difficulty. The one refers to the inner chambers, the other to the outer chambers. That is logical too. For Rabbi Barhana said, one may meditate on learning everywhere except at the baths and in a privy. That however does not follow. Maybe it is different when done involuntarily. I might think one may shut his eyes as though he has not seen him. Are we then dealing with the wicked? But say thus, I might think that one may shut his eyes before the obligation arises, so that when it does, he will not see him. That he should stand up before him. Therefore it is stated, thou shalt rise up and thou shalt fear a taught which. Rising up, choose honor. Say that is for Cupid. Said Abbe that was said only of one who is not his distinguished teacher, but as for his teacher, P A R excellence. As far as his eyes reach, Abbe used to rise as soon as he saw the ear of our Joseph's ass approaching. Abbe was riding an ass, making his way on the bank of the river Sage. And now our Meshachit and other scholars were sitting on the opposite bank, and they did not rise before him. Thereupon he expostulated with them, "Am I not your teacher, P A R excellence?" It was thoughtlessness on our part. Replied they to him, "Our Simeon B Eliezer said, How do we know that the sage must not trouble the people from the verse, old man? And thou shalt fear." Abbe said, "We have it on tradition that if he the sage takes a circuitous route, he will live long." Abbe took a circuitous route. Our Zerah did likewise. Rabbeinu was sitting before our Jeremiah of Dipti when a certain man passed by without covering his head. How impudent is that man? He exclaimed, said he to. Him perhaps he is from the town of Mahaja where scholars are very common. Isi Bijuda said, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head implies even any hoary head are Yohanan said the Halachad is as Isi Bijuda are Yohanan used to rise before the heathen agent
He may come behind me, then do you stand up before him and do not fear for my honor. The scholars propounded what if his son is his teacher, must his father stand up before him? Come and hear for our Joshua H. Levi said, As for me, it is not me that I should stand up before my son, but that the honor of the Nasai's house demands it. Thus the reason is that I am his teacher, but if he were my teacher, I would rise before him. No, he meant thus as for me, it is not me that I should stand up before my son, even if he were my teacher, seeing that I am his father, but that the honor of the Nasai's house demands it. The scholars propounded is writing the same as walking or not said, Abe, come and hear. If the unclean person sits under a tree and the clean person stands, he is defiled. If the unclean person stands under the tree and the clean person sits, he remains clean, but if the unclean person sat down, the clean one is defiled, and the same applies to a leper stone. Now our and said this. Proofs that writing is the same as walking this proves that the scholars propounded must one rise before a scroll of the law or Hilkiah or Simon and our Eliezer say it follows a fortiori if we rise before those who study it how much more before that itself our Eli and our Jacob these Abdi were sitting when our Simeon B. Abba passed by whereupon they rose before him said he to them you should not have risen firstly because you are sages whereas I am but a Abraham or overshall then the Torah rise before its students now he held with our Eliezer who said a scholar must not stand up before his teacher when he the disciple is engaged in studying Abba condemned this teaching and when Moses went out unto the tent all the people rose up and stood and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tent our Mi and our Isaac the smith one maintained it was in a derogatory fashion the other said in a complimentary way he who explained it in a derogatory fashion as is known but he who Interpreted it in a complimentary manner, said Hezekiah Arhan, a son of Arabab, told me in Arabab's name in the name of Arabdimi of Haifa, when the Hakam sage passes, one must rise before him at a distance of four cubits, and when he has gone four cubits beyond him, he sits down. When an Abethin passes, one must stand up before him as soon as he comes inside, and immediately he passes four cubits beyond, he may sit down, but when the Nasai passes, one must rise as he comes inside, and may not sit down until he takes his seat, for it is written, and all the people stood and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tent. All affirmative precepts limited to time, etc. Our rabbis taught which are affirmative precepts limited to time, Sukhalalab, Shofar, Fringes, Talmud, Mosque, Edition, A, and Phylacteries, and what are affirmative precepts not limited to time, Azusa, Battlement, Returning, Lost Property, and the dismissal of the nest now is this a general principle, but unleavened. Bread rejoicing on festivals and assembling are affirmative precepts limited to time and yet incumbent upon women. Furthermore, study of the Torah, procreation, and the redemption of the sun are not affirmative precepts limited to time and yet women are exempt therefrom. Our Yohanan answered, We cannot learn from general principles even where exceptions are stated, for we learned an Arab and a partnership may be made with all comestibles excepting water and salt. Are there no more exceptions? Lo, there are mushrooms and truffles, but we must answer that we cannot learn from general principles even where exceptions are stated and affirmative precepts limited to time. Women are exempt. Whence do we know it is learned from phylacteries just as women are exempt from phylacteries, so are they exempt from all affirmative precepts limited to time. Phylacteries themselves are derived from the study of the Torah just as women are exempt from the study of the Torah, so are they exempt from. Phylacteries, but let us rather compare phylacteries to Mazuza. Phylacteries are assimilated to the study of the Torah in both the first section and the second, whereas they are not assimilated to Mazuza in the second section. Then let Mazuza be assimilated to the study of the Torah. You cannot think so because it is written, and thou shalt write them upon the Mazuza of thine house that your days may be multiplied. Do then men only need life and not women, but what of Sukkah, which is an affirmative precept limited to time, as it is written, Ye shall dwell in booth seven days. Yet the reason of woman's exemption is that Scripture wrote Hazrat to exclude women, but otherwise women would be liable. Said Abay, it is necessary. I would have thought since it is written, Ye shall dwell in booth seven days. Ye shall dwell, meaning even as ye normally dwell in a house, just as normal dwelling implies a husband and wife together, so must the Sukkah be inhabited by husband and Wife, but Rabbi said Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and B. It is necessary for another reason. I might have thought we derive identity of law from the employment of fifteen year and in connection with the feast of unleavened bread, just as their women are liable. So here too, hence it is necessary. But what a pilgrimage, which is an affirmative command limited to time. Yet the reason of woman's exemption is that Scripture wrote three times in the year, all the males shall appear before the Lord thy God. Thus excluding women, but otherwise women would be liable. It is necessary. I would have thought we learn the meaning of appearance from assembling. Now instead of deriving an exemption from phylacteries, let us deduce an obligation from the precept of rejoicing. Said Abay, as for a woman, her husband must make her rejoice. Then what can be said of a widow? It refers to her host. Now let us learn liability from the precept of assembling, because unleavened bread and assembling are two verses. I. Precepts with the same purpose, and wherever two verses have the same purpose, they cannot throw light upon other precepts. If so, phylacteries and pilgrimage are also two verses with one purpose and cannot illumine other precepts, they are both necessary for had the divine law stated phylacteries, but not pilgrimage. I would have thought, let us deduce the meaning of appearance from assembling while had the divine law written pilgrimage, but not phylacteries. I would have reasoned, let phylacteries be assimilated to Mazuza. Thus, both are necessary. If so, unleavened bread and assembling are also necessary for what are they necessary now? If the divine law stated assembling, but not unleavened bread, it were well, for I would argue, let us deduce fifteen fifteen from the feast of tabernacles, but let the divine law write unleavened bread and assembling is unnecessary, for I can reason if it is incumbent upon children, how much more so upon women, hence it is a case of two verses with the same. Purpose and they cannot throw light upon other precepts now that is well on the view that they do not illumine other cases but on the view that they do what may be said furthermore that affirmative precepts not limited to time are binding upon women how do we know it because we learn from fear just as fear is binding upon women so are all affirmative precepts not limited to time incumbent upon women but let us rather learn from the study of the Torah because the study of the Torah and procreation are two verses which teach the same thing and wherever two verses teach the same thing they do not illumine others Talmud, Mosque edition but according to our Yohan and Bibarika who maintained concerning both Adam and Eve it is said and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply what can be said because the study of the Torah and redemption of the firstborn are two verses with one purpose and such do not illumine others but according to our Yohan and Bibarika. To let procreation and fear be regarded as two verses with one purpose which do not illumine other cases both are necessary for if the divine law of fear and not procreation I would argue the divine law stated be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and conquer it only a man whose nature it is to conquer but not a woman as it is not her nature to conquer and if scripture wrote procreation and not fear I would reason a man who has the means to do this as see to shew fear to his parents is referred to but not a woman seeing that she lacks the means to fulfill this and that being so she has no obligation at all thus both are necessary now that is well on the view that two verses with the same teaching do not illumine others but on the view that they do what can be said said Robert the Papunians know the reason of this thing and who is it Arahabi Jacob scripture said and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that the Torah of the Lord may be in thy mouth, hence the whole Torah is compared to phylacteries, just as phylacteries are an affirmative command limited to time and women are exempt, so are they exempt from all positive commands limited to time, and since women are exempt from affirmative precepts limited to time, it follows that they are subject to those not limited to time now that is well on the view that phylacteries are a positive command limited to time, but what can be said on the view that they are? Not whom do you know to maintain that phylacteries are an affirmative precept not limited to time are mayor, but he holds that there are two verses with the same teaching and such do not illumine others, but according to our Judah who maintains that two verses with the same teaching illumine others, and also that phylacteries are a positive command limited to time, what can be said because unleavened bread rejoicing on festivals and assembling are three verses with the same teaching and such. Do not illumine others and all negative precepts, etc. Whence do we know
Say that it is not so, thus they are all necessary, excepting ye shall not round the corner of your heads, neither shalt thou mar, etc. As for defiling oneself to the dead, that is well, because it is written, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, there shall none defile himself for the dead among his people, hence the sons of Aaron, but not the daughters of Aaron. But how do we know that she is exempt from the injunction against rounding, etc., and marring, etc., because it is written, Yet shall not round the corner of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard, whoever is included in the prohibition of marring is included in that of rounding, but women, since they are not subject to the prohibition of marring, are not subject to that of rounding, and how do we know that they are not subject to the injunction against marring either by common sense, for they have no beard, or alternatively from scripture, for scripture saith, Ye shall not round the corner of your heads neither shalt thou mar the corner of thy beard since scripture varies its speech for otherwise the divine law should write the corner of your beards why thy beard to intimate thy beard but not thy wife's beard is it then not but it was taught the beard of a woman and that of Asaris who grew here are like a man's beard in all matters surely that means in respect to marring said Abbe you cannot say that it is in respect to marring for we learn corner corner from the sons of Aaron just as their women are exempt so here two women are exempt but if we hold that the sons of Aaron is written with reference to the whole section let the rid refrain from it and it follows a fortiori for I can argue of a priest upon whom scripture imposes additional precepts we say the sons of Aaron but not the daughters of Aaron how much more so of Israelites but for the Gazerish why I would reason that the connection is broken then now too let us say that the connection is Broken and as for the Gazerish that is required for what was taught, he shall not shave. I might think that if he shaves it with scissors, he is liable for violating the injunction. Therefore, it is stated, Thou shalt not mar. I might think that if he plucks it his hair out with pincers or a remover, he is liable. Therefore, it is stated, They shall not shave. How then is it meant shaving, which involves marring this with a razor? If so, let scripture write, Ye shall not round the corner of your heads, neither shalt thou mar that of thy beard. Why repeat the corner of thy beard? Hence, both are inferred. Then, when it was taught, the beard of a woman and that of Asaris who grew here are like a man's beard in all respects to what law does it refer? Said Marzitra to the uncleanliness of leprosy, the uncleanliness of leprosy. But that is explicitly stated if a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or the beard. But said Marzitra, it is in respect of purification from leprosy. But Purification from leprosy too is obvious since she is liable to uncleanliness through her beard she needs the same purification it is necessary I might have assumed it is written with separate subjects thus if a man or a woman have a plague upon the head while or the beard reverts to the man alone therefore we are informed otherwise is he taught women are exempt from the injunction against baldness too what is this his reason because he interprets thus ye are sons of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God the implied limitation sons but not daughters is in respect of baldness you say in respect of baldness yet perhaps it is not so but rather in respect of cutting when it is said for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God cutting is referred to hence how can I interpret the implication sons but not daughters in respect to baldness and why do you prefer to? Include cutting and exclude baldness. I include cutting which is possible both where there is hair and where there is no hair, and I exclude baldness which is possible only in the place of hair. Yet perhaps sons but not daughters applies to both baldness and cutting. While for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God relates to incision. Is he holds that incision serata and cutting to die to Talmud. Mosque edition are identical. Abbe said this is his reason this he learns baldness. Baldness from the sons of Aaron just as their women are exempt. So here two women are exempt. But if we hold that the phrase the sons of Aaron relates to the whole section, let scripture refrain from it and a woman's exemption follows a fortiori. For I may argue of a priest upon whom the writ imposes additional precepts. We say the sons of Aaron but not the daughters of Aaron. How much more so of Israelites but for the Gazerish. Why I would think the connection is broken then now to let. I say that the connection is broken and as for the Gazerish that is required for what was taught they shall not make a baldness I might think that even if one makes four or five bald patches he is liable for only one transgression therefore it is stated Karhag baldness intimating liability for each separate act what is taught by upon their head because it is said ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead I might think that one is liable only for between the eyes whence do I know to include the whole head therefore it is stated upon their head to teach liability for the whole head as for between the eyes now I know this only a priest upon whom scripture imposes additional precepts whence do we know it of Israelites Karhag baldness is stated here and Karhag is also stated below just as their one is liable for every act of making baldness and for the whole head as for between the eyes so here too one is liable for every act a baldness and in respect of the whole head as for between the eyes and just as below baldness for the dead is meant so here too it is for the dead if so let scripture write care of baldness why karha that both may be inferred Rabbah said this is his reason this he learns the applicability of between your eyes from phylacteries just as their women are exempt so here two women are exempt now why does Rabbah not say as Abbe the distinction between Kara and karha is not acceptable to him and why does Abbe reject Rabbah's reason he can tell you phylacteries themselves are learned from this just as there between the eyes means the place where a baldness can be made is on the upper part of the head so here too the place for wearing phylacteries is the upper part of the head now according to both Abbe and Rabbah how do they interpret this verse ye are sons etc that is wanted for what was taught ye are sons of the Lord your God when you behave as sons you are Designated sons, if you do not behave as sons, you are not designated sons. This is our Judas view. Our Meir said in both cases you are called sons, for it is said they are sons children, and it is also said they are children in whom is no faith, and it is also said a seed of evil doers, sons that deal corruptly, and it is said, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Why give these additional quotations? For should you reply only when foolish are they designated sons, but not when they lack faith, then come and hear, and it is said they are sons in whom is no faith, and should you say when they have no faith they are called sons, but when they serve idols they are not called sons, then come and hear, and it is said a seed of evil doers, sons that deal corruptly, and should you say they are indeed called sons that act corruptly, but not good sons, then come and hear, and it is said. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Mission of the rites of laying hands, waving, bringing near the meal, offering, taking the handful, burning the fat, ringing the neck of bird sacrifices, receiving and sprinkling the blood are performed by men, but not by women, excepting the meal offering of a soda and an Ezra, where they themselves do perform, waving Gemara the rites of laying hands, because it is written, Speak unto the sons of Israel, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the burnt offering. Thus the sons of Israel lay hands, but not the daughters of Israel, waving, Speak unto the sons of Israel the fat with the breast, it shall he bring that the breast may be waved, etc. Hence the sons of Israel wave, but not the daughters of Israel, bringing near the meal offering, for it is written, and this is the law of the meal offering, the sons of Aaron shall. Offer it the sons of Aaron, but not the daughters of Aaron, taking the handful for it is written, and he shall bring it to Aaron's sons the priests, and he shall take thereof his handful of the fine flour thereof the sons of Aaron, but not the daughters of Aaron, burning the fat because it is written, and Aaron's sons shall burn it the sons of Aaron, but not the daughters of Aaron, ringing the neck of bird sacrifices because it is written, and he shall wring off his head and burn it on the altar. Thus ringing is assimilated to burning, receiving the blood because it is written, and the priests Aaron's sons shall bring the blood, and the master said Talmud, Mosque edition B, and they shall bring refers to the receiving of the blood and sprinkling the sprinkling of what if that of the red cow Eliezer is written in connection therewith if that sprinkled on the inner precincts of the temple is but the anointed priest is stated in connection therewith, but it refers to the Sprinkling of a bird's blood which is inferred a minority from an animal if an animal for the slaughtering of which a priest was not specified yet a priest was specified for its sprinkling then a fowl for the ringing of whose neck a priest was appointed it surely follows that one a priest is specified for its sprinkling accepting the meal offering of
Judah, this is its meaning. Every precept which is a personal obligation is practiced both within and without the land. But what is an obligation of the soil has force only within the land. How do we know these things? For our rabbis taught these are the statutes. This refers to the rabbinic interpretations and the judgments to civil law, which ye shall observe to the study of the mission and to do to actual practice in the land. I might think that all precepts are binding in the land only. Therefore, it is stated all the days that ye live upon the earth. If all the days I might think that all precepts must be practiced both within and without the land. Therefore, it is taught in the land. Now, since the writ extends and limits the duration of the precepts, go forth and learn from what is stated in that passage. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nation served their God, just as the destruction of idolatry is singled out as being a personal duty and is obligatory. Both within and without the land, so everything which is a personal duty is incumbent both within and without the land, excepting Orla and Kili, Yim, etc. The scholars propounded does our Eliezer disagree in the direction of leniency or greater stringency in the direction of stringency? The first tan is stating thus, excepting Orla and Kili, Yim, concerning which there is a traditional law, though one might argue that it is a duty connected with the soil, but Hadish is practiced only in the land, but not without what is the reason dwelling implies after taking possession and settling down. Whereon our Eliezer comes to say that Hadish too applies both within and without the land, what is the reason dwelling implies wherever you may be living, or perhaps he differs in the direction of leniency. The first tan is stating thus, excepting Orla and Kili, Yim, concerning which there is a traditional law, and all the more so Hadish for dwelling implies wherever you are living, whereon our Eliezer comes to say. That Hadish is practiced only in the land for dwelling implies after taking possession and settling down while to what does to refer to the first clause come and here for Abbe said which Tana disagrees with our Eliezer in our mission our Ishmael for it was taught this is to teach you that wherever dwelling is stated it means only after taking possession and settling down this is our Ishmael's opinion said our Akiba to him but the Sabbath in connection with which dwellings is stated is yet binding both within and without the land the Sabbath replied he to him is inferred a minority of like precepts must be practiced both within and without the land surely the Sabbath which is more stringent since Abbe said which Tana disagrees with our Eliezer our Ishmael it follows that our Eliezer differs in the direction of greater stringency this proves it now consider to what does our Ishmael refer to libations but in the case of libations Talmud, Moskid and be both coming and dwelling are Written it means thus this is to teach that wherever coming and dwelling are stated it means only after taking possession and settling down that is our Ishmael's opinion if so when the very the proceeds said our Akiba to him but the Sabbath in connection with which dwellings is stated etc and he answered him the Sabbath is inferred a minority he should have answered him I spoke of coming and dwelling he gives him a twofold answer firstly I refer to coming and dwelling moreover as to what you say behold the Sabbath in connection with which dwellings is stated the Sabbath is inferred a minority wherein do they differ in whether they offered libations in the wilderness our Ishmael maintains that they did not offer libations in the wilderness whereas our Akiba holds that they did offer libations in the wilderness Abbe said this tana of the school of Ishmael contradicts another tana of the school of Ishmael for the school of Ishmael taught since unspecified comings are stated in the Torah whilst the writ explained in the case of one that it means after posse sign and settling down so all mean after possession and settling down and the other because the appointment of a king and the offering of first fruits are two verses with the same teaching and any two verses with the same teaching do not illumine others and the other both are necessary for if the divine law of the case of a king but not first fruits I would argue since there is enjoyment of crops. In the case of first fruits the obligation comes immediately and if the case of first fruits were stated but not that of a king I would reason since it is a king's way to conquer he must be appointed immediately on entering the land and the other let the divine law state the case of a king and then first fruits become unnecessary for I would reason if a king who is for conquest is appointed only after possession and settling down how much more so are first fruits obligatory only then. And the other, if it were thus written, I would say it first fruits is analogous to hell. Hence, we are informed that it is not so now that you say that a personal duty must be practiced both within the land and without the land. What is the purpose of dwelling which the divine law wrote in connection with the Sabbath? It is necessary, I would say, since it is written in the chapter on festivals, it requires sanctification like the festivals. Hence, we are informed that it is not so. What is the purpose of dwelling written by the divine law in connection with forbidden fat and blood? It is necessary, I might say, since it is written in the section on sacrifices, as long as sacrifices are practiced, hell and blood are forbidden, but not when they are no longer practiced. Hence, we are informed otherwise. What is the purpose of dwelling written by the divine law in connection with unleavened bread and bitter herbs? It is necessary, I might have thought, since it is written, they shall eat it. The Paschal lamb with unleavened bread and bitter herbs it holds good only when the Passover sacrifice is offered but not otherwise hence we are informed that it is not so what is the purpose of coming which the divine law wrote in connection with phylacteries and the firstling of an ass that is needed for what the school of Ishmael taught perform this precept for thou shalt enter the land on its account now on the view that dwelling implies wherever you live it is well hence it is written and they did eat of the new produce of the land on the morrow after the Passover they ate on the morrow after the Passover but not before which choose Talmud, Mosque Kiddushin that the Omer was first offered and then they ate but on the view that dwelling implies after possession and settling they could have eaten immediately they did not need to for it is written and the children of Israel did eat the manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited they did eat the manna. Until they came onto the borders of the land of Canaan, now it is impossible to say literally until they came onto the land inhabited, since it is also said until they came onto the borders of the land of Canaan, conversely onto the borders of the land of Canaan cannot be understood literally, since it is also said until they came onto a land inhabited, how then are these to be reconciled? Moses died on the seventh of Adar and the manna ceased to descend, but they used the manna which was in their vessels until the sixteenth of Nisan. Another buried the taught, and the children of Israel did eat the manna forty years, did they then eat it forty years? Surely they ate it, but forty years less thirty days, but it is to teach you that they experienced the taste of manna in the cakes which they brought forth from Egypt. Another buried the taught on the seventh of Adar, Moses died, and on the seventh of Adar he was born. How do we know that he died on the seventh of Adar? For it is written, I so Moses the servant of the Lord died there too and the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days three Moses thy servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan for pass through the midst of the camp and command the people saying prepare you vittles for within three days ye are to pass over this Jordan and be and the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month deduct the preceding thirty three days thus you learn that Moses died on the seventh of Adar and how do we know that he was born on the seventh of Adar for it is said and he Moses said unto them I am an hundred and twenty years old this day I can no more go out and come in now this day need not be stated why then is it stated it teaches that the Holy One blessed be he sits and completes the years of the righteous exactly from day to day and month to month as it is said the number of thy days I will fulfill it was taught our Simeon Bio he said the Israelites were Given three precepts on their entry into the land, yet they are practiced both within and without the land, and it is logical that they shall be thus binding if Hadish, which is not permanently forbidden, nor is all benefit thereof prohibited, and its interdict can be raised, is nevertheless operated both within and without the land, and Kilim, which are permanently forbidden, of which all benefit is prohibited, and the interdict of which cannot be raised, it surely follows that it has force. Both within and without the land, and the same logic applies to Orla on two grounds. Our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, said Talmud, Mosque Kiddush, and be all precepts which the Israelites were commanded to practice before their entry into the land are operated both within and without the land, after their entry into the land are operated only within the land, except release of money debts and liberation of slaves, though they were commanded concerning these after their entry into the land as they are. Practice both within and without the land, but the release of debts is a personal duty. It is necessary to state it only because of what was taught. Rabbi said, and this is a matter of release, release. Thou every creditor, etc. The writ speaks of two releases: the release of soil and the release of debt. At the time when you release soil, you release debts, and at the time when you do not release soil, you do not
from Sinai said Ula to Rab Judah on my view that it is a holocaust of Moses from Sinai it is well therefore we distinguish between doubtful Orla and doubtful Kilayim for we learned doubtful Orla is forbidden in the land permitted in Syria whilst outside the land one may enter a gent's field and make a purchase providing however that he does not see him the Gentile gather Orla whereas in respect to Kilayim we learned if a vineyard is planted with vegetables and vegetables are sold outside it in the land they are forbidden in Syria permitted in the diaspora he the Gentile owner of the vineyard may enter and gather them providing however that he the Jew does not personally gather them but on your view Talmud Moskidish and let it be taught in both cases either that he the Jew may enter and make a purchase or that he the Gentile may enter and gather them Samuel did indeed say to Arain and read in both cases either that he the Jew may enter and make a purchase or that he the Gentile may enter and gather the Marson of Rabbin recited it in the direction of leniency in both cases he the Gentile may enter and gather them provided that he the Jew does not personally gather Levi said to Samuel Ariak supply me with doubtful Orla and I will eat thereof Arwe and Rabbi son of Arhan and supply each other with doubtful Orla the king scholars of Pumadai the said there is no Orla in the diaspora when Rab Judah sent this ruling to Aryohanan. He sent back and sealed the law of doubtful Orla destroy certain Orla and proclaim that these fruits must be hidden and whoever maintains that there is no Orla in the diaspora he will have no offspring nor posterity that shall cast the line by lot in the congregation of the Lord but with whom do they the king scholars hold with what was taught our Eliezer son of Arhose said on the authority of Arhose B. Dermaska who stated it on the authority of Arhose the Galilean who said it on the Authority of Aryohanan Binuri who said it on the authority of Aryohanan the Great there is no Orla in the diaspora is there not but we learned Aryohanan said Hadesh to read Hadesh Arsi said in Aryohanan's name the prohibition of Orla in the diaspora is a holocaust of Moses from Sinai said Arzera to Arsi but we learned doubtful Orla is forbidden in the land but permitted in Syria he was momentarily nonplussed and he answered him perhaps if the Mosaic holocaust was thus given. Doubtful Orla is permitted in the diaspora certain Orla is forbidden Arsi said in Aryohanan's name one is flagellated for violating the prohibition of Kilayim in the diaspora by biblical law but we learned Kilayim is forbidden by the words of the Sofram there is no difficulty the one refers to Kilayim of the vineyard and the other to the grafting of heterogeneous trees that agrees with Samuel for Samuel said my statutes ye shall keep that implies the statutes which I Decreed for you in former times thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind thou shalt not sow thy field with two kinds of seeds just as the prohibition of thy cattle means by copulation so is that of thy field by grafting and just as the law in regard to thy cattle is enforced both within and without the land so is that concerning thy field enforced alike within and without the land but still thy field is written that is to exclude diverse seeds in the diaspora are. Hanan and Arainan were walking along a path when they saw a man sowing diverse seeds together said one to the other come master let us ban him you are not clear on this law you replied again they saw another man sowing wheat and barley among vines said one to the other come master let us ban him you are not thoroughly versed in this law you rejoined do we not fully accept our Josiah's dictum that he is not guilty unless he sows wheat barley and grapestone in the same hand throw our Joseph. Mixed seeds and sowed them thereupon, and they protested. But we learned Kilaim is forbidden in the diaspora by the words of the scribes. There is no difficulty answered. He that the Mishnah quoted refers to Kilaim of the vineyard. This my action is with Kilaim of seeds. Kilaim of the vineyard, of which in the land all benefit is forbidden, are also rabbinically prohibited outside the land. Kilaim of seeds, however, of which even in Palestine benefit is not forbidden, are not prohibited. By the rabbis in the diaspora, subsequently, our Joseph said, My former statement was incorrect, for Rab sowed the scholars' garden in separate beds. What is the reason? Surely, in order to avoid the mixture of Kilaim, said Abbe to him, Now that were indeed well, if we were informed Talmud, Moskidish, and be that he sowed four species on the four sides of the bed and one species in the middle here, however, he did so on account of beauty or to save the attendant trouble. Mishnah, he who performs one. Precept is well rewarded, his days are prolonged, and he inherits the land, but he who does not perform one precept good is not done to him, his days are not prolonged, and he does not inherit the land tomorrow. But a contradiction is shown, these are the things the fruit of which man eats in this world, while the principle remains for him for the future world, is honoring one's parents, the practice of loving deeds, hospitality to wayfarers, and making peace between man and his neighbor, and the study of the Torah surpasses them all, said Rab Judah. This is its meaning, he who performs one precept in addition to his equally balanced merits, I as well rewarded, and he is as though he had fulfilled the whole Torah, hence it follows that for these others one is rewarded even for a single one, said Arshimeh, that teaches that if there is an equal balance, it tips the scale, yet is it a fact that he who performs one precept in addition to his equally balanced merits is rewarded, but the following. Contradicts that he whose good deeds outnumber his iniquities is punished and is as though he had burnt the whole Torah not leaving even a single letter while he whose iniquities outnumber his good deeds is rewarded and is as though he had fulfilled the whole Torah not omitting even a single letter said Abay our Mishnah means that a festive day and an evil day are prepared for him Rabbah said this latter agrees with our Jacob who said there is no reward for precepts in this world for it was taught. Our Jacob said there is not a single precept in the Torah whose reward is stated at its side which is not dependent on the resurrection of the dead thus in connection with honoring parents it is written that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in reference to the dismissal of the nest it is written that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest prolong thy days now if one's father said to him ascend to the loft and bring the young birds and he ascends to the loft. Dismisses the dam and takes the young and on his return falls and is killed. Where is this man's happiness and where is this man's prolonging of days? But in order that it may be well with thee means on the day that is holy good and in order that thy days may be long on the day that is holy long. Yet perhaps there was no such happening. Our Jacob saw an actual occurrence. Then perhaps he was meditating upon the transgression. The holy one blessed be he does not combine an evil thought with an evil act. Yet perhaps he was meditating idolatry. And it is written that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. That too was precisely his point. Should you think that precepts are rewarded in this world? Why did the fulfillment of these precepts not shield him from being led to such meditation? Yet our Eliezer said those who are engaged on a precept are never harmed. There when they are going to fulfill the precept, it is different. But our Eliezer said those who are engaged on a precept. Are never harmed either when going or returning. It was a rickety ladder, so that injury was likely, and where injury is likely, one must not rely on a miracle. For it is written, and Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hear it? He will kill me. Or Joseph said, Had I interpreted this verse as our Jacob, his daughter's son, he would not have sinned. Now, what happened with Ahir? Some say he saw something of this nature, others say he saw the tongue of Husband, the interpreter dragged along by a swine the mouth. That uttered pearls licks the dust, he exclaimed thereupon, He went forth and sent our Toby son of Arkis, and pointed out a contradiction to Rabba. We learned he who performs one precept is well rewarded, hence only if he actively performs it, but not otherwise. But the following contradicts this if he sits and commits no transgression, he is rewarded as though he has fulfilled the precept, said he to him, There it means, e.g., that he was tempted and successfully resisted, as in the case of our Hannah Bepapi. Whom a certain matron urged to immorality, he pronounced a certain magical formula whereupon his body was covered with boils and scabs, but she did something and he was healed, so he fled and hid himself in a bathhouse in which when even two entered, even in daytime, they would suffer harm. The next morning the rabbis asked him who guarded you, said he to them, Two Talmud, Moskidish, and Imperial armor bearers guarded me all night, said they to him, Perhaps you were tempted with immorality. And successfully resisted, for it was taught he who was tempted with immorality and successfully resists a miracle is performed for him. Bless ye the Lord, ye messengers of his Yamighty in strength that fulfill his word, here canning unto the voice of his word, e.g. Arzadik and his companions. Arzadik was summoned by a certain matron to immorality, said he to her, My heart is faint and I am unable, is there ought to eat? She answered him, There is unclean food, what am I
Pursue it and elsewhere it is written he that pursueth after righteousness and loving kindness of the study of the law it is written for that is thy life and the length of thy days but with respect to the dismissal of the nest it is also written that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest prolong thy days then let this too be taught he teaches some and omits others what the tana states these are the things yet you say that he teaches some and omits others said Rabbah are eating. Explained it to me say of the righteous when he is good that they shall eat the fruit of their doings is there then a righteous man who is good and a righteous man who is not good but he who is good to heaven and good to man he is a righteous man who is good good to heaven but not good to man that is a righteous man who is not good similarly you read woe unto the wicked man that is evil for the reward of his hands shall be given unto him is there then a wicked man that is evil and one. That is not evil, but he that is evil to heaven and evil to man. He is a wicked man that is evil. He who is evil to heaven, but not evil to man. He is a wicked man that is not evil. Merit has both stock and fruit. For it is said, say of the righteous when he is good, etc. Transgression has stock, but not fruit. For it is said, woe unto the wicked when he is evil, etc. Then how do I interpret? Therefore shall the see the wicked eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Transgression which bears fruit has fruit that which does not bear fruit has no fruit. Good intention is combined with deed. For it is said, and they that feared the Lord spoke one with another, and the Lord here can enter. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Now what is the meaning of that thought upon his name? Said R.C. Even if one merely thinks of performing a precept, but is forcibly prevented, the writ ascribes. It to him as though he has performed it evil intention is not combined with deed for it is said if I regarded iniquity in my heart the Lord would not hear then how do I interpret behold I will bring evil upon this people even the fruit of their thoughts intention which bears fruit the holy one blessed be he combines with deed intention which does not bear fruit the holy one blessed be he does not combine with deed then what of the verse that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. Said Arahabi Jacob that refers to idolatry for a master said idolatry is so heinous that he rejects it is as though he admits the truth of the whole Torah Allah said this is to be explained as Arhuna for Arhuna said once a man does wrong and repeats it it is permitted him it is permitted him can you really think so but it becomes to him as something permitted Arabab said on Arhana's authority better had a man secretly transgress than publicly profane God's name for it is said as for. You, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go, yes, sir, everyone is idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but my holy name shall ye not profane. R I L A I the elder said, if a man sees that his evil desire is conquering him, let him go to a place where he is unknown, don black, and cover himself with black, and do as his heart desires, but let him not publicly profane God's name, but that is not so, for we learned he who is careless of his master's honor, it were well for him that. He had not come into the world now to what does this refer? Rabbi said to one who gazes at the rainbow, or Joseph said to one who secretly transgresses, there is no difficulty, the one means where he can subdue his evil desires, the other where he cannot, we learned elsewhere, credit is not allowed for the profanation of the divine name, whether it is unwitting or intentional, what is meant by credit is not allowed, said Marza, for the SC heaven, do not act like a shopkeeper, Mar, the son of Rabbana. Said this is to teach that if it sc one's account of sin and merit is equally balanced, the profanation of God's name tips the scale. Our rabbis taught a man should always Talmud, Moskhitish, and be regard himself as though he were half guilty and half meritorious. If he performs one precept, happy is he for weighting himself down in the scale of merit. If he commits one transgression, woe to him for weighting himself down in the scale of guilt. For it is said, but one sinner destroyeth much good. I.e., on account of a single sin which he commits, much good is lost to him. Our Eliezer, son of Arsimian, said, because the world is judged by its majority, and an individual too is judged by his majority of deeds, good or bad. If he performs one good deed, happy is he for turning the scale both for himself and for the whole world on the side of merit. If he commits one transgression, woe to him for weighting himself and the whole world in the scale of guilt. For it is said, but one sinner, etc. On account of the single sin which this man commits he and the whole world lose much good are Simeon Bio he said even if he is perfectly righteous all his life but rebels at the end he destroys his former good deeds for it is said the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression and even if one is completely wicked all his life but repents at the end he is not reproached with his wickedness for it is said and as for the wickedness of the wicked he shall not fall. Thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness yet let it be regarded as half transgressions and half meritorious deeds said Rushlakish it means that he regretted his former deeds mission he who is versed in Bible mission and secular pursuits will not easily sin for it is said and the threefold cord is not quickly broken but he who lacks Bible mission and secular pursuits does not belong to civilization Gamar our Eliezer son of Arzadik said to what are the righteous compared in this? World to a tree standing holy in a place of cleanness, but its bow overhangs to a place of uncleanness. When the bow is lopped off, it stands entirely in a place of cleanness. Thus the Holy One, blessed be He, brings suffering upon the righteous in this world in order that they may inherit the future world, as it is said. And though thy beginning is small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. And to what are the wicked compared in this world to a tree standing holy in a place of uncleanness? But a branch thereof overhangs a place of cleanness. When the bow is lopped off, it stands entirely in a place of uncleanness. Thus the Holy One, blessed be He, makes them prosper in this world in order to destroy and consign them to the nethermost rung. For it is said, there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but at the end thereof are the ways of death. Are Tarfon and the elders were once reclining in the upper story of Nith's house in Little when this question was raised before them is study. Greater or practice are Tarfan answered saying practice is greater our Akiva answered saying study is greater for it leads to practice then they all answered and said study is greater for it leads to action it was taught our Jose said great is learning since it preceded Halab by 40 years through and tithes by 54 years Shemitten by 61 and Jubilees by 103 103 but it was 104 he maintains that Jubilee affects a release at the beginning. Thereof and just as learning preceded practice so does the judgment thereof in the next world take precedence over that of practice in accordance with our Hamunna for our Hamunna said the beginning of man's judgment is in respect of study alone for it is said the rejection of water is the beginning of judgment and just as the judgment thereof takes precedence over that of practice so does the reward thereof for it is said and he gave them the lands and nations and they took the labor of it. People in possession that they might keep Ishmael with his statutes and observe his laws, but he who lacks Bible mission, etc. Are Yohan and said, and he is unfit to testify. Our rabbis taught he who eats in the marketplaces like a dog, and some say that he is unfit to testify. Our E D B Avin said the Halacha agrees with the latter. Barka for a lecture to bad-tempered man Talmud. Moskhitish it gains nothing but the ill effect of his temper, but a good man is fed with the fruit of his deeds. And he who lacks Bible mission and worldly pursuits vows not to benefit from him, as it is said. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scoffers. His seat is the seat of scoffers. C H A P T E R I I mission. A man can betroth a woman through himself or through his agent. A woman may be betrothed through herself or through her agent. A man may give his daughter in betrothal when A N A R either himself or through his agent. Gemara if he can betroth through his agent, is it necessary to stay through himself? Said R. Joseph, this inclusion intimates that it is more meritorious through himself than through his agent, even as our Safra himself cinched an animal's head. Rabbi Salt, it should be to some say that in this matter there is even a prohibition in accordance with Rab Judah's dictum in Rab's name. For Rab Judah said in the name of Rab, a man may not betroth a woman before he sees her, lest he subsequently see something repulsive in her and she become loathsome to him, whereas the All Merciful said, But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And as to our Joseph's statement, it relates to the second clause, a woman may be betrothed through herself or through her agent. Now, if she can be betrothed through her agent, is it necessary to stay through herself? Said our Joseph, this inclusion intimates that it is more meritorious through herself than through her agent, even as our Safra himself cinched an animal's head. Rabbi Salt, it should be to, but there is no prohibition in this case in accordance with Resh. Lakish who said it is better to dwell with a load of grief
Talmud, Moss condition B. If he decreases by 10 or increases it by 10, his separation is valid. How do we know this? And should you answer that it is derived from divorce? I would rejoin as for divorce that may be because it is a secular matter. Scripture said, Thus he also shall offer an he offering where he alone would have sufficed to include an agent, but let scripture write it in respect to Terima and these marriage and divorce would come and be derived from it because one can refute the analogy since it is possible by mere intention again as to what we learned if a company lose their paschal sacrifice and instruct one of their number go out seek it and slaughter it on our behalf and he goes finds and slaughters it while they also take an animal and slaughter it if it is slaughtered first he eats of his and they eat with him how do we know it and should you answer that it is derived from these I would rejoin as for these that may be because they rank as secular in relation to sacred animals it is learned from our Joshua Bikarha estictum for our Joshua Bikarha said how do we know that a man's agent is as himself because it is said and the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it the Passover sacrifice and even does then the whole assembly really slaughter surely only one person slaughters an animal hence it follows that a man's agent is as himself now let the divine law write the principle of agency in respect to sacrifices and these others can come and be derived from them because it may be refuted as for sacrifice that is because most of their operations are through an agent one cannot be derived from another but let one be derived from two others which can be thus derived should the divine law not stated of sacrifices that it may be derived from these others as for these it might be argued that SC agency is because they rank as secular in comparison with sacrifices should the divine law omit it in the case of divorce that it may be derived from the others as for these that is because intention has force in their case but let the divine law not write it of terima and it could be derived from the others that indeed is so then what is the purpose of yea also it is needed for our janes dictum is ye also just as ye are members of the covenant so must your agents be members of the covenant for this what need have I of verse it may be derived from our high b in our hands. Name for our high be in our Yohanan's name a heathen slave cannot become an agent to receive a divorce from a woman's husband because he himself is not subject to the law of marriage and divorce it is necessary I might think that a slave is ineligible since he is not empowered to free a married woman at all but a heathen since he is qualified to separate terima of his own crops as we learned if a heathen or kutian separates terima it is valid I might think that he can also be appointed an agent for a Jew hence we are informed otherwise now according to our Simeon who exempts them for we learned a heathen's terima creates a forbidden mixture and one is liable to an additional fifth on its account but our Simeon exempts it what is the need of yea also it is necessary I might reason since a master said yea but not tenant farmers yea but not partners yea but not guardians yea but not one who separates terima upon what is not his then I might also say yea but not your agents, hence we are informed that it is not so now that is well according to our Joshua Bikarha, but according to our Nathan who utilizes this verse for a different exegesis, what can be said for it was taught our Nathan said, How do we know that all Israel may fulfill their obligations? Talmud, Moskidish and Talmud, Moskidish and by a single paschal sacrifice because it is said, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at even does then the whole assembly. Slaughter surely only one slaughters, but from this it follows that all Israel may fulfill their obligations by a single paschal sacrifice, then how does he know that an agent may be appointed for sacrifices from that itself? Yet perhaps it is different there because he the slaughterer is a partner therein, but it is derived from this they shall take to them every man a lamb according to their father's house is a lamb for an household, but perhaps there too the reason is that he has a Share therein if so what is the need of two verses hence if it has no purpose where it is relevant apply the matter to where it does not belong but this the latter verse quoted is needed for our Isaac's dictum for our Isaac said a man sc and adult can acquire on behalf of others but a minor cannot acquire that is deduced from according to every man's eating ye shall make your count for the lamb but that is still required for intimating that a paschal sacrifice may be slaughtered even for a single person he agrees with the view that the Passover lamb may not be slaughtered for an individual then when Arkidal said in Rab's name how do we know that a man's agent is as himself because it is written and ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land for inheritance let him derive agency from this former verse now is it reasonable that this division of the land was on the principle of agency surely minors are not subject thereto but it must be interpreted in accordance with Rabbah son of Arhuna, for Rabbah son of Arhuna said in the name of Argidal in Rab's name, how do we know that a right can be conferred upon a man in his absence because it is written and one prince of every tribe, etc. Now is that logical? Was it the division altogether advantageous to each? Surely it also involved disadvantages for some like mountain land, but not the plain, and others prefer the plain, but not the mountain land. But it is in accordance with Rabbah son of Arhuna who said in the name of Argidal in Rab's name, how do we know that when orphans, i.e., minors, come to divide their father's estate, Beth Din appoints a guardian on their behalf, whether to their advantage or disadvantage, you say to their disadvantage, why, but say thus to their subsequent disadvantage, but with the original intention that it shall be to their advantage from the verse, and ye shall take one prince of every tribe, Arnaman said in Samuel's name, when orphans come to divide their Father's estate Beth Din appoints a guardian for them and they select a fair portion for each orphan yet when they grow up they can protest against the division of the guardian Arnaman stating his own opinions ruled when they grow up they cannot protest for if so wherein lies the strength of Beth Din's authority now does then Arnaman accept this reasoning if so wherein lies the strength of Beth Din's authority but we learned if the judge's valuation was at one sixth too little or at one sixth too much their sale is null our Simeon B. Gamaliel said their sale is valid for otherwise wherein lies the strength of Beth Din's authority whereon Arhuna behind and is said in Arnaman's name the Halajah agrees with the sages there is no difficulty Talmud, Mosque and B in the one case that the judges erred in the other they did not err if they did not err against what can they the orphans protest they can protest against the sites Arnaman said when brothers divide the rank as Purchasers from each other for an error of less than a sixth the transaction is valid exceeding a sixth that is null exactly one sixth that is valid but the amount of error is returnable said Rabba when you say that for an error of less than a sixth the transaction is valid that is only if one did not appoint an agent but if he appointed an agent he can plead I sent you to benefit not to injure me and when you say exceeding a sixth the transaction is null that is only if one did not say we will divide according to Beth Din's valuation but if this was stipulated the transaction is valid for we learned if the judge's valuation was at one sixth too little or at one sixth too much their sale is null our Simeon B. Gamaliel said their sale is valid and when you say one sixth that is valid but the amount of error is returnable that holds good only of movables but as for real estate the law of overreaching does not apply to land again this was said of real estate only if the division was by Valuation, but not if the division was made by court that is in accordance with Rabbah who said everything which choose an error in measure weight or number even if less than the standard of overreaching is returnable now when we learned he who sends forth a conflagration by a deaf mute idiot or minor is not liable for the damage caused by law of man yet liable by the law of heaven but if he sends it by a normal person the latter is legally liable yet why so let us say that a man's agent is as himself there it is different for there is no agent for wrongdoing for we reason when the words of the master and the words of the people are in conflict whose are obeyed then when we learned if the agent does not carry out his instructions the agent is liable for trespass if he carries out his instructions the sender is liable for trespass thus at least if he carries out the sender's instructions the latter is liable for trespass yet why let us say there is no agent for wrongdoing a Trespass offering is different because the meaning of sin is derived from terima. Just as an agent can be appointed for separating terima, so can one be appointed in respect of trespass. Then let us learn a general law from it. We cannot because trespass and misappropriation are two verses with the same teaching, and such cannot eliminate other cases. Trespass as stated, what is the reference to misappropriation? For it was taught for every word of trespass. Beth Sham, I maintain this is to intimate liability for expressed intention as for actual deed. But Beth Hillel rule he is not responsible unless he actually misappropriates it. For it is said to see whether he have not put his hand, etc. Said Beth Sham, I to Beth Hillel, but it is said for every word of trespass. Beth Hillel retorted to Beth Sham, I, but is it not said to see whether he
Without the tabernacle blood shall be imputed unto that man he had shed blood that man who slaughtered without but not his agent now we have found this of sacrifices slaughtered without how do we know it of the whole Torah it is derived from sacrifices slaughtered without instead of learning from sacrifices slaughtered without let us learn from these others the divine law reiterated and that man shall be cut off since it is irrelevant for its own subject apply its teaching to the rest of the Torah but he who maintains the two verses with the same purpose do not teach how does he interpret the limiting demonstrative that written twice one is to exclude the case of two men who hold the knife and slaughter the sacrifice without the other that man but not one who is compelled that man but not one in ignorance that man but not one let into error and the other that follows from ha where who would suffice and the other he does not admit the exegesis of ha as opposed to who now when it was taught if he says to his agent go forth and slay his soul the latter is liable and his sender is exempt Shammai the elder said on the authority of Haggai the prophet his sender is liable for it is said thou hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon what is Shammai the elder's reason he holds that two verses with the same purpose throw light on others and he rejects the exegesis of Hahu as opposed to who alternatively he accepts that exegesis and what is meant by liable he is liable by the laws of heaven hence it follows that the first Tana holds him exempt even by the law of heaven but they differ in respect to a greater or lesser penalty another alternative there it is different because the divine law revealed it thus and thou hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon and the other it counts to you as the sword of the children of Ammon you cannot be punished for the sword of the children of Ammon so will you not be Punished for the death of Uriah the Hittite, what is the reason he was a rebel against sovereignty? For he said to him, David and my lord Job and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? Rabbi said, Should you say that Shammai holds that two verses with the same purpose illumine others and that he does not admit the exegesis of Uhahu? Yet he agrees that if one says to his agent, Go forth and have incestuous intercourse or eat hell of the latter is liable and his sender exempt because we never find in the whole Torah that while one derives pleasure from wrongdoing another is liable. It has been stated, Rab said, An agent can be a witness. The school of Arshila maintained an agent cannot become a witness. What is the reason of the school of Arshila? Shall we say because he does not explicitly instruct him, be a witness for me? If so, if he betrothes a woman in the presence of two and does not. Instruct them you are my witnesses is the betrothal really invalid but the reasons are these rap said an agent can be a witness for he the principal thereby strengthens the matter whereas the school of Arshila maintained an agent cannot become a witness since a master said a man's agent is as himself he ranks as his own person an objection is raised if one says to three go forth and betroth the woman on my behalf one is an agent and the other two are witnesses that is the view of Beth. Shammai but Beth Hillel rule there all his agents and an agent cannot be a witness thus their disagreement is only in respect of three but as for two all agree that they cannot be witnesses he rab holds with the following tenet for it was taught our Nathan said Beth Shammai maintains an agent and one witness can attest an action but Beth Hillel rule an agent and two witnesses are required does then rab rule according to Beth Shammai reverse it or Aha son of Rabbi taught it reverse rab. Said an agent cannot be a witness. The school of Arshila ruled an agent can be a witness, and the law is that an agent can be a witness. Rabbi said in Arnaman's name, if one says to two, go forth and betroth a woman for me, they are both his agents and his witnesses. It is likewise so in respect to divorce Talmud, Mos Kiddush, and B, and also in monetary cases. Now these are all necessary, for if we were informed thus of Kiddush, I would say that is because they come to render her forbidden. But as for divorce, we might fear that he one of these desired her for himself again. If we were informed thus of divorce, that may be because a woman is not eligible to two men. But as for a monetary matter, I might argue that these witnesses are sharing therein, thus they are all necessary. What is his opinion? If he holds that he who lends money to his neighbor in the presence of witnesses must repay him likewise before witnesses, and these are interested witnesses, for should they say we did not. Repay him he the debtor can say to them and pay me but after all he holds that he who lends money to his neighbor before witnesses need not repay him before witnesses and since they can plead we returned it to the debtor they can also testify we repaid the creditor now however that the rabbis have instituted an oath of equity these witnesses see the agents must swear that they repaid him the creditor the creditor swears that he did not receive it the repayment and the debtor must repay the creditor a man may give his daughter etc we learned elsewhere a nara who is betrothed she or her father can accept her divorce said our judah two hands cannot have a privilege simultaneously but only her father can accept her divorce and she who cannot take care of her get cannot be divorced reshlegish said just as they differ in respect to divorce so they differ in respect to kiddushin are and maintain they differ in respect to divorce only but as for kiddushin all agree that her father alone can accept kiddushin on her behalf, but not she herself. Our Jose, son of our said, What is our Yohanan's reason according to the rabbis as for divorce? Since she reverts thereby to parental control, both she herself and her father can accept it. But kiddushin, which frees her from paternal authority, only her father can accept it, but not she herself. But what of a declaration whereby she is freed from paternal control? Yet we learn Talmud, Mos Kiddushin, and no declaration may be made to a minor widow from Arison except with her father's consent. Whereas in the case of Nara, either her own or her father's consent is required. But if stated, it was thus stated. Our Jose, son of our said, What is our Yohanan's reason according to the rabbis? Kiddushin, which requires her consent, only her father can accept it, but not she divorce, which is even against her will. Either she or her father can accept it, but a declaration to requires her consent. Yet it is taught. Either she or her father can accept it. There, the reference is to a declaration which is made against her will, and it is in agreement with Rabbi. For it was taught, if one makes a declaration to his Yebamah without her consent, Rabbi ruled he acquires her. But the sages say he does not. What is Rabbi's reason? He deduces it from intercourse with the Yebamah, just as intercourse with the Yebamah acquires her even against her will. So here too, as see declaration, it is valid even against her will. But the Rabbis hold we learn from ordinary kiddushin, just as kiddushin must be with her consent. So here too, her consent is required. Wherein do they differ? Rabbi maintains the provisions of the Yebamah are to be learned from the Yebamah, but the Rabbis hold kiddushin should be learned from kiddushin. Reason two supports our Yohanan's answer, since the second clause states which is not so in the case of kiddushin. Shall we then say that this refutes Resh Lakish? Resh Lakish can answer you that agrees with our. Judah who ruled two hands cannot have a privilege simultaneously if our Judah wise state which is not so in the case of Kiddushin let him teach which is not so in the case of divorce that indeed is so but as he teaches the law of declaration which is similar to Kiddushin he also states which is not so in the case of Kiddushin now on our Judah's view why does declaration differ because she already stands tied to the Yabam now that you have arrived at this distinction our Yohanan's view also need not cause you any difficulty at the very outset a declaration is different because she already stands tied we learned a man may give his daughter in betrothal when a n a r himself or through his agent only himself or through his agent but not through herself or her agent this refutes Resh Lakish Resh Lakish can answer you this too is in accordance with our Judah can you then interpret this as our Judah's ruling but the second clause teaches if one says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me with the state be thou betrothed unto me with this one etc now we said thereon which tanner rules thus concerning be thou betrothed be thou betrothed and rabbi replied it is our Simeon who maintained unless he declare to each separately i take an oath and should you answer it is all the opinion of our judah who however agrees with our Simeon in the matter of detailed enumeration yet does he hold thus surely it was taught this is a rule for a comprehensive statement only one sacrifices incurred for a detailed enumeration each one separately involves liability this is our mayor's opinion our judah said if he declares i take an oath that i am not indebted to you not to you not to you he is liable in respect of each separately our Eliezer said if he declares i am not indebted to you not to you not to you and not to you for this i take an oath he is liable in respect of each our Simeon said he is never liable for each separately unless he declares i take an oath to each Separately, but the whole is in accordance with our Simeon, who in the matter of agency agrees with our Judah. RC did not go to the Beth Ham
Father's courtyard then she should not be divorced even when the gate reaches her hand since she is as her father's courtyard that is guarded without his instructions hence it must be obvious to him rather that here she is as her father's hand but this is his problem is she as strong as her father's hand so that she can appoint an agent or not she cannot appoint an agent he answered him he raised an objection if a minor Ketna says accept my divorce on my behalf it is not a valid divorce. Until it reaches her hand hence in the case of NAR it is a valid divorce the reference here is to one who has no father but since the second clause teaches if her father says to him the agent go and accept the gift from my daughter should her husband wish to retract he cannot this proves that the first clause refers to one who has a father the text is defective and should read thus if a minor says accept my gift from me it is not a valid divorce until it reaches her hand but in the case of NAR it is a valid divorce when is that said if she has no father but if she has a father and he says go and accept the gift from my daughter and then the husband wishes to retract he cannot it has been stated if a minor Ketna is betrothed without her father's knowledge Samuel said she requires both get and Mion said Karna this is inherently open to objection if get why Mion and if Mion why get said they the scholars to him but there is Marakpa and his Beth Dinat. Kafri then they reversed it and sent it to Rab said he to them by God she requires both get and me on yet heaven forfend that the seed of Abba B Abba should say thus and what is the reason said our Abba son of R I K she needs a divorce in case her father consented to the kiddushin while she needs me on in case her father did not consent to the kiddushin and it is said that the kiddushin with her sister by the same man is invalid Arnam and said providing that they negotiated with the father. Ola said she does not even require me on what even though there were negotiations he who learned this did not learn the other other say Ola said if a minor Ketna is betrothed without her father's knowledge she does not even require me on Arkahana objected and if any among all these died protested were divorced or found to be constitutionally barren their fellow wives are permitted to the Yabam now who betrothed her shall we say her father betrothed her is then me on sufficient she. Requires a proper get hence it must surely mean that she betrothed herself yet it is taught that she requires me on he raised the objection and he himself answered it we suppose she had been treated as an orphan during her father's lifetime our Hamnon objected he her father may not sell her to relations on the authority of our Eliezer it was said he may sell her to relations Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and A and both agree that he may sell her as a widow to a high priest and as divorced or a Haliza. To an ordinary priest now this widow what are the circumstances shall we say that her father betrothed her can he subsequently sell her but a man cannot sell his daughter to servitude after marriage hence it must surely mean that she betrothed herself and yet he calls her a widow Aram Rome replied in our Isaac's name the reference here is to Kiddush of designation and it is in accordance with our Jose son of Arjuda who maintained the original money was not given for the purpose of Kiddush it. Was stated if he who betrothed her without her father's knowledge dies and she falls before his brother for you Bamar who not said in Rab's name she must perform me on account of his declaration but requires no me on account of his Levi Ritaiha so if he the Yabam makes her a declaration she requires get Eliza and me on she needs to get lest her father consented to the condition of the second the Yabam she needs Eliza in case her father consented to the first brother's condition. She needs me unless her father did not consent to the condition of either the first or the second and so it be said condition with her sister has no validity but if he does not make a declaration to her she merely requires Eliza for what will you say let her also require me unless it be said that condition with her sister is not valid but all know that marriage with the sister of Ahaliza is forbidden by rabbinical law only for Reshalakish said your rabbi taught the sister of A. Divorce woman is forbidden by biblical law whereas the sister of Ahaliza by rabbinical law two men were drinking wine under willows in Babylonia when one of them took a goblet of wine gave it to his fellow and said let thy daughter be betrothed to my son said Rabbana even on the view that we fear that the father may subsequently have consented Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and B we certainly do not say perhaps the son consented but perhaps urged the rabbis to Rabbana he the son had appointed him the father his agent a man is not so insolent as to appoint his father an agent but perhaps he the son had shown a desire for her in his presence said Rabbi to them the master Rabbana has once distinctly stated that he does not accept this view of Rab and Samuel a certain man betrothed the minor with a bunch of vegetables in a marketplace said Rabbana even on the view that we fear lest her father consented that is only when it is done in an honorable manner but not. Contemptuously our Abba of Dipti asked Rabbanah what displayed contempt of vegetables or the fact that it was done in the marketplace the practical difference arises if he betrothed her with money in the marketplace or with a bunch of vegetables at home what then both he replied our contemptuous a certain man insisted our daughter must be married to my relation whereas she his wife maintained to my relation she nagged him until he told her that she could be married to her relation whilst they were eating and drinking his relation went up to a loft and betrothed her said Abba it is written the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies Rabbah said it is a presumption that one does not trouble to prepare a banquet and then destroy it wherein do they differ they differ in the case where he did not trouble if she a minor became betrothed with her father's consent and her father departed overseas and she arose and married Rabbah said she may eat terima until her father Comes and protests against the Nisu and R.C. said she may not eat lest her father return and protest and so Azara will retrospectively be found to have eaten Terima such a case occurred and Rab paid regard to R.C.'s opinion R. Samuel B. Isaac said yet Rab admits that if she dies he her husband is her heir because the ownership of money is vested in its possessor if she became betrothed with her father's knowledge and married without his knowledge and her father is present Arhuna said she may not eat Terima R. Jeremiah B. Abba said she may eat Arhuna said she may not eat even on Rab's view that she may eat in the first case that is only there since the father is absent but here that the father is present the reason he is silent is that he is angry R. Jeremiah B. Abba said she may eat even according to R.C. who ruled that she may not eat it is only there for her father might return and protest but here since he is silent it shows that he does consent if she became Betrothed and married without her father's knowledge and her father is present Arhuna said she may eat Terima or Jeremiah B. Abba said she may not eat said Ula this ruling of Arhuna is as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes if there that her kiddushin was biblically valid you say that she may not eat how much more so your Talmud, Mos Kiddushin Talmud, Mos Kiddushin A hence the disciples view is preferable Rabbah said what is Arhuna's reason because she was treated as an orphan during her father's lifetime it was stated if a minor became betrothed without her father's knowledge Rab said both she and her father can repudiate it R.C. said her father but not she herself Arhuna other state I.B. Rab raised an objection to R.C. if a man entice a virgin she shall surely be his wife if her father utterly refused to give her unto him I only know that her father can refuse how do I know it of herself because it is stated if he utterly refuse. Implying in all cases said Rab to them the scholars before whom the objection was raised be not misguided he can answer you that we suppose he did not entice her for the purpose of marriage if he did not entice her with marital intent is then a verse necessary said Arnam and B. Isaac it is to teach that he her seducer must pay the fine as for an enticed maiden our Joseph said to him that being so it was consequently taught he shall surely pay a dowry for her to be his wife this means that she needs kiddushin from him but had he seduced her with marital intent why is kiddushin required said Abbe this does not follow she may need kiddushin with her father's knowledge Mishnah he who says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me with the state be thou betrothed unto me with this one if any one of them is worth a paratashi is betrothed if not she is not betrothed if he says with this and with this and with this one and they are all together worth a paratashi is betrothed if not she is not betrothed if she eats them one by one she is not betrothed unless one of them is worth a parata tomorrow which tanna taught be thou betrothed be thou betrothed said Rabbi Arsimian who maintained unless he declares I take an oath to each one separately with this and with this and with this one and they are all together worth a parata she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed if she eats them one by one she is not betrothed unless one of them is worth a parata What does this refer shall we say to the first clause why particularly if she eats them even if she lays them down it is also thus since he says be thou betrothed unto me with this
that she would not accept it but Samuel holds the money as a gift one knows that Kiddushin with a sister is invalid and therefore he resolved and gave it as a gift and let him tell her that it is a gift he thought that she would feel humiliated Rubin erased an objection if one separates his halal from the flower it is not halal and is robbery in the priest's hand now why is it robbery in the priest's hand let us say that a man knows that halal is not separated from flower and therefore he Resolved and gave it as a gift there it is different as it may result in wrong for the priest may happen to possess less than five quarters of flour and this besides he will then need them together and think that his dough is fit to be eaten and thus come to eat it in the state of people but you say that a man knows that hell is not separated from flour he knows yet not fully he knows that hell is not separated from flour yet not fully for he thinks what is the reason because of it. Priest's trouble while the priest has forgiven his trouble yet let it be teramah i.e. halibut that it shall not be eaten until hell has been separated for it from elsewhere did we not learn if one separates teramah from a perforated pot for the produce grown in an unperforated pot it is teramah but it may not be eaten until teramah and tithes are separated for it from elsewhere in respect of two utensils he will obey but not in respect of one alternatively the priest will indeed obey. But the owner will think that his dough has been made fit and so come to eat it in a state of people. But you have said that a man knows that hell is not separated from flour. He knows, but not fully. He knows that hell is not separated from flour. Yet he does not know, for he thinks what is the reason on account of the priest's trouble. But he, the priest, has undertaken that trouble. Yet let it be teramah i.e. halibut that he, the Israelite, shall make another separation. Did we not learn if one separates teramah from an unperforated pot upon the contents of a perforated one? It is teramah. Yet he must make another separation. But we have explained it that he obeys in respect to two utensils, but not in respect of one. Does he then not obey? Surely we learned if one separates a cucumber as teramah and it is found to be bitter, or a melon and it is found to be putrid, it is teramah. But he must make another separation. There it is different. For by biblical law, it is proper teramah by our. Elastictum for our I said how do we know that if one separates from inferior produce for choice the teramah is valid because it is said and ye shall bear no sin by reason of it what ye have heaped from it the best thereof now if it is not hallowed why bear sin hence it follows that if one separates from inferior for choice produce his separation is teramah said reverting to the Mishnah Talmud, Mosque Kiddushin this was taught only if he said to her with this and with this and with this but if he said to her be thou betrothed unto me with these even if she eats them one by one she is betrothed when she eats she eats her own it was taught in accordance with Rabbah if he says be thou betrothed unto me with an acorn a pomegranate and a nut or if he says to her be thou betrothed unto me with these if they are all together worth a pair she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed be thou betrothed unto me with this and this and this if they are all together Worth a pair she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed with this one whereupon she took and ate it with this one and she took and ate it and also with this one and also with this one she is not betrothed unless one of them is worth a pair now what is meant by this clause with an acorn a pomegranate and or a nut shall we assume that he said to her either with an acorn a pomegranate or a nut if they are all together worth a pair she is betrothed but he said or again if it means with an acorn and a pomegranate and a nut then it is identical with with this and with this hence it must surely mean that he said to her with these but since the second clause teaches or if he said to her be thou betrothed unto me with these it follows that the first clause does not refer to with these hence it must be taken as an explanatory clause be thou betrothed unto me with an acorn a pomegranate and a nut that is where he said be betrothed unto me with these now the final clause Teaches with this one and she took an aid if one of them is worth a pair she is betrothed but not otherwise whereas the first clause draws no distinction whether she eats or lays it down this proves that whenever he says to her with these if she eats she eats her own this proves it reverting to the final clause of the Mishnah that is well on the view that it refers to the second clause and what is meant by unless one of them is worth a pair unless the last is worth a pair then. Here too in the Beritah just quoted it means unless the last is worth a pair but according to Rav and Samuel who maintain that it refers to the first clause it being necessary to state the case of eating your comprehensive statements are given but not detailed enumerations this agrees with Rabbi who said there is no difference between the size of an olive the size of an olive and the size of an olive and the size of an olive they are both detailed enumerations Rav said if one betrothes. A woman with a debt she is not betrothed alone is given to be expended. Shall we say that this is disputed by Tanaim? If one betrothes a woman with a debt she is not betrothed, but some say she is betrothed, surely they differ in this one master holds that alone is given to be expended, whereas the other holds that it is not now is that plausible. Consider the second clause and both agree in respect to purchase that he acquires it, but if you say that alone is given to be expended, wherewith does he acquire it? Said Arnaman, who not our companion relates this very to another matter. We suppose the reference here is to the case where he said to her, Be thou betrothed unto me with a mina, and the mina was found to be short of it. And our one master holds that she is bashful to claim it, the other that she is not if so when our Eliezer said if he declares be thou betrothed unto me with a mina and he gives her a dinar, she is betrothed and he must make it up, shall we say that he stated? This ruling in dependence upon Tanaim I will tell you when the main lacks but a dinar she may be bashful to claim it when the main is short of 99 she is certainly not bashful to claim it an objection is raised if he says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me with the deposit which I have in thy possession and she goes and finds that it is stolen or destroyed if the value of a paratot is left thereof she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed but in the case of a debt even if a paratot is worth thereof is not left she is betrothed our Simeon B. Eliezer said on our Mayor's authority a debt Talmud, Mos Kiddushin B is the same as a deposit now they differ only insofar as one master holds that a debt even if a paratot is worth thereof is not left is valid Kiddushin whereas the other holds it is valid only if a paratot is worth thereof is left but not otherwise but all agree that if one betrothes a woman with a debt the money being still in her possession she is betrothed. Said Rabbah, is it logical that this Beretha is correct? Surely it is corrupt for what are the circumstances of this deposit if she guaranteed against loss it is identical with a loan if she did not guarantee against loss if so instead of the second clause teaching but in the case of debt even if a paratot is worth thereof is not left she is betrothed let a distinction be made and taught in the case of deposit itself when is that only if she did not guarantee against loss but if she did even if a paratot is worth thereof is not left she is betrothed but amended thus in the case of debt even if a paratot is worth thereof is left she is not betrothed our Simeon B. Eliezer said on our Mayor's authority debt is as a deposit wherein do they differ said Rabbi I found the rabbis at the schoolhouse sitting and explaining they differ as to whether a loan vests in its owner SC the creditor in respect of return and likewise in respect of unpreventable accidents one master holds that alone. Vest in the debtor and likewise in respect of unpreventable accidents and the other holds that it vests in the creditor and even so in respect of unpreventable accidents but I told them as for unpreventable accidents all agree that it vests in the debtor what is the reason it is no worse than a loan article if for a loan article which is returnable as it is one is liable in respect of unpreventable accidents how much more so for a debt but here they merely differ as to whether a loan vests in its owner in respect of return if so when Arhuna said if one borrows an axe from his neighbor if he clave wood therewith he acquires it if not he does not acquire it shall we say that he gave his ruling as dependent upon the dispute of Tanaim no they differ only in respect of a monetary loan which is not returnable as it is but with the loan of an article which is returnable as it is all agree on the principle if he clave therewith he indeed acquires it but if he did not Cleave therewith he does not acquire it shall we say that this rabstictum is disputed by Tanaim for it was taught if a man says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me with a note of debt or if he has a loan in the hands of others and transfers it to her our mayor said she is betrothed the sages rule she is not betrothed now how is this note of debt meant shall we say a note of debt against others then it is identical with a loan in the hands of others hence it must surely mean a note against her debt and thus they differ in respect to betrothing a woman by debt after all it means a note of debt against others and here they differ both on a debt contracted with a bond and a debt contracted verbally concerning a debt contracted with a bond
renounce the debt in favor of another whereas the other master holds a woman who has no confidence wherein do they differ concerning a debt contracted verbally in the law of Arhuna in Rab's name for Arhuna said in Rab's name if A says to be the main which I have in your possession give it to C if said in the presence of the three of them is A B and C he acquires it one master holds Rab rule thus only of a deposit but not of a loan and the other maintains that there is no Difference between a deposit and a loan again shall we say that this is disputed by Tanaim for it was taught if he says be thou betrothed unto me with a note our mayor said she is not betrothed our Eliezer said she is betrothed the sages ruled the paper is valued if it is worth a pair she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed how is this note meant shall we say a note of debt against others then our mayor is self-contradictory hence it must mean her own note of debt and thus they differ in respect to betrothal by debt said Arnam and B. Isaac the meaning here is that he betrothed her with a deed unattested by witnesses our mayor being in harmony with his view that the witnesses who signed dissolve the marriage while our Eliezer is in agreement with his opinion that the witnesses to the delivery dissolve it while the rabbis are in doubt whether it is as our mayor or our Eliezer therefore the paper is valued and if it is worth a pair she is betrothed and if not she is not betrothed Alternatively, we suppose that it was not written specifically for her sake, and they differ in respect to Reshlakish's view. For Reshlakish propounded what if a deed of betrothal is not written expressly for her, the betrothed sake do we assimilate betrothal to divorce just as divorce must be expressly for her sake, so must betrothal be likewise, or perhaps different forms of betrothal are assimilated to each other just as betrothal by money need not be for her sake, so betrothal by deed need not be for her sake. After propounding, he resolved if betrothal is assimilated to divorce for scripture rights, and when she is departed, she may be another man's wife. One master agrees with Reshlakish, the other does not. Alternatively, all agree with Reshlakish, and here the circumstances are that if the deed was written expressly for her sake, but without her knowledge, and they differ in the same dispute as Rabbah and Rabbah, our Papa and our Sharabia, for it was stated if it is written for. Her sake, but without her knowledge, Rabbah and Rabbah maintain she is betrothed. Our Papa and our Sharabi rule she is not betrothed. Shall we say that Rab's dictum is dependent on the following Tanaim? For it was taught if a woman says to a man, Make me a necklace, earrings, and finger rings, and I will be betrothed unto thee as soon as he makes them, she is betrothed. This is our Mayor's view, but the sage's rule she is not betrothed until the money reaches her hand. What is meant by this money, shall we say those self same valuables? Hence it follows that in the first Tanaim's view, even those self same valuables need not reach her hand, and wherewith is she betrothed? Hence it must surely refer to different money, which proves that they differ over betrothal by debt, for it is assumed that all hold that wages are a liability from beginning to end. Hence it is a debt surely, then they differ in this one master holds if he betrothes a woman with a debt, she is betrothed, while the other holds that. She is not no all agree that if he betrothes with a debt she is not betrothed but here they differ as to whether wages are a liability from beginning to end one master holds Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and B wages are a liability only at the end whilst the other holds that wages are a liability from beginning to end alternatively all hold that wages are a liability from beginning to end and that betrothal by debt is invalid but here they dispute whether an artisan gains a title to the improvement of the utensil one master holds that an artisan does acquire title to the improvement of the utensil and the other holds that an artisan does not acquire title to the improvement of the utensil alternatively all hold that an artisan does not obtain a title to the improvement of the utensil and that wages are a liability from beginning to end and that betrothal with debt is not valid but the circumstances here are that he added a particle of metal of his own one master holds when one betrothes a Woman with a debt and a parata, her mind is set upon the parata, the other holds her mind is set upon the debt, and they differ in the same dispute as the following Tanaim, for it was taught be thou betrothed unto me with the wage owing to me for the work I have done for thee, she is not betrothed with the wage for what I will do for thee, she is betrothed, our Nathan said with the wage for what I will do for thee, she is not betrothed, how much more so with the wage owing to me for the work I have done for thee, our Judah the prince said in truth it was stated whether he declared with the wage for what I have done or with the wage for what I will do for thee, she is not betrothed, yet if he adds a consideration of his own, she is betrothed, the first Tana and our Nathan differ in respect to wages, our Nathan and our Judah the prince differ in respect to betrothal by debt and a parata, one holds that then her mind is set upon the debt, whereas the other holds that it is set upon the Paratomishna, if a man says to a woman, Be thou betrothed unto me with this cup of wine, and it is found to be of honey, or of honey, and it is found to be of wine with the silver dinar, and it is found to be of gold, or of gold, and it is found to be of silver, on condition that I am wealthy, and he is found to be poor, or poor, and he is found to be rich, she is not betrothed. Our Simeon said, If he deceives her to her advantage, she is betrothed. Yamara, our rabbis taught where he says, Be thou betrothed unto me with this cup, one buried the taught with that, and its contents, another taught with that, but not with its contents, another taught with its contents, but not with that itself. Yet there is no difficulty, one refers to water, another to wine, and the third to brine. If he deceives her to her advantage, she is betrothed, but does not our Simeon agree that if one sells wine, and it is found to be vinegar, or vinegar, and it is found to be wine, both the vendor and the purchaser can. Retract this proofs that some prefer wine and others prefer vinegar. So here too some are pleased with silver and not with gold. Said Arshai, my Ashi, I came across Abay sitting and explaining this to his son. We deal here with a case where, for example, he said to his agent, Lend me a silver dinar and go and betroth so and so on my behalf. And he went and lent him a gold dinar. One master holds he was particular about this, the other that he merely indicated the place to him. If so, be thou betrothed. Unto me be thou betrothed, unto him is required. If he deceives her to her advantage, if he deceives him to his advantage is required. It is found to be of gold, but at the very outset it was of gold. But said Rabbi and the line of our company, this Arhai Abin explained it. What are the circumstances here? If she said to her agent, Go forth and accept Kiddushin on my behalf from so and so who has proposed to me, be thou betrothed unto me with a silver dinar and went and was given a gold. Dinar one master holds she was particular about this the other that she indicated the place to him and what is the meaning of it is found it was wrapped up in a cloth Abbe said Arsimian Arsimian Begamaliel and our Eliezer all hold that one merely indicates the place Arsimian as stated Arsimian Begamaliel for we learn Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and A.A. plain divorce bears its witnesses on the inside a folded one bears its witnesses on the outside if the signatures of a plain one are written on the outside or of a folded one on the inside both are invalid our Hanan Begamaliel said if the signatures of a folded one are written on the inside it is valid because it can be converted into a plain one Arsimian Begamaliel said it all depends on local custom now we pondered thereon does not the first ten agree that local custom is the determining factor to which our Ashi replied in the place where a plain one is customary and a folded one is made or in the place where a folded one is Customary and a plain one is made all agree that the objection is valid where do they differ where both are customary and he the husband instructs him the scribe make me a plain one and he goes and makes him a folded one one master holds that he particular is the other that he indicated a place to him our Eliezer for we learned if a woman says accept a divorce on my behalf at such and such a place and he accepts it elsewhere our Eliezer ruled it valid the shoes that he holds that she merely indicated a place to him will I said the controversy in the mission refers to a monetary advantage but in an advantage of birth all agree that she is not betrothed what is the reason I do not want a shoe too large for my foot it was taught likewise our Simeon admits that if he deceives her by a superiority of birth she is not betrothed our Ashi said this follows from our mission too for it states on condition that I am a priest and he is found to be a Levite or a Levite and he is found to be a Priest a Nathan and he is found to be a Mamzer or a Mamzer and he is found to be a Nathan she is not betrothed and our Simeon does not disagree our son of our Ashi demurred if so when it is stated on condition that I have a daughter or maid servant Megadelith that is grown up whereas he has none or on condition that he has not and he has which is a monetary advantage does he not disagree there either but what you must say is that he differs in the first clause and the same is understood of the second so here too in
That is only if he says to her on condition that I am Tinyan Alarn, but if he says to her I am a Tana, he must have learned Lossifer Sifra and Tisipta on condition that I am a disciple Talmud. We do not say such as Simeon Bza and Simeon Bzoma, but one who would ask a single question on his studies in any place can answer it even in the tractate Kala on condition that I am a sage. We do not say like the sages of Jabna or like our Akiba and his companions, but one who can be asked a matter of wisdom in any place and he can answer it on condition that I am mighty. We do not say he must be like Abner the son of Nah and Job son of Zeruiah, but as long as he is feared by his companions on account of his strength on condition that I am wealthy, we do not say like our Eliezer Biharsum and our Eliezer Biazrai, but as long as he is honored by his fellow citizens on account of his wealth on condition that I am righteous, even if he is absolutely wicked, she is betrothed, for he may have. Meditated repentance in his thoughts on condition that I am wicked even if he is completely righteous she is betrothed for he may have meditated idolatry in his mind ten calves of wisdom descended to the world nine were taken by Palestine and one by the rest of the world ten calves of beauty descended to the world nine were taken by Jerusalem and one by the rest of the world ten calves of wealth descended to the world nine were taken by the early Romans and one by the rest of the world ten calves of poverty descended to the world nine were taken by Babylon and one by the rest of the world ten calves of conceit descended to the world nine were taken by Elam and one by the rest of the world but did not conceit descend to Babylon but it is written then lifted I up mine eyes and saw and behold there came forth two women and the wind was in their wings now they had wings like the wings of a stork and they lifted up the evil between the earth and the heaven and said I to the angel that talked. With me whither do these bear the Eva? And he said unto me to build her a house in the land of Shinar whereon are Yohan and said this refers to hypocrisy and conceit which descended to Babylon yes it did come down hither but made its way thither to Elam this follows too because it is written to build her a house this proves it but that is not so for a master said a sign of conceit is poverty and poverty is found in Babylon by poverty poverty of learning is meant as it is written we have a little sister and she hath no breasts whereon are Yohan and said this refers to Elam which was privileged to study but not to teach ten calves of strength descended to the world nine were taken by the Persians etc ten calves of vermin descended to the world nine were taken by media etc ten calves of witchcraft descended to the world nine were taken by Egypt etc ten calves of swords descended to the world nine were taken by swine etc ten calves of immorality descended to the world nine were taken by Arabia etc Ten calves of impudence descended to the world nine were taken by Messine, ten calves of gossip descended to the world nine were taken by women, etc. Ten calves of drunkenness descended to the world nine were taken by Ethiopians, etc. Ten calves of sleep descended to the world nine were taken by slaves and one by the rest of the world. Mishnah be thou betrothed unto me on condition that I am a priest and he is found to be a Levite or a Levite and he is found to be a priest, a Nathan and he is found to be a Momser or a Momser and he is found to be a Nathan, a townsman and he is found to be a villager or a villager and he is found to be a townsman on condition that my house is near to the baths and it is found to be far or far and it is found to be near on condition that he has a daughter or maidservant that is grown up and he has not or on condition that I have them not and he has on condition that he has no sons and he has or on condition that he has sons and he has none in all these cases even. If she declares it was my intention to become betrothed to him, notwithstanding she is not betrothed, it is likewise so if it was she who deceives him. Gamar, a certain man sold his property with the intention of emigrating to Palestine, but when selling he said nothing, said Rabbah, that is a mental stipulation, and such is not recognized. How does Rabbah know this? Shall we say from what we learned Talmud, Mosque Kiddush, and A, if his oblation be a burnt offering of the herd, he shall offer it with a tail. Without blemish, he shall offer it at the door, etc. This teaches that he is compelled, I might think against his will, hence it is taught with his free will. How is this possible? He is compelled until he declares, I am willing, yet why seeing that in his heart he is unwilling, hence it must surely be because we rule a mental affirmation is not recognized, but perhaps it is different, therefore we ourselves are witnesses that he is pleased to gain atonement, but it follows from the second clause and you find it likewise in the case of women's divorce and slaves' monomission he the husband or master is compelled until he declares I am willing yet why seeing that in his heart he is unwilling hence it must surely be because we say a mental declaration is not recognized but perhaps it is different there because it is a religious duty to obey the words of the sages but said our Joseph it is deduced from the following if one betrothes a woman and then declares I thought her to be a priest. Daughter whereas she is the daughter of a Levite or a Levite's daughter and she is the daughter of a priest is poor whereas she is wealthy or is wealthy whereas she is poor she is betrothed because she has not deceived him yet why seeing that he declares I thought etc but it must be because we say a mental stipulation said obey to him perhaps it is different therefore the ruling is in the direction of stringency but said obey it is deduced from this in all these cases even if she Declares it was my intention to become betrothed to him, notwithstanding she is not betrothed yet. Why, seeing that she declares it was my intention, but perhaps it is different. Therefore, since he stipulated, it does not rest with her to set aside his stipulation, but said our high B. Abin this occurred at Arhistas, and Arhistas went to Arhunaz Academy to discuss the matter, and it was solved from the following. If one says to his agent, "Bring me money from the windowsill or the chest," and he brings it to him, even if the master says, "I was thinking only of this purse," yet since he brought him the money from this place, the master is guilty of trespass. Yet, why, seeing that he says, "I was thinking," etc. Hence, it must surely be because we say that a mental declaration is null. Yet, perhaps it is different there because he comes to free himself from a sacrifice. Then let him declare that he did it intentionally, but it is unusual for a person to declare himself wicked. Then let him say. I Reminded myself for it was taught if the principal recollects that it is a fish but not his agent the latter is guilty of trespass a certain man sold his property with the express intention of migrating to Palestine he migrated but could not settle down said Rabba when one goes there it is with the intention of settling and this man has not settled other state that he ruled he sold it with the intention of migrating and he has done so a certain man sold his property with the express intention of migrating to Palestine eventually he did not go said Arashi he could have gone had he desired other state that Arashi declared had he desired could he have not gone where and do they differ they differ where an impediment cropped up on the road mission if he says to his agent go forth and betrothed to me so and so in such and such a place and he goes and betrothed her elsewhere she is not betrothed she is in such and such a place and he betrothed her elsewhere she is. Betrothed Gemara now we learn the same of divorce if he says give my wife a divorce in such and such a place and it is given to her elsewhere it is invalid she is in such and such a place and it is given to her elsewhere it is valid and both are necessary for if we were informed this of condition where he comes to unite her to himself he may have thought in this place I am popular and nothing will be said against me but in that place I am hated and slander will be piled up against me but in respect to divorce seeing that he comes to drive her away I might argue that he does not care and if we were informed this of divorce I might argue in this place he is willing to be disgraced but not in the other whereas in respect to betrothal I might argue that he does not care thus both are necessary mission if he betrothes a woman on condition that she has no vows upon her and it is found that she has she is not betrothed if he marries her unconditionally and it was found she had vows. Upon her she is divorced without her kethu, but if he betrothes her on condition that she has no blemishes and blemishes are found in her she is not betrothed if he marries her unconditionally and blemishes are found in her she is divorced without her kethu, but all blemishes which incapacitate priests to serve at the altar render women unfit Gemara and we learn this likewise in the tractate on kethu both here he the tana desires to give the ruling on betrothal and settlements are taught. Incidentally to betrothal their settlements are necessary to be dealt with and betrothal is taught incidentally to settlements mission if he betrothes two women with the value of a paratot or one woman with less than a paratot is worth even if he subsequently sends gifts Talmud, Mos Kiddush and B she is not betrothed because they were sent on account of the first Kiddush and it is likewise so if a minor betrothes Gemara and it is necessary to state both for if we were informed the case of a Paratives worth for two women I might argue since money has
Papa said in that place where one first betrothed and then sends gifts we pay regard thereto but in that place where gifts are first sent and then one betrothed we have no fear where one first betrothed and then sends gifts but that is obvious it is necessary to state it only where the majority first betrothed and then send gifts but the minority first sent gifts and then betrothed I might argue let us pay regard to the minority hence we are informed otherwise our son of Arhuna. Propounded to Rabba what if a deed of settlement became known in the marketplace he replied simply because a marriage settlement becomes known in the marketplace we are to assume for a married woman what is our decision thereon said our Ashi where betrothal is first performed and then a kathuba is written we pay regard thereto but in the place where they first write a kathuba and then betrothed we have no fear in the place where there is first betrothal and then writing but that is Obvious it is necessary to state it only where scribes are rare I might have thought that he just chanced to find a scribe hence we are informed otherwise mission if one betrothed a woman and her daughter or a woman and her sister simultaneously they are not betrothed and it once happened to five women amongst whom were two sisters that a man gathered a basket of figs which was theirs and which was of the seventh year and declared be all be all betrothed unto me with this basket and one accepted it on behalf of all the sages ruled the sisters are not betrothed tomorrow whence do we know it said Rami Bihama because scripture said and thou shalt not take a woman to her sister to be a rival to her lazier the Torah decreed that when they become rivals to each other he can have no marital connection with even one of them said Rabba to him if so how is it written even the souls that do them shall be cut off from among their people but if kiddushin with her is not valid is he then liable to correct but said Rabbah the verse refers to consecutive marriage and our mission is in accordance with Rabbah who said that which cannot be done consecutively cannot be done simultaneously the text stated Rabbah said that which cannot be done consecutively cannot be done simultaneously Abbe raised an objection against him Talmud, Mos Kiddushin to Talmud, Mos Kiddushin if one gives excessive tithes his produce is made fit but his tithes are unfit but why let us say that which cannot be done consecutively cannot be done simultaneously tithes are different he replied because it is possible in the case of half grains for if one declares let half of each grain be sanctified as tithe it is sanctified but cattle tithes are impossible in halves and also impossible consecutively yet Rabbah said if two animals came forth at the tenth and he their owner proclaimed them both as tenth the tenth and the eleventh are intermingled cattle tithe is different. Because it is valid in error for we learned if the ninth was proclaimed tenth the tenth ninth and the eleventh tenth all three are sanctified but what of the thanksgiving offering which can neither be in error nor consecutively yet it was stated if the thanksgiving offering is slaughtered over eighty loaves Hezekiah said forty out of the eighty are sanctified are Yohanan said not even forty out of the eighty are sanctified was it not stated thereon are Joshua believe I said all agree that if he declared let forty out of the eighty be sanctified they are sanctified forty are not to be sanctified unless eighty are sanctified they are not sanctified they differ only where no specific statement is made one master holds that his intention is to arrange for the risks the other that his intention is for a large offering now one Rabba explain the mission as Rabba let him deduce it from the fact that it cannot be followed by intercourse he merely explains it according to the view of Rami Bihama it was stated Kiddushin which cannot be followed by intercourse Abbe says it is valid Kiddushin Rabbah said it is not valid Kiddushin Rabbah said Barahina explained it to me when a man taketh a woman and has intercourse with her this teaches Kiddushin that can be followed by intercourse is valid Kiddushin that which cannot be followed by intercourse is not valid Kiddushin we learned if he betrothes a woman and her daughter or a woman and her sister simultaneously they are not betrothed this implies if he betrothes one of a woman and her daughter or of a woman and her sister without specifying which she is betrothed yet by seeing that it is Kiddushin which may not be followed by intercourse hence this refutes Rabbah Rabbah can answer you yet even on your view consider the second clause and it once happened to five women amongst whom were two sisters that a man gathered a basket of figs which was theirs and which was of the seventh year and he declared behold yar. All betrothed unto me with this basket and one accepted it on behalf of all the sages then ruled the sisters are not betrothed thus it is only the sisters who are not betrothed but the strangers are now how is it meant shall we say that he declared all of you it is a case of you and the ass acquire and such does not acquire Talmud, Mos Kiddush and Behance it must surely mean that he said one of you and it is taught that the sisters are not betrothed on Rabba's view the first clause is difficult. On Abbe's the second Abbe reconciles it according to his opinion if he betrothed a woman and her daughter or a woman and her sister simultaneously they are not betrothed but if he betrothed one of a woman and her daughter or of a woman and her sister she is betrothed but if he says she of you who is eligible for intercourse let her be betrothed unto me she is not betrothed and thus it once happened to five women among whom were two sisters that a man gathered a basket of figs and said she of you who is eligible for intercourse let her be betrothed unto me the sages then rule the sisters are not betrothed Robert reconciled it with his opinion if a man betrothes one of a woman and her daughter or a woman and her sister it is as though he betrothed a woman and her daughter or a woman and her sister simultaneously and they are not betrothed and it thus happened to five women among whom were two sisters that a man gathered a basket of figs and declared behold all of you and one of it two sisters are betrothed unto me with this basket then the sages rule the sisters are not betrothed come and here if he gives his daughters in betrothal without specifying which bogarot are not included but minors are included yet why seeing that it is kiddushin which cannot be followed by intercourse which refutes Robert can answer you here the circumstances are that there are only one bogarot and one minor but bogarot is taught by bogarot bogarot in general are meant if so what Stated we refer to the case where she the Bogoreth appointed him her father and agent I might have thought that when he accepted Kiddushin he did it on her behalf hence we are informed that a man does not put aside that by which he benefits but do we not refer even to where she said to him let my Kiddushin be yours even so a man does not leave undone an obligation as see marrying his daughter which falls primarily upon himself to perform one which does not come and here if one has two groups of daughters by two wives and he declares I have given in betrothal my senior daughter but do not know whether the senior of the seniors or the senior of the juniors or the junior of the seniors who is senior to the senior of the juniors all are forbidden accepting the junior of the juniors this is our mayor's opinion here the circumstances are that they were originally known and only subsequently mixed up this may be proof for it is taught I do not know not it is not known this proves it if so I stated to counter our Jose who said a man does not permit himself to be brought into doubt hence we are informed that one does bring himself into doubt come and here if a man betrothed one of two sisters and does not know which he must give a divorce to both here too the circumstances are that they were originally known but only subsequently intermingled this too may be proved for it is taught he does not know not it is not known if so I stated the second clause is necessary if he dies and has one brother he must perform Eliza with both if he has two brothers one performs Eliza and the other Yubam yet if they forestall the rabbi's ruling and marry them they are not compelled to divorce them thus only Eliza and then Yubam is permissible but not Yubam and then Eliza because he may infringe the interdict against the sister of one bound to him by the Levi come and here if two strangers betrothed two sisters and neither knows which each must give two divorces here too it means that they were originally known but only subsequently mixed up this may be deduced too for it is taught neither knows not it is not known this proves it if so why stated the second clause is necessary if each dies and each had one brother this one must perform Eliza with both and the other must perform Eliza with both if one had one brother and the other two brothers Talmud, Mos Kiddush and the one brother must perform Eliza with both and of the two one must perform Eliza first and the other Yubam yet if they forestall the rabbi's ruling and marry they are not compelled to divorce them thus only Eliza and then Yubam but not Yubam and then Eliza because he may infringe the interdict against a Yabamah's marriage to a stranger come and here for Tabumi learned if A has five sons and B five daughters and A declares one of your daughters be betrothed to one of my sons each requires five divorces if one dies each requires four divorces and Eliza from one of them and should you answer here too it means that they were originally known and only subsequently mixed up but it is taught one of your daughters to one of my sons this refutation of Rabbah is indeed a refutation now the law agrees with Abay and while KG
One betroths a woman with an article of robbery violence or theft or if he snatches a cell out of her hand and betroths her there which she is betrothed there it refers to her own robbery but since the second clause teaches or if he snatches a cell out of her hand it follows that the first clause refers to robbery in general it is an explanation if one betroths a woman with robbery house so if he snatches an article out of her hand and betroths her there with Talmud, Mosk Hitch and Bibadar. Mishnah deals with her own robbery and Rab said she is not betrothed there is no difficulty in the one case he had previously negotiated with her for marriage and the other he had not negotiated a certain woman was washing her feet in a bowl of water when a man came snatched the Zeus from his neighbor threw it to her and exclaimed thou are betrothed unto me then that man went before Rabbah who said to him none pay regard to our Simeon's dictum his robbery in general involves the owners. Abandonment a certain heiress betrothed the woman with a handful of onions when he came before Rabbah he said to him who renounced it in your favor now that applies only to a handful but as for a bunch the heiress can say to him the landowner as I have taken a bunch do you take one one bunch is the same as another a certain agent brewer betrothed the woman with a measure of beer then the owner of the beer came and found him said he to him why did you not give her of this beer which is Stronger when he came before Rabbah he said to him go to the better was said only in reference to Teramah for it was taught in which case was it ruled that if one separates Teramah without the owner's knowledge his separation is valid if one enters his neighbor's field gathers the crops and separates Teramah without permission and he the owner resents it as akin to theft his separation is not valid otherwise it is and how does one know whether he resents it as theft or not if it owner comes and finds him and says to him go to the better produce and better crops are found the separation is valid if not it is invalid if the owner gathers crops and adds to that already separated in both cases his separation is valid but here he acted thus through shame hence she is not betrothed mission if one a priest betrothes a woman with his portion whether it is of the higher or of the lower sanctity she is not betrothed if with second tithe whether unwittingly or Deliberately he does not betroth her, this is our mayor's view, our Judah said, if unwittingly he has not betrothed her, if deliberately he has if with Hittish, if deliberately he has betrothed her, if unwittingly he has not, this is our mayor's view, our Judah said, if unwittingly he has betrothed her, if deliberately he has not, Gemara shall we say that our mission does not agree with our Jose the Galilean, for it was taught if anyone sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, then he shall bring his guilt offering, this is to include lower grade sacrifices as is the individual's property, this is our Jose the Galilean's opinion, you may even say that it agrees with our Jose the Galilean, he stated that view only whilst the animal to be sacrificed is alive, but not after it is killed, what is the reason when they acquire thereof, it is from the table of the Most High that they acquire it, this may be deduced to because it is stated if one betroths a woman with his portion, whether it is of the higher or of the lower sanctity he has not betrothed her our rabbis taught after our mayor's demise our judah announced to his disciples let not our mayor's disciples enter hither because they are disputatious and do not come to learn torah but to overwhelm one with halashah yet simicus forced his way through and entered said he to them thus did our mayor teach me if one betrothes a woman with his portion whether of the higher or of the lower sanctity he has not betrothed her thereupon our judah became incensed with them and exclaimed did i not say to you let not our mayor's disciples enter hither because they are disputatious and do not come to learn torah but to overwhelm me with halashah how then does a woman come to be in the temple court said our jose shall it be said mayor is dead judah angry and jose silent what is to become of the words of the torah cannot a man accept kiddushin on his daughter's behalf in the temple court and cannot a woman authorize a messenger to receive her kiddushin in the temple court again what if she forces herself in it was taught our Judah said she is betrothed our Jose rule she is not betrothed said our Yohan and both derive their views from the same verse this shall be thine of the most holy things reserved from the fire our Judah holds thine implies for all the needs whereas our Jose maintains it is as what is offered on the fire just as the fire is for consumption only so that too is for consumption by the priest only our Yohan and said Talmud, Mos Kiddush and Aavod was taken among scholars and it was resolved he who betroths with his portion whether of the higher or of the lower sanctity has not betrothed but Rab maintained the dispute continues said of a reason supports our Yohan and for it was taught how do we know that meal offerings may not be apportioned as against sacrifices from the verse and every meal offering that is baked in the oven shall all the sons of Aaron have I might think that meal offerings may not be Apportioned as against sacrifices, seeing that they cannot replace them in poverty, yet meal offerings may be apportioned as against fell offerings, since they do replace them in poverty. Therefore, it is stated, and all that is dressed in the frying pan shall all the sons of Aaron have. I might think that meal offerings cannot be apportioned as against fell offerings, since the latter are blood species and the former are species of flour, but that fell offerings may be apportioned as against animal sacrifices, since both are blood species. Therefore, it is stated, and in the baking pan, I might think fell offerings may not be apportioned as against animal sacrifices, since the preparation of the former is by hand, whereas that of the latter is with a utensil, but that meal offerings can be apportioned as against meal offerings, since the preparation of both is by hand. Therefore, it is stated, and every meal offering mingled with oil shall all the sons of Aaron have. I might think that a baking pan. Offering shall not be apportioned as against a frying pan offering or a frying pan offering as against a baking pan offering because one is made soft and the other hard but that one baking pan offering may be apportioned as against another and one frying pan offering against another since both are hard or soft respectively therefore it is said or dry shall all the sons of Aaron have now I might think that sacrifices of the higher sanctity may not be so apportioned yet those of it lower sanctity may be therefore it is stated shall all the sons of Aaron have a man as his brother and in proximity thereto if he offers it for thanksgiving just as higher sanctity sacrifices may not be so apportioned so also offerings of the lower sanctity a man teaches a man takes a share even if he has a blemish but not a minor even if he is without blemish now who is the author of an anonymous teaching in the Sifra Arjuna and he states that it is not capable of apportionment at all this proves it said Rabbah and was it not taught as Rab too but it was taught the modest withdrew their hands but the greedy shared no by shared his men snatched other priests shares as the second clause states it happened that one snatched his own and his neighbor's portion and he was called Ben Hamzan Robber until the day of his death said Rabbah son of Arshila what verse have we rescued me O my lord out of the hand of the wicked out of the hand of the unrighteous and violent. Home Rabbah said we learned it from the following learn to do well seek judgment said right the man of violence with second tithe whether unwittingly or deliberately he has not betrothed her this is our mayor's view our Judah said if unwittingly he has not betrothed her if deliberately he has etc how do we know this said our son of Rabbah on the authority of tradition and all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree is the Lord's it is holy unto the Lord. Unto the Lord and not for betrothing a woman therewith, but what of the terima of the tithe whereof it is written, thus ye shall also offer an heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes. Yet we learned if one betroths with Thurumath she is betrothed, that is because unto the Lord is not written there, but what of hallow whereof it is written of the first of your dough ye shall give unto the Lord. Yet we learned if one betroths a woman with Thurumath she is betrothed, that is because holy is not written there, but what of the seventh year whereof it is written, for it is a jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Yet we learned if one betroths with seventh year produce the woman is betrothed, that is because unto the Lord is not written there, but what of terima whereof it is written, Israel is holy unto the Lord, the first fruits, i.e., terima of his produce. Yet we learned if one betroths a woman with Thurumath she is betrothed, that refers to Israel Talmud, Mosk Hittish and Biba does. That not follow automatically Rabin the elder explained it before Rab scripture said it is who it must remain in its natural form if with it if deliberately he has betrothed her if unwittingly he has not this is our mayor S. Our Judah said if unwittingly he has betrothed her if deliberately he has not our Jacob said I heard from our Yohan and two reasons on the laws concerning the unwitting use of tithes for betrothal according to our Judah and the unwitting use of it is on our mayors. View that in both cases a woman is not betrothed there with one reason is that the woman does not wish it the other that both do not desire it but I do not know
Arjuna's opinion in my view even if he expends it there is no trespass but even on your view you should at least agree with me that a shopkeeper is as a private individual to which he answered him no he is as a money changer rap said Talmud, Mosk we have scrutinized our mayor's views from every angle and have not found that hippish unwittingly used is not sec ularist if deliberately it is but our mission refers to priestly tunics which were not worn out since they stand to be used. For the Torah was not given to angels come and hear worn out priestly tunics involve trespass this is our mayor's view surely the same holds good even if they are not worn out no only when they are worn out come and hear trespass can be committed with the new ones but not with the old our mayor said trespass can be committed with the old too for our mayor used to say trespass can be committed with the surplus of the chamber yet why let us say since they stand to be used for the Torah was not given to. Angels no trespass is committed with them for the walls of the city and its towers came out of the chamber surplus as we learned the city wall and its towers and all city requirements were provided for out of the chamber surplus say not our mayor but our Judah come and here for it was taught our Ishmael be our Isaac said if the stones of Jerusalem fall out of their place in the walls no trespass is incurred with them this is our mayor's view say not our mayor but our Judah if our Judah is in Jerusalem it city itself sanctified but we learned as the lamb as the temple sheds of cattle or as the wood as the altar fire as the altar as the temple or as Jerusalem our Judah said he who says Jerusalem has said nothing and should you answer that is because he did not say as Jerusalem surely it was taught our Judah said he who says as Jerusalem has said nothing unless he relates his vow to that which is sacrificed in Jerusalem Talmud Mosque Kiddush and B2 Tanaim differ as to our Judah's Beulah. Said on Barpet's authority our mayor used to say that Hippish deliberately used is SEC Ularist unwittingly it is not SEC Ularist and only in respect to sacrifice was it said that it is SEC Ularist by unwitting misuse but since it is not SEC Ularist whereby does he become liable to a sacrifice but when Rabin came from Palestine he explained it in Barpet's name our mayor used to say that Hippish deliberately used is SEC Ularist unwittingly is not SEC Ularist and only in respect of consumption. Was it said that it is SEC Ularis by unwitting misuse? Our nomin said in our Abbey Ahab's name the Halachah agrees with our mayor in respect to second dash tithe since the Tanah taught his view anonymously and the Halachah is as our Judah in respect to Hippish since the Tanah taught his view anonymously we learned anonymously as our mayor in respect to second dash tithe to what is the reference for we learned fourth year vintage Beth Shammai maintain it is not subject to a fifth or removal Beth Hillel rule. It is Beth Shammai rule the law of fallings and gleanings apply to it Beth Hillel say it is all for the vault what is Beth Hillel's reason they deduce the meaning of holy from second dash tithe just as tithe is subject to a fifth and removal so is fourth year vintage to while Beth Shammai do not deduce the meaning of holy from tithe now when Beth Hillel rule that it is as the second dash tithe with whom do they hold if with our Judah why is it all for the vault but he maintains that the second dash Tithe is secular property hence surely they agree with our mayor we learned anonymously as our Judah in respect to Hippish to what is the reference for we learned if he the temple treasurer sends it by a responsible person and recollects before it reaches the shopkeepers hence the latter is guilty of trespass when he expends it yet did we not learn anonymously as our Judah in respect to second dash tithe but we learned if one redeems his own second tithe he must add a fifth whether it was his in the first place or given to him as a gift whose view is this shall we say our mayors can one give it as a gift surely he maintains that second dash tithe is sacred property hence it must surely be our Judah's no after all it is our mayors but the circumstances are that the donor gave it to him mixed up in its table and he holds that unseparated gifts rank as unseparated come and here if one redeems his own fourth year plantings he must add a fifth whether it was originally his or given to him as a gift who is the author of this shall we say our mayor can one give it away surely he deduces the meaning of holy from second tithe hence it must surely be our Judah. no after all it is our mayor but here the circumstances are that he gave it in its budding stage and this does not agree with our jose who maintained budding fruit is forbidden as orla because it counts as fruit come and here if he drew into his possession the second dash tithe of another to the value of a seller and had no time to redeem it before it appreciated to two he must pay a seller and thus profits a seller and the second tithe is his now whose view is this shall we say our mayors why does he profit a seller scripture set and he shall give the money and it shall be assured to him hence it must surely be our Judah's. it is indeed our Judah's. but here we have one anonymous teaching whereas there we have two but if an anonymous ruling was intentionally taught what does it matter whether there is one or two said our nominee. Isaac the Halachah is as our mayor since we learned his view in Beir to Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and we learned elsewhere if an animal is found between Jerusalem and Migdaleter or an equal distance from the city in any direction the males are burnt offerings the females are peace offerings now can males be only burnt offerings and not peace offerings said Arashai the reference here is to one who comes to accept responsibility for its value and this is its meaning we fear that they may be burnt. Offerings it being in accordance with our mayor who ruled Hippish can be deliberately converted into Holland but can an object of intrinsic sanctity be redeemed did we not learn there cannot be consecutive trespasses in respect of sacred objects excepting in the case of consecrated animal s and vessels of ministry how so if a man rode on a dedicated cow then his neighbor came and rode and then another came and rode all are guilty of trespass if he drank out of a golden goblet then his Neighbor came and drank and then another all are guilty of trespass the latter is according to our Judah the former Armeyer but from our Judah we may understand our Meyer's view does not our Judah maintain that Hippish may be unwittingly converted into Holland and yet intrinsic sanctity cannot be SEC Ularist hence according to our Meyer too although Hippish by deliberate misuse is SEC Ularist yet intrinsic sanctity cannot be SEC Ularist there he does not intend to withdraw it into Holland here he does but when do you know our Meyer to hold this only in the case of higher sanctity do you know him to hold this view in respect to lower sanctity said one of the rabbis to him the questioner our Jacob by name it follows a fortiori if objects of the higher sanctity can be SEC Ularist surely those of the lower sanctity can be it was stated likewise our Hamabi Akbar said in our Jose son of our Hannah's name our Meyer used to assert Hippish is SEC Ularist by deliberate conversion but is not SEC Ularist by Unwitting conversion this applies to objects of both higher and lower sanctity a fortiori if objects of higher sanctity can be SEC Ularis surely those of lower sanctity can be Talmud, Mos Kiddush and be Talmud, Mos Kiddush and be now are Yohanan was astonished thereat is that a man didn't arise and sin that you may achieve merit but said are Yohanan we wait until it is blemished and two animals are brought and a stipulation made the master said males are burnt offerings but perhaps it is a thanksgiving offering a thanksgiving offering too is brought but then loaves are required loaves too are brought yet perhaps it is a guilt offering a guilt offering requires a two-year-old animal whereas a yearling was found and perhaps it is a guilt offering of a leper or a nazir these are rare yet perhaps it is a Passover sacrifice one takes great care of the Passover sacrifice in its season and when not in its season it is a peace offering yet perhaps it is a firstling or tithe in. What respect that it may be eaten when blemished here too it is eaten when blemished the master said females are peace offerings but perhaps it is a thanksgiving offering he brings a thanksgiving offering but then loaves are required loaves too are brought but perhaps it is a sin offering a sin offering is a yearling whereas a two-year-old was found yet perhaps it is a sin offering which has passed its year that is rare than what if a yearling is found it was taught Hannah Bihak and A I said A. Yearling she goat is sacrificed as a sin offering as a sin offering can you think so but said Abay it is treated as a sin offering it is led into a stable and left to perish our rabbis taught an animal may not be bought with second tithe money Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and A and if one does buy if unwittingly the money must be returned to its place if deliberately it must be brought up and consumed in the place our Judah said that holds good if he intentionally bought it in the first place for A. Peace offering, but if it was his intention to turn the second tithe money into Holland, whether unwittingly or deliberately, the money must be returned to its place. But did we not learn our Judah said if deliberately he
A Nazarite's hair or the firstling of an ass or meat seated in milk or hull and slaughtered in the temple court, she is not betrothed if he sells them and betrothes her with the proceeds, she is betrothed tomorrow with Orla. How do we know it? Because it was taught they shall be as uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten. Thus I know only the prohibition of eating once do we know that all benefit is forbidden, i.e. that one must derive no benefit therefrom, e.g. not die nor kindle a lamp. Therewith from the verse, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised, which includes all with kill a am of the vineyard. How do we know it said Hezekiah scripture saith thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with thy seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled to cash, i.e. took it ash it shall be burnt in fire, or ash he said interpret lest it be a sanctified if so just as a sanctified object transfers its character to its purchase. Price and itself becomes hull and so should Kilayim of the vineyard transfer its character to its purchase price and itself become hull and hence it must clearly be explained as Hezekiah with an ox condemned to be stoned how do we know it because it was taught from the implication of the verse the ox shall be surely stoned do and not know that it is nibble which is forbidden as food why then is it stated and his flesh shall not be eaten it informs you that if it was killed after the trial was and it may not be eaten how do we know that benefit is forbidden from the verse and the owner of the ox shall be clear how is this implied said Simeon Bezom as a man may say to his friend so and so has gone out clear from his property and has no benefit whatsoever from it now how do you know that this verse and his flesh shall not be eaten comes to teach the law if it is ritually killed after the trial is ended perhaps where it is killed after sentence it is permitted and this Verse and it shall not be eaten refers to when it is indeed stoned and its teaching is that of Arabau in our Eliezer's name for Arabau said in our Eliezer's name wherever it is said it shall not be eaten thou shalt not eat ye shall not eat the prohibitions of both eating and benefit in general are understood unless the writ expressly states otherwise as it does in the case of Nibla that is only where the prohibition of food is derived from it shall not be eaten but here the prohibition of eating follows from it shall surely be stoned for should you think that it is written to intimate prohibition of benefit scripture should state and he shall not benefit or it shall not be eaten why add its flesh to shoe that even if it is slaughtered like other flesh it is still forbidden Mars objected yet perhaps that is only if one examines a stone finds its edge perfectly free from a notch and kills therewith for it looks like stoning but not if it is slaughtered. With a knife is then a knife stipulated in the Torah moreover it was taught one may slaughter with everything with a stone glass or a reed but now that the prohibitions of both eating and benefit are derived from it shall not be eaten what is the purpose of this clause and the owner of the ox shall be clear in respect of the benefit of its skin I might think its flesh shall not be eaten is written hence its flesh is forbidden while its height is permitted now according to those Tanaim who employ this verse and the owner of the ox shall be clear as referring to half ransom and indemnification for children how do they know that the benefit of the height is forbidden from Ephesro its flesh meaning that which is joined to its flesh and the other Talmud Moskidachin he does not interpret Eth as it was taught Simeon the Imsnite other state Nehemiah the Imsnite interpreted every Eth in the Torah but as soon as he came to thou shall fear Eth the Lord thy God he refrained said his disciples to him master what is to happen with all the eth in which you have interpreted just as I received reward for interpreting them he replied so do I receive reward for retracting subsequently our became and taught thou shalt fear at the Lord thy God that is to include scholars the heifer which is beheaded how do we know it said the school of our Janay forgiveness is stated in connection therewith as with sacrifices a leper's burnt offerings how do we know if for the school of our Ishmael taught qualifying and atoning sacrifices are mentioned within the temple and qualifying and atoning sacrifices are mentioned without just as with the qualifying and atoning sacrifices mentioned within the temple qualifying is made equal to atoning sacrifices so with the qualifying and atoning sacrifices mentioned without the qualifying sacrifice is made equal to that which atones it was stated from what time are leper's birds forbidden are you hand Maintained from the time of slaughter, Resh said from the time they are taken, are Yohan and maintained from the time of slaughter, it is the slaughter that renders it forbidden. Resh said from the time they are taken, it is learned from the heifer that is to be beheaded, just as the heifer that is to be beheaded is forbidden while it yet lives, so are the leper's birds forbidden while yet alive, and from what time is the heifer that is to be beheaded itself forbidden, said Arjani. I have heard a time limit for it, but have forgotten it while our colleagues maintain its descent to the rugged valley that renders it forbidden, if so, just as the heifer that is to be beheaded is not forbidden from the time it is taken, so are the leper's birds not forbidden from when they are taken, how now there it has another determining point, but here is there any other determining point, are Yohan raised an objection to Resh of all clean birds, you may eat, this includes the bird that is. Set free, but these are the of which ye shall not eat. That includes the slaughtered bird. But should you think that it is forbidden while yet alive, is it necessary to state it after slaughter? You might argue it is analogous to sacrifices which are forbidden whilst alive. Yet the slaughtering comes and qualifies them as food. Therefore, we are told otherwise. He raised an objection. If it is slaughtered and found to be trefah, he must take a companion for the second and benefit from the first is permitted. But should you think that it is forbidden while yet alive, why may one benefit from the first? The circumstances here are: e.g., it was found to be trefah in its inward, so that no sanctity fell upon it at all. He raised an objection. If it is slaughtered without the hiss of the cedar wood and the scarlet thread, our Jacob said, since it was set aside for its religious purposes, it is forbidden. Our Simeon said, since it was not slaughtered according to its regulations, it is permitted. Now they differ. Only insofar as one master holds that an unfit slaughtering is designated slaughtering while the other master holds that such is not designated slaughtering but all agree at least that it is not forbidden while yet alive it is a controversy of Tanaim for the school of Ishmael taught qualifying and atoning are mentioned within the temple and qualifying and atoning are mentioned without just as with the qualifying and atoning mentioned within qualifying is made equal to atoning so with the qualifying and atoning mentioned without qualifying is made equal to atoning the text above stated of all clean birds ye may eat this includes the bird that is set free but these are they which ye shall not eat that includes the slaughtered bird but may I not reverse it said are you had on the authority of our Simeon B.O.A. we do not find live creatures permanently forbidden our Samuel son of our Isaac Timur do we not but Talmud Moskid be what of a designated animal and a Worshipped animal which the living creatures are yet forbidden, they are forbidden only in respect of the most high, but are indeed permitted for ordinary use are Jeremiah the but animals active or passive participants in bestiality attested by witnesses are living creatures and yet forbidden, but said are Yohanan, we do not find as a rule live creatures that are permanently forbidden the school of our Ishmael taught because scripture saith and he shall let go the living bird into the open. Field just as the field is permitted, so is this bird too permitted, does field come to teach this, but it is required for what was taught field teaches that one must not stand in Java and cast it into the sea or in Gabath and cast it to the wilderness or stand without the city and throw it into the city, but he must stand within the city and throw it beyond the wall and the other if so scripture should write field why the field hence both are inferred Rabbah said the Torah did not order send. It away for a stumbling block with the Nazarite's hair. How do we know it? Because Scripture saith, He shall be holy. He shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow long. Teaching his growth shall be holy. If so, just as a holy object stamps its purchase price and itself passes out into hull, and so should the Nazarite's hair stamp its purchase price and itself pass out into hull. And do we then red coach? We read Kadash with the firstling of an ass. Shall we say that our mission does not agree with our Simeon? For it was taught benefit is forbidden from the firstling of an ass. This is our Judah's opinion. But our Simeon permits it. Said our nomin in Rabbi Biavua's name. This means after its neck was broken, and so agrees with all meat seated in milk. How do we know it? For the school of our Ishmael taught, Thou shalt not see the kid in its mother's milk. Is stated three times. One is a prohibition against eating. One a prohibition of benefit in general, and one a prohibition of seating our mission. Does not agree with the following tenet for it was taught our Simeon be Judah said meat seated in milk may not be eaten
shall kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation are three superfluous verses now why are they stated because it is said if the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to put his name there shall be far from thee then thou shalt kill of thy herd etc teaching you may kill far from the place as see the temple but not in the place thus excluding Holland that it may not be killed in the temple court again I know this only of unblemished animals which are eligible to be Sacrifice whence do I know to include blemished ones I include blemished animals since they are of a fit species whence do I know to include beasts I include beasts since they require Shesha as a domestic animal how do I know to include birds therefore it is stated and he shall kill it and he shall kill it and he shall kill it I might think one may not kill Holland in the temple court yet if he does it is permitted to eat it therefore it is stated if the place be far from me then Thou shalt kill and thou shalt eat you may eat what you kill far from the place but not what you kill in the place thus excluding Holland killed in the temple court now I know this only of unblemished animals Talmud, Mosque Kiddushin which are eligible to be sacrificed how do I know to include blemished ones I include blemished animals seeing that they are of a fit species and how do I know to include beasts I include beasts because they require Shesha as domestic animals how do I know to Include birds, therefore it is stated, and he shall kill it, and he shall kill it, and he shall kill it. I might think one may not kill Holland in the temple, yet if he does, he may cast it to dogs, therefore it is taught, ye shall not eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field, ye shall cast it to the dogs, it ye may cast it to the dogs, but not Holland killed in the temple court. Marjuda met our Joseph and our Samuel, son of Rabbi Barhana, standing by the door of Rabbi's academy, said he to them, It was taught if one betrothes a woman with the firstling of an ass meat seated in milk, or Holland killed in the temple court, our Simeon maintained she is betrothed, while the sages rule she is not betrothed. This proves that in our Simeon's opinion, Holland killed in the temple court is not biblically forbidden, but the following contradicts it. Our Simeon said Holland that was killed in the temple court must be burned, and likewise a beast of chase killed in the temple court, they were silent when they came. Before Rabbi and put the difficulty to him he explained that controversialist Marjuda has prompted you the circumstances here are that it was killed and found to be Trefah or Simeon following his general view for it was taught if one kills a Trefah or if one kills an animal and it is discovered to be a Trefah both being Holland in the temple court our Simeon holds that benefit is permitted but the sages forbid it if he sells them and betrothes her with the proceeds she is betrothed how do we know it since the divine law revealed in reference to idolatry and thou shalt not bring an abomination into thine house lest thou be a cursed thing like it which means whatever you produce out of it is as itself it follows that all other objects forbidden in the Torah are permitted let us rather learn from it because idolatry and seventh year produce are two verses that come with the same teaching and such do not illumine others idolatry as stated what about seventh year produce it is jubilee it shall be holy unto you just as a holy object stamps its purchase price with its own sacred character so does seventh year produce likewise if so just as a holy object stamps its purchase price but itself becomes holland so does the seventh year produce stamp its purchase price and itself becomes holland therefore it is stated it shall be meaning it shall remain be in its present form how so if one buys meat with seventh year produce both must be removed from the house in the seventh year if he purchases fish with the meat the meat passes out from seventh year provisions and the fish enters i.e. takes its place if he barters the fish for wine the fish passes out and the wine enters oil for the wine the wine passes out and the oil enters thus how is it the last on each occasion is stamped with the nature of the seventh year while the original produce itself remains forbidden now that is well on the view that two verses with the same teaching do not Illumine others, but on the view that they do what can be said, limitations are written here. It is written, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, and there it is written, it is jubilee, thus only it, but nothing else. Mishnah, if one betrothes a woman with the room of tithes, priestly gifts, the water of purification, and the ashes of purification, she is betrothed, even if an Israelite Gemara Ola said the benefit of disposal does not rank as money, are Abba thereupon raised an objection against Ola. If one betrothes a woman with the room of tithes, priestly gifts, the water of purification, and the ashes of purification, she is betrothed, even if an Israelite, he answered this refers to an Israelite who inherited Tibalim from his maternal grandfather who was a priest. Now he tana of the Mishnah holds that unseparated gifts are as though already separated. Our high Bi Abin Askar, who not does the benefit of disposal rank as money or not said he to him, we have learned it if one betrothes a woman. With the room of tithes priestly gifts the water of purification and the ashes of purification she is betrothed even if an Israelite but did we not interpret it as referring to an Israelite who inherited Tibalim from his maternal grandfather who was a priest he questioned Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and B he replied you are Huzah so he was ashamed for he thought that he meant it with reference to the subject I meant this he reassured him or a sea of Huzah agrees with you shall we say that it is a controversy of Tanaim for it was taught he who steals his neighbor's table must pay him the value of his table this is Rabbi's view our Jose son of Arjuda said he must pay only for the Holland it contains surely they differ in this one master holds that disposal rights are money while the other maintains that they are not no all agree that disposal rights are not money but here however the reference is to Tibalim which he inherited from the house of his maternal grandfather a priest and a Differ as to whether unseparated priestly dues are regarded as separated. One master holds that they are regarded as separated, and the other that they are not. Alternatively, all agree that they are regarded as separated, and disposal rights have no monetary value here. However, they differ in respect to Samuel's dictum. For Samuel said, One grain of wheat frees the whole stack. One master accepts Samuel's ruling, the other does not accept it. Another alternative, all reject Samuel's dictum, but hear this. His rabbi's reason is the rabbi's penalized the thief. Another alternative, all agree with Samuel, but here this is our Jose son of our Judah's reason. The rabbi's penalized the owner, for he should not have tarried with his table. We learned if one betrothes a woman with the room of tithes, priestly gifts, the water of purification, and the ashes of purification, she is betrothed even an Israelite. But the following is opposed thereto. If one accepts payment for judging, his judgments are null for testifying his. Testimony is worthless for sprinkling and mixing with water the ashes of the red heifer his water is cavern water and his ashes are ashes of a hearth said Abbe there is no difficulty here at the mission refers to payment for bringing the ashes and drawing the water their payment for sprinkling and mixing are meant this may be proved too for here it is stated with the water of purification and the ashes of purification while there it is taught for sprinkling and mixing this proves. It's e -H -A -P -T -E -R -I, I mission if he says to his neighbor go forth and betroth me such a woman and he goes and betrothes her to himself she is betrothed to the second likewise if he says to a woman be thou betrothed unto me after thirty days and another comes and betroths her within the thirty days she is betrothed to the second thus an Israelite's daughter betrothed to a priest may eat terima, but if he declares be thou betrothed unto me from now and after thirty days and another comes in. Betrothes her within the thirty days she is betrothed and not betrothed to both an Israelite's daughter thus betrothed to a priest or a priest's daughter to an Israelite may not eat terima gemara if he says to his neighbor Aitana taught what he did is done but that he has behaved toward him as a cheat and artana when he states and he goes he indeed means he goes in cheating fashion why is it taught here if he says to his neighbor Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and whilst elsewhere it is. Taught if he says to his agent we are informed of something noteworthy here and likewise there we are informed of something noteworthy here for if his agent were stated I might think only his agent is stigmatist a cheat because he relies upon him thinking he will perform my bidding but as for his neighbor seeing that he does not rely upon him I might say that he is not a cheat there too we are taught what is noteworthy for if it were stated if he says to his neighbor I might think only if his neighbor betrothes her elsewhere is she not betrothed because he thinks that he will not trouble but as for his agent who will trouble I might think he merely indicates the place to him hence we are taught otherwise Rabin the pious went to betroth a certain woman for his son but betrothed her for himself but was it not taught what he did is done but that he has behaved toward him as a cheat they would not give her to him his son and he should have informed him he feared that in the meantime another man might come and betroth her Rabbi Barhana gave money to Rab and instructed him buy this land for me but he went and
not come and betroth her within these thirty days. Rab and Samuel both rule she is betrothed even if the money of betrothal is consumed. What is the reason this money is neither like a loan nor like a deposit? It is not like a deposit because a deposit is consumed in its owner's possession, whereas this is consumed in her possession. Again, it is not like a loan because a loan is given to be expended, whereas this was given to her for betrothal. What if another does not come and betroth her, but she herself retracts? Are Yohanan said she can retract because words can come and nullify words. Reshlakish maintained she cannot retract because words cannot come and nullify words. Are Yohanan refuted Reshlakish if he annuls it before he is agent has made a separation? His separation is invalid. Now here it is speech against speech. Yet one comes and nullifies the other, giving money into a woman's hand is different because it is like action and words cannot come and annul action. He refuted. Him if one sends a divorce to his wife and then overtakes the messenger or sends another messenger after him and says to him the divorce which I gave you is null it is indeed null now giving the divorce into the messenger's hand is like giving money into a woman's hand and yet it is taught it is indeed null there too as long as the divorce has not reached her hand it is speech against speech and so one comes and annuls the other rush is objected to our Yohan and all utensils become liable to their uncleanness by intention but a sentence only by a change in substance Talmud, Moskid and be an act can nullify both act and intention but intention can nullify neither act nor intention now it is well that an intention cannot nullify an act because speech cannot nullify action yet let it nullify intention intention in respect to uncleanliness is different because it ranks as action and in accordance with our Papa for our Papa pointed out a contradiction it is written and if one put Yidden, whereas we read, and if it be put, Yidden, how is this to be reconciled? If it be put, must be similar to if one put, just as when one puts, he desires it. So when it is put, he must desire it. Or as Ibn recited this discussion in reference to the following. Likewise, if she authorized her agent to betroth her and went and betrothed herself, if hers came first, her condition is valid. If her agents came first, her own condition is not valid. Now, what if she did not betroth herself but retracted? R. Yohanan said she can retract. Reshlakish maintained she cannot retract. R. Yohanan said she can retract. Speech comes and nullifies speech. Reshlakish said she cannot retract. Speech cannot come and nullify speech. R. Yohanan refuted Reshlakish if he annuls if he does so before he his agent has made a separation. His separation is invalid. Said Rabbah here the circumstances are e.g. that the owner anticipated his agent by separating tarim for his stack so that it is action. Reshlakish refuted R. Yohanan all utensils become liable to their uncleanness by intention but a sentence only by a changeful act and act can nullify both act and intention but intention can nullify neither act nor intention now it is well that it cannot nullify an act because speech cannot nullify action yet let it nullify intention he replied intention in respect to uncleanness is different because it ranks as action and in accordance with our papa for our papa pointed out a contradiction it is written and if one put yidden whereas we read and if it be put yidden how is this to be reconciled if it be put must be similar to if one put just as when one puts he desires it so when it is put he must desire it or Yohanan objected to Reshlakish if one sends a divorce to his wife and then overtakes a messenger or sends a messenger after him and says the divorce which I gave you is null it is null this is a refutation of Reshlakish it is indeed a refutation now the law is as Yohanan even in the First dispute for though we might argue there giving money into a woman's hand is different for it is like an action yet even so speech comes and nullifies speech but one law contradicts another for you say the law is as our Yohanan while we have an established principle that the law is as our nomin for the scholars propounded can he change his mind and divorce there with our nomin said he can change his mind and divorce there with our she's hate ruled he cannot change his mind and divorce there with and it is an established principle that the law is as our nomin granted that he nullified it as far as the messenger is concerned he did not nullify its efficacy as a divorce she is betrothed to the second rab said she is permanently betrothed to the second Samuel rule she is betrothed to the second until the end of the thirty days after which the betrothal of the second is lifted and that of the first is completed are his dasat and found it difficult wherewith is the betrothal of the second Lifted said R. Joseph to him, You sir, learn this in connection with the first clause, and so find it difficult. But Rab Judah learns it in connection with the second clause, and finds no difficulty from now and after thirty days, etc. Rab said she is permanently betrothed, yet not betrothed, whereas Samuel ruled she is betrothed and not betrothed only until the end of the thirty days, after which the betrothal of the second loses force, and that of the first is completed. Now Rab is in doubt whether it is a stipulation or a withdrawal, whereas Samuel is certain that it is a stipulation. Now this enters into the controversy of the following ten If one declares, Be thou divorced from today, and after my death it is a divorce and not a divorce. This is a view of the sages. Rabbi ruled it is indeed a divorce. Then let Rab say the Halachah agrees with the rabbis, and let Samuel say the Halachah is as rabbi. It is necessary for if Rab said the Halachah is as the rabbis, I might argue that is only. There seeing that he comes to alienate her but here that he comes to attach her to himself I would say that he agrees with Samuel that it is a stipulation and if Samuel said the Halachah is as Rabbi I would argue that is only there because there is no divorce after death but here seeing that the Kiddushin can take effect 30 days later I might say that he agrees with Rab thus it is necessary Abbe said on Rab's view if one came and said to her behold thou art betrothed to me from now and after 30 days then another came and said to her behold thou art betrothed unto me from now and after 30 days Talmud, Mos Kiddushin then another came and said to her behold thou art betrothed to me from now and after 30 days she requires a divorce from the first and the second but not from the last for on either alternative if it is a stipulation that of the first is valid Kiddushin but not those of the second and third if it is withdrawal that of the last is Kiddushin but not of the first and the second, but is this not obvious? I might say this expression implies both stipulation and withdrawal, and she requires a divorce from each. Hence, we are informed otherwise. Ola said in our Yohanan's name, even a hundred have a hold under RC. Said likewise in our Yohanan's name, even a hundred have a hold under our Meshrashia, son of RM. I said to RC, I will explain our Yohanan's reason to you. They made themselves like a row of bricks, each leaving room for the next Arhanana. Raised an objection if one declares, Be thou divorced from today, and after my death it is a divorce and not a divorce, and if he dies, she must perform Eliza, but not you. Bum now on Rab's view, it is well for this supports him. According to Samuel 2, there is no difficulty, for he may say this agrees with the rabbis, whereas I hold with rabbi, but according to our Yohanan, who maintains that something is left over every divorce which leaves something in her tied to her husband is entirely invalid. Then let him perform you bum said Rabbi the divorce is to free her and death is likewise hence what the divorce leaves undone is completed by death Abay demurred how compare divorce frees her from the Yabam's authority whereas death places her in the Yabam's authority but said Abay there what is the reason as a preventive measure on account of from today if I die which is certainly a valid divorce then let us enact that if he says from today if I die she shall perform Halizah on account of from today and after death should you say that she must perform Halizah she may submit to you bum and here too if you say that she must perform Halizah she may submit to you bum then let her and it does not matter seeing that it is only a rabbinical precaution mission if one says to a woman behold thou art betrothed unto me on condition that I give thee 200 ZUZ she is betrothed and he must give it on condition that I give thee within 30 days from now if he gives her Within 30 days she is betrothed, if not she is not betrothed, on condition that I possess 200 ZUZ she is betrothed, providing he possesses them, on condition that I shoot the 200 ZUZ she is betrothed, and he must shoot her, but if he shoots her money lying on the counter she is not betrothed, Yamara it was stated Arhuna said the Mishnah means and he must give it, Rab Judah said when he gives it, Arhuna said and he must give it, it is a condition and so he fulfills the condition. And goes on Rab Judah said when he gives it, when he gives it the condition is valid, nevertheless now it is not condition wherein do they differ, they differ where she stretches out her hand and accepts condition from another on Arhuna's view it is not condition on Rab Judah's it is condition now we learn similarly with reference to divorce if one says to his wife behold here is thy divorce on condition that thou givest me 200 ZUZ she is divorced and must give it, it
Relations now they differ only insofar as one master holds to me implies but not to my ears whilst the other rules even to my ears but all agree that it is a condition which refutes Rabjuda Rabjuda answers you who is the authority for this rabbi for Arhuna said in rabbi's name he who says on condition is as though he says from now but the rabbis disagree with him and I hold with the rabbis the text says Arhuna said in rabbi's name he who says on condition is as though he says from. Now our Zara observed when we were in Babylon we used to say with reference to Arhuna's dictum in Rabbi's name one who says on condition is as though he says from now the Rabbis disputed when I went up thither Palestine I found R.C. sitting and expounding in our Yohanan's name all agree that if he says on condition it is as though he says from now they differ only in respect of from today and after death and it was taught even so from today and after my death it is a divorce yet not a divorce this is the view of the sages Rabbi said this indeed is a divorce now according to Rabjuda who maintains that they differ in respect of on condition too instead of disputing in the case of from today and after my death let them dispute in respect of on condition that is to teach you the extent of Rabbi's view that even in the case of from today and after death it is a valid divorce then let them dispute with reference to on condition to show you the extent of the Rabbi's view. The extent of what is permitted is more important on condition that I give thee within 30 days from now etc. But it is obvious I might have thought that it is not a condition and he said it to urge her on hence we are told that it is not so on condition that I possess 200 ZUZ etc. But let us fear that he may possess it secretly moreover it was taught we fear that he may possess it there is no difficulty the one refers to certain kitchen the other to doubtful kitchen on. Condition that I shoot the 200 ZUZ etc. A tan taught her purpose was to see none but his but if he shoots her money lying on the counter she is not betrothed but it is obvious it is necessary to teach it only even when he holds the money in an investment mission if he says to her be thou betrothed unto me on condition that I own a core of land she is betrothed providing that he does own it on condition that I own it in such and such a place if he owns it there she is. Betrothed, but if not, she is not betrothed on condition that I shoot the Abethkor of land. She is betrothed, providing that he does shoot it to her. But if he shoots it to her in a plane, she is not betrothed tomorrow. But let us fear that he may possess it. Moreover, it was taught we fear that he may possess it. There is no difficulty. The one refers to certain kiddush and the other to doubtful kiddush. Why must it be taught with respect to both land and money? It is necessary for if we were told this of money, I would say that is because people are accustomed to hide money. But as for land, I would say if he possesses land, it is known. Hence, we are informed otherwise on condition that I possess it in such and such a place. If he possesses it, etc. But it is obvious I might argue that he can say to her, What does it matter to you? I will take the trouble of bringing its produce where you want it. Hence, we are informed that it is not so on condition that I shoot the Abethkor of land. Etana. Taught her meaning was to see none but his but if he shoots it to her in a plane she is not betrothed but that is obvious it is necessary to teach it only if he holds it on a farming tenancy with respect to it. Ish we learn Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and he who sanctifies his field when Jubilee is in force must pay for its redemption 50 silver shekels for an area requiring a homer of barley seed if it contains ravines 10 handbreadth steep or rocks 10 handbreadth high they are not measured with it if less than this they are measured there with now we pondered thereon granted that they are not sanctified together with the rest of the field yet let them be sanctified separately and should you answer whatever is less than a beth core is not counted but the following contradicts it and if a man shall sanctify unto the Lord part of a field of his possession etc why is this stated because it is said the sowing of a homer of barley shall be valued at 50 shekels of Silver hence I'll know it only if he sanctifies in such a manner how do I know to include a lethek half a lethek se a tarkab half a tarkab and even a quarter se because it is stated a field whatever its size said marak babi have the reference here is to ravines filled with water because they are unfit for sowing this may be proved too because it is taught analogous to high rocks this proves it if so it is the same even if less than this those are called basins of the field and ridges of the field with respect to purchase we learned if one says to his neighbor I sell you a bethkor of land and it contains ravines ten handbreadth steep or rocks ten handbreadth high they are not measured with it and marak babi have said even if they are not filled with water what is the reason said our papa because a man does not wish to pay his money for one field and it should appear as two or three plots how is it here do we compare it with hitish or purchase it is rational that we Compare it to Hippish because he can say to her I will exert myself so it and bring you the crop mission. Armadir said every stipulation which is not like that of the children of Gad and the children of Reuben is not a valid stipulation because it is written and Moses said unto them if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over the Jordan then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession and it is also written but if they will not pass over with you. Armed then they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. Arhanan Abigamaliel maintained the matter had to be stated for otherwise it implies that they should have no inheritance even in Canaan. Gamar Arhanan Abigamaliel says well to Armadir Armadir answers you should you think that it does not come for teaching a double stipulation its scripture should write but if they will not pass over they shall have possession among you why state in the land of Canaan Talmud, Mas. Kiddush and this proves that it comes to necessitate a double stipulation and Arhanan Abigamel if the divine law did not write in the land of Canaan I would think that they shall have possession among you in the land of Gilead but nothing at all of the land of Canaan and Armadir among you implies wherever you have possessions it was taught Arhanan Abigamel said for example to what may this matter be compared to a man who divided his estate among his sons and directed that son shall inherit that field that son shall inherit that field while that son shall pay 200 zoos and inherit that field but if he does not give it he shall inherit the rest of my estate together with his brothers now what causes him to receive an inheritance together with his other brethren in the rest of the estate is doubling of the stipulation affects it for him but the illustration is not similar to our mission there he states for otherwise it implies that they should have no inheritance even in Canaan which proves that the doubling served the purpose in respect of Gilead too whereas here he states what causes him to receive an inheritance together with his other brethren in the rest of the estate is doubling of the stipulation affects it for him which proves that the doubling is efficacious only in respect to the rest of the estate there is no difficulty the former was before Armadir told him the implication of then they shall have possession therein the latter the illustration after Armadir told him the implication of then they shall have possession therein as for Armadir it is well hence it is written if thou doest well shalt thou not be rewarded and if thou doest not well sin couch it at the door but according to our Hannah what is its purpose I might have thought if thou doest well there is reward but if thou doest not well there is neither reward nor punishment hence we are informed otherwise now as for Armadir it is well hence it is written then Thou shalt be clear from this my oath but according to our hand of Gamaliel what is its purpose it is necessary I might think if she were willing but not the SC her family he was to bring her against their will hence we are informed otherwise what is the purpose of and if a woman be not willing it is necessary I might think if they her family were willing but not she he should bring her against her will hence we are informed otherwise now as for our mayor it is well hence it is written. If ye walk in my statutes and if ye shall reject my statutes but according to our hand of Gamaliel what is its purpose it is necessary I might think if ye walk in my statutes ye shall have a blessing but if ye shall reject my statutes neither a blessing nor a curse hence we are informed otherwise now as for our mayor it is well hence it is written if ye be willing and obedient etc but if ye refuse and rebel but according to our hand of Gamaliel what is its purpose it is necessary I might. Think if ye be willing it will be well but if ye refuse it will be neither well nor good so we are informed that it is not so what is the meaning of Talmud, Mosque Kiddush and ye shall be fed with the sword said Rabbi Kor salt hard baked barley bread and onions for a master said stale bread baked in a large oven with salt and onions is as harmful to the body as swords now as for our hand of Gamaliel it is well hence it is written if no man have lain with thee and if thou hast not gone. Aside to uncleanness be thou free but according to our Armadir it should also state be thou strangled said our ten hum is written then as for our Armadir it is well hence it is written Hinaki but according to our hand of Gamaliel what is its purpose it is necessary I might think if no man have lain with thee be thou free
As sea sprinkling on these days is only for sacred food but for terima even one is sufficient hence we are told that it is not so mission if he betrothes a woman and then declares I thought that she was a priest's daughter whereas she is a Levite or a Levite whereas she is a priest poor whereas she is wealthy or wealthy whereas she is poor she is betrothed since she did not deceive him if he says to a woman behold be thou betrothed unto me after I become a proselyte or after thou. Beko a proselyte after I am liberated or after thou art liberated after thy husband dies or after thy sister dies or after thy yabam performs halizah for thee she is not betrothed likewise if he says to his neighbor if thy wife bears a female let her be betrothed unto me she is not betrothed if his wife however is pregnant the child being discernible his words are valid and if she bears a female she is betrothed tomorrow we learn elsewhere terima must not be separated from detached corn. For that which is attached and if he does separate his separation is not terima or see ask Aryohan and what if one declares the detached produce of this furrow be terima for the detached produce of this one when it is plucked and then it is plucked he answered him whatever act lies in his power is not as though that act were lacking he raised an objection if one says to a woman behold thou art betrothed unto me after I become a proselyte or after thou become a proselyte after I am liberated or after thou art liberated after thy husband dies or after thy sister dies or after thy yabam performs halizah for thee she is not betrothed as for all it is well for they are not in his power but to be a proselyte surely lies in his power to become a proselyte is not in his power either for our high b abbasid in our yohanan's name talmud mosque and b a proselyte requires three israelites what is the reason judgment mishpat is written in connection there with esra lawsuit who can say that these three will assemble for him are abu bimel demur there too if so if a man gives a parata to his heathen bondmate and says to her behold thou art betrothed unto me after i liberate thee is it indeed valid kiddushin how compare there she is originally like an animal whereas now after liberation she is an independent mind and when arashai said if he gives his wife a parata and says to her behold thou art betrothed unto me after i divorce thee she is not Betrothed according to our Yohannan, is she indeed betrothed? Granted that it rests with him to divorce, is it in his power to betroth her from this answer? Then solve our Ashai's problem is what if one gives two Baruta to a woman with one he says to her, Be thou betrothed unto me today, and with the other, Be thou betrothed unto me after I divorce thee from this, then deduce that it is not valid Kiddushin. No, perhaps just as Kiddushin can be effective now, it can be effective afterwards. It was taught as our Yohannan, one must not separate from detached produce for attached, and if one does separate, his separation is not terima. How so if he declares the detached produce of this furrow be terima for the attached produce of that one, or the attached produce of this furrow be terima for the detached produce of that one, his statement is null, but if he declares when it is cut off, and then it is cut off, his declaration is valid. Our Eliza B. Jacob went further, even if he declares it. Detached produce of this furrow be terima for the attached produce of this one or the attached produce of this furrow be terima for the detached produce of this one when it the attached is a third grown and cut off and it then grows to a third of its full maturity and is cut off its declaration is valid Rabbi said our Eliza B. Jacob ruled thus only of fodder but not of leek like plants or Joseph said he ruled thus even of soft plants where is it implied that this word Agam connotes leek? Like plants our Eliezer answered because scripture says is it to bow down his head as a rush Kagmon with whom does the following agree for we learned if one says to his neighbor if thy wife bears a female let her be betrothed unto me she is not betrothed whereon our Hannah said this was taught only if his wife is not pregnant but if she is his declaration is valid with whom does it agree if it is according to Rabbi it means that her child was discernible if as our Joseph even if her child is not discernible other state rabbi said our Eliezer B. Jacob ruled thus only of the fodder of a naturally watered field but not of the fodder of an artificially irrigated field our Joseph said even of the fodder of an artificially irrigated field with whom does the following agree for we learned if one says to his neighbor if thy wife bears a female let her be betrothed unto me she is not betrothed whereon our Hannah said this was taught only if his wife was not pregnant but if she was his declaration is valid with whom does it agree it means that her child was discernible and agrees with all Abbe said our Eliezer B. Jacob rabbi and our Meir all hold that one may transmit the title to an object which has not come into the world our Eliezer B. Jacob has stated rabbi for it was taught Talmud Mos Kiddush and thou shalt not deliver unto his master a servant which is escaped from his master rabbi said the rig refers to one who buys a slave on condition that he emancipates him how so Said Arnaman B. Isaac E.G. If you wrote for him when I buy you, you belong to yourself from now, Armenia, for it was taught if one says to a woman, Behold, thou art betrothed unto me after I become a proselyte, or after thou becomest a proselyte, after I am freed, or after thou art freed, after thy husband dies, or after thy sister dies, after thy Yabam performs halizah for thee, she is not betrothed, Armenia said she is betrothed, Aryohan, and the sandal maker said she is not betrothed, Arjuda the Nasi said by rights she is betrothed, yet why did they the sages say she is not betrothed because of bad feeling, then let Arjuda the Nasi be counted to Rabbi and Arjuda the Nasi are identical, and let Arakiba be counted to, for we learned if a woman says to her husband, Konam, be my work for thy mouth, he need not annul it, Arakiba said he should annul it, lest she do for him more than she is obliged to do for him, but was it not stated thereon, Arhuna son of Arjashua said it means that she bowed, let my Hands be sanctified to their maker and her hands are in existence mission if one says to a woman behold thou art betrothed unto me on condition that I speak to the governor on thy behalf or that I work for thee as a laborer if he speaks to the governor on her behalf or works for her as a laborer she is betrothed if not she is not betrothed Gemara Reshlekesh said providing that he gives her the value of a parata but not in payment of speaking etc surely it was taught be thou betrothed unto me in payment for that I drove thee on an ass or seated thee in the carriage or ship she is not betrothed in payment for that I will drive thee on an ass or seat thee in a carriage or ship she is betrothed and should you answer here too it means that he gives her the value of a parata but it states in payment again it was taught if a woman says sit with me as a companion and I will become betrothed unto thee just before me dance before me do as was done in this public game we assess it. If it is worth a parata, she is betrothed. If not, she is not betrothed. And should you answer here too, it means that he gives her the value of a parata. In addition, surely it states we assess it. Thus refuting Reshlakish, Reshlakish can answer you. The tana of this very the holds wages are a liability only at the end, whereas our tana holds wages are a liability from beginning to end. Now what compels Reshlakish to explain our mission on the basis that wages are a liability from beginning to end, and that he gives her a parata. In addition, said Rabba, for otherwise our mission presents a difficulty to him. Why state particularly on condition state in payment? For hence this proves that wherever on condition is taught, it means that he gives her something in addition. Mission, if he says on condition that my father consents, if his father consents, she is betrothed. If not, she is not betrothed. If his father dies, she is betrothed. If the son dies, the father is instructed to say that. He does not consent tomorrow what is meant by on condition that my father consents shall we say providing that my father explicitly says yes then consider the middle clause if his father dies she is betrothed surely he did not say yes hence it must mean Talmud, Mos Kiddush and be on condition that my father is silent then consider the last clause if the son dies the father is instructed to say that he does not consent yet why seeing that he was silent hence it must mean that he said to her on condition that my father does not explicitly object thus the first clause has one meaning while the middle and the last clauses have a different meaning said Arjane even so Rush Lakish observed this proves that in Arjane's opinion we strain the mission by giving two different connotations to the same phrase so that it agrees with one tanner rather than give it one connotation by making it reflect the views of two tanner Joseph BMI said after all it has one connotation and what is meant by on condition that my father consents on condition that he does not protest within 30 days from now Mishnah if a man declares I have given my daughter in betrothal but do not know to whom I have betrothed her and then one comes and states I betrothed her he is believed if one says I have betrothed her and another also says I betrothed her both must give a divorce but if they wish one gives a divorce and the other marries her Gemara
Break groups for one may argue if you say that we stoned her where one who comes to take her may take her how much the more should she be stoned where one who comes to take her may not take her yet it is not so the divine law gave credence to the father but it gave no credence to her but Arhista ruled in both cases we do not stone now Arhista follows his opinion elsewhere for Arhista said if a man declares this my son is nine years and a day or this my daughter is three years and a day he is believed in respect of sacrifice but not in respect of flagellation or other punishment it was taught as Arhista if a man declares this my son is thirteen years and a day or this my daughter is twelve years and a day Talmud Mosque and he is believed in respect of vows haram of sanctifications and Arakan but not in respect of flagellation and other punishments Mishnah if a man declares I have given my daughter in betrothal I gave her in betrothal and divorced her whilst a Minor and she is now a minor he is believed I gave her in betrothal and divorced her whilst a minor and she is now an adult he is disbelieved she was taken captive and I redeemed her whether she is a minor or an adult he is disbelieved tomorrow wherein do the first and the second clauses differ in the first clause it is in his hand in the second it is not in his hand is it not surely it is in his power to marry her to a halal whereby he unfits her for the priesthood that is no difficulty it. Our mission agrees with our dose Tibi Judah who maintained the daughters of Israel are a purifying equa for Halim but it is in his power to marry her to a monster this agrees with our Akiba who maintained Kiddush and has no validity with those marriages forbidden by negative injunctions but it is in his power to marry her if a widow to a high priest and in accordance with our semi for it was taught our semi said the issue of all marriages forbidden by a negative injunction our Akiba declared. To be mamzer accepting that of a widow married to a high priest since the Torah said a widow he shall not take and he shall not profane his seed he renders his seed profane but not mamzer this is according to our yeshiva who said come let us cry out against Akiba son of Joseph who declared he who has no entry in Israel the issue is mamzer now on our yeshiva's view it is well if he states an independent opinion of our Akiba's ruling but if he merely comes to combat our semi then it is still in his the father's power to marry her to a person forbidden by a positive injunction our Ashi answered is it logical that the first clause states that he is believed because it is in his power granted that it is in his power to betroth her is it in his power to divorce her moreover if this person to whom he desires to betroth her says that he has no pleasure in her can he then betroth her against his will but said our Ashi in the first clause the divine law declared him. Trustworthy as Arhuna said for Arhuna said in Rab's name how do we know that a father is believed to interdict his daughter by biblical law because it is said I gave my daughter unto this man to wife with the words unto a man he renders her forbidden to all with this one he frees her now the divine law believed the father in regard to marriage but in regard to captivity it did not believe him Mishnah if a man says at the time of his death I have sons he is believed I have brothers. He is disbelieved Gemara the shoes that he is believed to free but not to bind shall we say then that our Mishnah does not agree with our Nathan for it was taught if at the time of betrothal one declares that he has sons but at the time of his death he asserts that he has no sons if at the time of betrothal he declares that he has brothers while at the time of his death he declares that he has no brothers he is believed to free but not to bind this is Rabbi's view our Nathan said he is believed. To bind to said Rabbi there it is different since he retracts at the time of his death I assume that he may be speaking truth Abbe asked him does it the reverse not follow a menorah if there though he contradicts his former words you say that he may be speaking truth surely it is all the more so in our Mishnah where he does not contradict his former words but said Abbe our Mishnah treats of one who is not presumed to possess brothers or sons hence we rule since he is not presumed to possess either brothers or sons if he says I have sons he is believed but if he declares I have brothers he is disbelieved because it does not rest solely with him to forbid her to the whole world whereas the very the refers Talmud Mos Kiddush and be to one who is presumed to have brothers but not sons so we argue why should he lie why does he say it to free her from the Yabam then he could say I will free her by a divorce just before my death now Rabbi holds that the argument why should I lie is as strong as witnesses so that the witnesses come and cancel the presumption but our Nathan holds the argument why should I lie is only as strong as a presumption and one presumption cannot come and completely cancel another mission if one gives his daughter in betrothal without specifying which the Bogor are not included if one has two groups of daughters by two wives and he declares I have given in betrothal my eldest daughter but do not know whether the eldest of the seniors or the eldest of the juniors or the youngest of the seniors who is older than the senior of the juniors all are forbidden except the youngest of the juniors this is our Meir's opinion our Jose said they are all permitted except the eldest of the seniors I have betrothed my youngest daughter but do not know whether the youngest of the juniors or the youngest of the seniors or the eldest of the juniors who is younger than the youngest of the seniors they are all forbidden except the eldest of the seniors, this is our Meir's view. Our Jose said they are all permitted except the youngest of the juniors, Gemara, but minors are apparently included. This proves that Kiddushin that cannot be followed by intercourse is Kiddushin. The circumstances are that there is only a Bogorot and a minor, but Bogorot is taught by Bogorot. Bogorot in general are meant, and it is obvious what business have Bogorot here. We refer here to where she, the Bogorot, appointed him her father and agent. I might have thought that when he accepted Kiddushin, he did so on her behalf. Hence, we are informed that a man does not put aside something by which he benefits to do something by which he does not benefit. But do we not refer even to where she said to him, Let my Kiddushin be yours? Even so, a man does not put aside a good deed which primarily rests on him and perform one which is not incumbent upon him. If one has two groups of daughters, now it is necessary for if we were told the first one, I would. Say only here does our mayor rule so for since there is yet a younger one than this he calls this one elder but in the latter clause I might say that he agrees with our Jose that only the youngest of all he calls young again if the latter clause only were stated I would say that only there does our Jose rule thus but in the former he agrees with our Judah thus both are necessary shall we say that our mayor holds that a man places himself in a position of doubt while our Jose maintains that he does not. But we know them to hold the reverse for we learned if one vows this be forbidden me until Passover it is forbidden until it arrives until Passover shall be it is forbidden until it is gone until peen before Passover our mayor rule that it is forbidden until it comes our Jose said until it is gone said our Hannah be of Dimi in Rab's name the passage on vows must be reversed and it was taught even so this is a general principle that which has a fixed time and one vows until our mayor said it means. Until it goes, our Jose said. Until it comes, Abe said. The controversy refers only to two groups of daughters, but in the case of one group, all agree that elder and younger are literal. For the middle one is called by name. Our Abe Matina said to Abe, if so, Talmud, Mosque Kiddush, and let the middle one of the second junior group be permitted. The meaning here is that there are only an elder and a younger daughter, and reason supports this too. For if it is so that there is a middle one, let her be mentioned. But even on your view, the middle one of the first senior group, who is certainly doubtful and forbidden, is she mentioned? How compare there even the one younger than her is taught as being forbidden, and the same applies to this middle one who is older than her. But here, if it is so that there is a middle one, let her be mentioned. Our son of our Joshua said to Rabba, but Passover is as one group, and yet they differ. There he replied, they differ merely on language. One master. Holds until Peen Passover means until just before Passover and the other maintains until it has passed Mishnah if he says to a woman I have betrothed thee and she says thou hast not betrothed me her relations are forbidden to him but his relations are permitted to her if she says thou hast betrothed me and he maintains I have not betrothed thee her relations are permitted to him but his relations are forbidden to her I have betrothed thee and she replies thou hast betrothed none but my daughter the relations of the senior the mother are forbidden to him whilst his are permitted to the senior the junior's relations are permitted to him and his relations are permitted to the junior I have betrothed thy daughter and she replies thou hast betrothed none but myself the junior's relations are forbidden to him whilst his relations are permitted to the junior the senior's relations are permitted to him whilst his relations are forbidden to the senior Gemara if he says to a woman I have betrothed thee, etc. Now it is necessary for if we were informed this of him that is because a man does not care and so it happens that he speaks thus but as for her I might argue were she not certain of her stat
He gives a divorce of his own accord. He is compelled to pay the Kathuga Rabjuda said if a man betrothed in the presence of one witness we disregard his kiddush and Rabjuda was asked what if both admitted he answered yes and no being uncertain it was stated Arnaman said in Samuel's name if a man betrothed in the presence of one witness we disregard his kiddush and even if both admitted Rabba objected before Arnaman if one says to a woman I have betrothed thee and she says thou hast not betrothed. Me her relations are forbidden to him whilst his relations are permitted to her now if there are witnesses why are his relations permitted to her and if there are no witnesses why are her relations forbidden to him hence it surely means that there is one witness no the meaning is that he says to her I betrothed thee in the presence of so and so who have since gone overseas he raised an objection if one divorces his wife and then stays overnight with her in an Beth Shammai rule she does not require a second divorce from him while Beth Hillel maintains she does require a second divorce from him what are the circumstances if there are witnesses what is Beth Shammai's reason and if there are no witnesses what is Beth Hillel's reason hence it must surely mean that there is one witness yet according to your view consider the second clause but they agree that if she was divorced after Arison she does not require a second divorce from him because he is not intimate with her now if you think that one witness is believed what does it matter whether the divorce was from Arison or Nisuin hence the meaning here is that we have witnesses of privacy but not of intercourse Beth Shammai maintain we do not Talmud, Mos Kiddush and B say the witnesses of privacy are likewise witnesses of intercourse Beth Hillel hold the witnesses of privacy are likewise witnesses of intercourse but they certainly agree that if she was divorced from Arison we do not say that the witnesses of Privacy are likewise witnesses of intercourse because he is not intimate with her. Our Isaac B. Samuel B. Martha said on Rab's authority, if a man betrothed in the presence of one witness, we disregard his kiddush. And even if both admitted, Rab son of Arhuna said, if a man betrothed in the presence of one witness, the great court rules we disregard his kiddush. Who is the great court? Rab others state, Rab B. Arhuna said in Rab's name, if a man betrothed in the presence of one witness, the great court rules we disregard his kiddush. Who is the great court? Rab I R. B. M. I raised an objection. If two come from overseas with a woman and chattels, and one maintains this is my wife, this is my slave, and these are my chattels, whilst the other says this is my wife, this is my slave, and these are my chattels, while the woman claims these two are my slaves and the chattels are mine, she requires two divorces and collects her kathuba out of the chattels. How is this meant? If this one has witnesses. And the other has witnesses. Can she claim these two are my slaves and the chattels are mine? Hence, it surely means that there is one witness. Now, is that logical? Is one witness believed when he is rebutted? But as for permitting her to the world, all agree that she is permitted here. However, the meaning is that she needs two divorces in order to collect her kathuba from the chattels, and it is according to our mayor who ruled movables are mortgaged for the kathuba. What is the result of the matter? Our Kahana maintained we disregard his kiddushin. Our Papa said we pay heed to his kiddushin. Our Ashi said to our Kahana, what is your opinion that we learn the meaning of dab our matter here from civil matters? If so, just as there the admission of the litigant is as a hundred witnesses, then here too the admission of the litigant is as a hundred witnesses. There he replied, he does no injury to others here. However, injury is done to others. Marzitra and our Ada, the elder sons of Armari B is are divided there. Property between them, then they went before Arashi and asked him when the divine law said at the mouth of two witnesses shall a matter be established, is it so that they, the litigants cannot retract if they wish, whereas we do not desire to retract, or perhaps a transaction can be established, i.e., given legal force only by witnesses, witnesses were created only against liars. He answered them, Abbe said, if one witness says to a person you ate halab while he is silent, he the witnesses. Believe now, Atana supports this, if one witness says to a person you ate halab and he replies, I did not eat, he is not liable, thus it is only because he answered, I did not, but if he is silent, he is believed. Abbe also said, if one witness says to a person your clean food has been defiled and he is silent, he the witnesses believe now, Atana supports this, if one witness declares they have been defiled and he their owner replies, they have not been defiled, he is not liable, thus it is only. Because he says no, but if he is silent, he is believed. Abbe also said, if one witness says to a person Talmud, Mos Kiddush and the bestiality was committed with your ox, and he is silent, he is believed, and Atana supports it, or an ox with which a transgression was committed, or which had killed a person on the testimony of one witness, or by admission of its owner, he the one witness is believed. How is this on the testimony of one witness meant if the owner admits that it is by admission of the owner? Hence it surely means that he is silent. Now it is necessary, for if he told us this first one, I would argue if he were not certain thereof himself, since he otherwise sacrifices Holland in the temple court, he would not bring an offering. But as for your clean food has been defiled, we might say the reason of his silence was that it is fit for him when he himself is unclean, and if we were told of this, that is because he causes him a loss whilst he is clean, but as for bestiality having been committed with his ox, he may say to himself, Not all oxen are for the altar, thus all are necessary. The scholars propounded what if his wife is charged with having committed adultery on the testimony of one witness, and he the husband is silent. Abbe said he is believed, Rabbi said he is disbelieved because it is a sexual matter, and no sexual matter can be established by less than two. Abbe said, Once do I know it? For there was a certain blind man who used to recite Barithas in systematic order before Mar Samuel. One day it was late, but he did not come, so he sent a messenger for him. While the messenger was going by one road, he came by another. When the messenger returned, he stated that his blind man's wife had committed adultery. When he came before Mar Samuel, he said to him, If you believe him, go and divorce her. If not, do not divorce her. Now, surely, if you believe him, means that he is not a robber, and robber, if you believe him, as two witnesses, go and divorce her. If not do not divorce her. Abbe also said once do I know it because it was taught it once happened that King Janay went to Kohalath in the wilderness and conquered sixty towns there on his return he rejoiced exceedingly and invited all the sages of Israel said he to them our forefathers ate mallows when they were engaged on the building of the second temple let us to eat mallows in memory of our forefathers so mallows were served on golden tables and they ate now there was a man there frivolous evil hearted and worthless named Eliezer son of Poara who said to King Janay O King Janay the hearts of the Pharisees are against thee then what shall I do test them by the plate between thine eyes so he tested them by the plate between his eyes now an elder named Judah son of Gedidia was present there said he to King Janay O King Janay let the royal crown suffice thee and leave the priestly crown to the seat of Aaron for it was rumored that his mother had been taken captive in Modiim accordingly the charge was investigated but not sustained and the sages of Israel departed in anger then said Eliezer Bipo Araja King Janay O King Janay that is the law even for the most humble man in Israel and thou a king and a high priest shall that be thy law too then what shall I do if thou wilt take my advice trample then down but what shall happen with the Torah behold it is rolled up and lying in the corner whoever wishes to study let him go and study said Arnaman B. Isaac. Immediately a spirit of heresy was instilled into him for he should have replied that is well for the written law but what of the oral law straightway the evil burst forth through Eliezer son of Poara all the sages of Israel were massacred and the world was desolate until Simeon Bishada came and restored the Torah to its pristine glory now how was it shall we say that two testified that she was captured and two that she was not what reason do you see to rely upon the latter rely upon it? Former hence it must surely mean that her captivity was attested by one witness and the reason that his evidence was rejected was that two rebutted him but otherwise he would have been believed and Rabbi he will reply after all there were two against two but it is as our Abba B. Arminim I said elsewhere that it refers to witnesses of refutation has a maso here too there were witnesses of refutation alternatively this agrees with our Isaac who said they substituted a bond made for her Rabbi. Said Talmud, Mos Kiddush and B. Once do I know it because we learned our Simeon said it once happened that the water reservoir of Discus in Jabna which stood in the presumption of being full was measured and found wanting everything which had been rendered clean there by our Tarfon declared clean and our Akiba unclean said our Tarfon this Mikwe stands in the presumption of being full and you come to declare it wanting because of a doubt you must not declare it wanting on the strength of doubt said our Ak
This case of a man with a blemish whose unfitness is by one how is it meant if he contradicts him is he the witness believed hence it must mean that he is silent and by analogy in the case of a son of a divorced woman or of a halyza he is also silent and it is taught the unfitness of a mequa is by one and the unfitness of a man with a blemish is by one but let not the son of a divorced woman or of a halyza prove it since his unfitness must be attested by two but Abe maintains after. All it means that he contradicts him yet as to your argument why is he believed the answer is because he can say to him strip and I will show you the blemish and that is meant when it is taught the unfitness of a mequa is in itself and the unfitness of a man with a blemish is in himself but let not the son of a divorced woman or a halyza prove it whose unfitness is through others and how do we know that the service of the son of a divorced woman or a halyza is retrospectively fit? Said Rab Judah in Samuel's name because scripture said and it shall be unto him and to his seed after him the covenant of an everlasting priesthood this applies to both fit and unfit seed Samuel's father said it is deduced from the following bless Lord his substance hello and accept the work of his hands except even the profane Holland in his midst Arjan said it is deduced from this and thou shalt come unto the priest that shall be in those days now could you then imagine that a man should go to a priest who was not of his days but this must refer to one who was originally assumed to be fit and then became profane how do we know that the service of a man with a blemish is retrospectively invalid said Rab Judah in Samuel's name because scripture said wherefore say behold I give unto him my covenant of perfection when he is perfect but not when he is wanting but shalom peace is written said Arnam in the Bab of shalom is broken off in the middle Misha. Wherever there is condition and there is no transgression, the issue follows the status of the male, such as the case when the daughter of a priest a Levite or an Israelite is married to a priest a Levite or an Israelite. But wherever there is condition and there is transgression, the issue follows the status of the inferior. This is the case when a widow is married to a high priest or a divorced woman or a halyza to an ordinary priest or a mamzereth or a nethin to an Israelite and the daughter of an Israelite to a mamzer or a nathan and whatever woman who cannot contract condition with that particular person but can contract condition with another person, the issue is mamzer. This is the case when one has intercourse with any relation prohibited in the Torah and whatever woman who cannot contract condition with that particular person or with others, the issue follows her status. This is the case with the issue of a bondmaid or a gentile woman tomorrow. Wherever there is condition, are. Simeon said to our Yohanan, is it then a general principle that wherever there is Kiddushin and there is no transgression, the issue follows the status of the male, but what of Talmud, Mos Kiddushin, a proselyte who marries a Mamzareth where the Kiddushin is valid and there is no sin, and yet the issue follows the status of the inferior, for it was taught if a proselyte marries a Mamzareth, the issue is Mamzareth, this is the view of our Jose, he replied, do you think that our mission agrees with our Jose? Our mission is according to our Judah who maintained the proselyte may not marry a Mamzareth, hence there is Kiddushin, but there is transgression, and so the issue follows the status of the inferior, then let it be taught in the mission wherever of the second clause is taught as an extension, alternatively it is after all according to our Jose, but this is the case is taught as a limitation, does end this is the case imply that there are no others, but what of Allah who marries the daughter of an Israelite where there is condition and there is transgression yet the issue follows the male that is no difficulty he the tent of our mission holds with our dust son of our Judah but what of an Israelite who marries a halal where there is condition and there is no transgression and yet the issue follows the male wherever is stated in the first clause as an extension then let it be explicitly taught because it cannot be conveniently taught for how shall it be stated the daughter of a priest a Levite or an Israelite or a halal who marries a priest a Levite or an Israelite is then a halal eligible to marry a priest but there is a case of Rabbi Barhana for Rabbi Barhana said in our Yohanan's name if an Egyptian of the second degree marries an Egyptian woman of the first degree her son ranks as third degree wherever of the first clause is stated as an extension whereas according to our Dimi who maintained that he belongs to the second degree this is the cases. Taught as a limitation, but there is the following for when Rabin came, he said in the name of our Yohanan, in the case of other nations, follow the male. If they become proselytes, follow the more inferior status of the two. This is the case is taught as a limitation, reverting to the authorship of the Mishnah. How now, if you say that our Mishnah agrees with our Judah, it is well, and wherever of the first clause includes an Israelite who marries a halala, and the case of Rabbi Barhan a while. This is the case excludes the cases of Ardimi and Rabin Talmud, Mos Kiddush, and be again, wherever of the second clause includes a proselyte who marries a Mamzareth, but if you say that it agrees with our Jose, wherever of the first clause is to be explained, as we have said, this is the case likewise, as we have said, but what is wherever of the second clause to include now on your view according to our Judah, what is the purpose of it? this is the case of the second clause, hence you must say. Because the first clause states this is the case, the second likewise states this is the case, so here too, because the first clause states wherever the second does likewise state wherever the above text states when Rabin came, he said in the name of our Yohanan, in the case of other nations follow the male, if they become proselytes follow the more inferior status of the two, what is meant by in the case of other nations follow the male as it was taught, how do we know that if a member of one of the nations has intercourse with a Canaanite woman and begets a son, you may buy him as a slave, because it is said moreover of the children of the residents that do sojourn among you of them shall ye buy him, I think that even if a Canaanite has intercourse with a woman of other nations and begets a son, you may buy him for a slave, therefore it is said which they have begotten in your land, only of those who are begotten in your land, but not of those who dwell in your land if they become. Proselytes follow the more inferior status of the two, in which case shall we say in the case of an Egyptian who marries an Ammonite, what inferior status is there? The Torah decreed an Ammonite shall not enter unto the assembly of the Lord even to the tenth generation, but not an Ammonite, but it means an Ammonite who marries an Egyptian woman. Now if the issue is male, he follows him the father, and if the issue is female, she follows her the mother, whatever woman who cannot. Contract condition with that particular person, how do we know it for our high Bavin said in our Yohanan's name the matter eventually being ascribed to the authority of our Jane, while our Aha son of Rabbah said that it was eventually ascribed to the authority of our Jose the Galilean scripture said, and when she is departed out of his house she may go and be married to a strange man to a stranger, but not to relations are to this yet say a strange man, but not her husband, son of a son. It is explicitly written a man shall not take his father's wife what then is the purpose of a strange man this proves it is to teach to strangers but not to relations yet perhaps both refer to the husband son one treating of it at the outset the other if performed that it is interdicted at the outset is deduced from a wife's sister if one may not betroth a wife's sister who is forbidden on pain of Gareth how much the more so is this of those on account of whom death by Beth din is incurred then perhaps both refer to a wife's sister one forbidding it at the outset the other if performed that indeed is so then we have found this of a wife's sister how we do know it of other consanguineous relations we learned and from a wife's sister just as a wife's sister is distinguished in that she is a consanguineous relation with whom a deliberate offense involves Gareth and an unwitting offense involves a sin offering and condition with her is invalid so with every Consanguineous relation with whom a deliberate offense involves Gareth and an unwitting offense a sin offering condition is invalid now as for all others it is well they may be so derived but as for a married woman and a brother's wife if the analogy can be refuted thus as for a wife's sister that the invalidity of condition is because she is not permitted even where there is a precept will you say the same of a brother's wife who is permitted where there is a precept the analogy with a married woman too may be refuted as for these that the invalidity of condition is because she cannot be permitted whilst they who cast the interdict upon her are alive will you say the same of a married woman who can be permitted during the lifetime of him who renders her forbidden but said our Jonah other state are who not son of our Joshua scripture said for whosoever shall do any of these abominations even the souls that do them shall be cut off thus all consanguineous relations are Assimilated to a wife's sister just as condition with a wife's sister is invalid so is condition with all other consanguineous relations invalid if so Talmud, Mos condition even in it to why then did Abbe say all agree that if one has intercourse with an or a soda the issue is not Mamzer said Hezekiah scripture said and if any man lie with her and her menstruation be
Invalid to what does he apply if there be to the betrothal of a widow to a high priest and in accordance with our semi for it was taught our semi said the issue of all marriages forbidden by a negative injunction are accurate declared mamzer accepting that of a widow married to a high priest since the Torah said a widow he shall not take and he shall not profane his seed he renders his seed profane but not mamzer but on the view of our yeshiva who said come and let us cry out against. Akiba son of Joseph who declared he who has no entry in Israel the issue is mamzer it is well if our yeshiva comes to combat our semi then it is right but if he states an independent opinion this including even those who are interdicted by a positive precept to what can he apply it to a non-virgin married to a high priest and wherein does it differ because it is a positive precept unapplicable to all and the rabbis instead of explaining the verse is referring to those forbidden by negative. Precepts let them refer it to those forbidden by positive precepts those who are forbidden by positive precepts how are they conceivable if both are Egyptian women both are hated if one is an Egyptian woman and the other a Jewish we require that the two wives shall be of one people if one is a non-virgin married to a high priest is it then written if there be two wives to a priest and are Akiba you are forced to leave it to the verse to explain itself and whatever woman who cannot. Contract Kiddushin etc. How do we know it of a Canaanitish bond made set our scripture saith about Yehir with Am the acid is a people am like unto an ass we have thus found that Kiddushin with her is invalid Talmud. Mos Kiddushin be how do we know that the issue takes her status because scripture saith the wife and her children shall be her masters how do we know it of a freeborn Gentile woman scripture saith neither shall thou make marriages with them how do we know that her Issue bears her status are Yohanan said on the authority of Arsimian Biohi because scripture saith for he will turn away thy son from following me thy son by an Israelite woman is called thy son but thy son by a heathen is not called thy son Rabbanah said this proves that thy daughter's son by a heathen is called thy son shall we say that Rabbanah holds that if a heathen or a non-Jewish slave cohabits with a Jewish the issue is mamzer no granted that he is not regarded as fit he is not mamzer either but merely stigmatized as unfit now that verse refers to the seven nations whence do we know it of other nations scripture saith for he will turn away thy son which includes all who may turn him away that is well according to Arsimian who interprets the reason of scripture but on the view of the rabbis what is the reason scripture saith and after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband etc whence it follows that before that kiddushin with her is invalid we have Thus found that Kiddushin with her is not recognized how do we know that her child is as herself scripture saith if there be to a man two wives and they bear to him children where we read if there be we also read and they bear to him but where we do not read if there be we do not read and they bear to him if so is not a heathen bond made likewise yes it is even thus then what is the purpose of the wife and her children shall be her masters for what was taught Talmud, Mos Kiddushin. If he says to his bond mate, behold thou art free but thy child yet to be born shall be a slave the child is as herself this is a view of our Jose the Galilean the sages maintain his words are valid for it is said the wife and her children shall be her masters how does this teach it said Rabbi this refers to our Jose the Galilean's ruling mission our Tarfan said Mamzerim can be purified how if a Mamzer marries a bond mate her son is a slave if he is freed it is found that the son is a free man. Our Elizer said, Behold, he is a slave, a Mamzer Gemara. The scholars propounded, Does our Tarfan say thus at the very outset, or only if it is already done? Come and hear they the sages said to our Tarfan, You have purified the males, but you have not purified the females. Now, if you say that he means at the very outset, let a Mamzer to be married to a slave, a slave has no paternity. Come and hear for our Simlase host was a Mamzer, and he our Simlase said to him, Had I known you earlier, I would have removed the stigma from your sons. Now, if you say that at our Tarfan's device is at the very outset, it is well, but if you say only when already done, what is it that he could advise him? He would have advised him by saying to him, Go and steal and then be sold as a Hebrew slave. Were there then Hebrew slaves in our Simlase time? Surely a master said, The institution of a Hebrew slave is practiced only when Jubilee is practiced, hence it surely follows that our Tarfan means at the very outset this. Proves it Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the Halachah is as our Tarfan our Eliezer said behold he is a slave a Mamzer our Eliezer said what is our Eliezer's reason because scripture saith a Mamzer even to the tenth generation shall not enter to him into the assembly of the Lord this teaches follow his ineligibility and the rabbis that refers to an Israelite who marries a Mamzer for I might think it is written by their families by their father's house therefore to him comes and excludes it and our Eliezer surely though it is written by their families by their father's house yet to him comes and excludes it so here too though it is written the wife and her children shall be her masters yet to him comes and excludes it and the rabbis every child in the womb of a heathen bondmate is like the young in an animal's womb chapteriv mishnah ten genealogical classes went up from Babylon priests Levites Israelites halal and proselytes freedmen Mamzer and Nathanim Shevki and Foundlings, priests, Levites, and Israelites may intermarry with each other. Levites, Israelites, Halal, and proselytes, and freedmen may intermarry. Proselytes, and freedmen, Mamzerim, and Nathanim, Shevki, and foundlings are all permitted to intermarry. Now these are the Shevki who knows his mother, but not his father. Foundling he who was gathered in from the streets and knows neither his father nor his mother. Abbasal used to call the Shekuki Biduki Gemara. Ten genealogical classes went up from Babylon. Why is it particularly taught? Went up from Babylon. Let him state migrated to Eretz Israel. He thereby tells us something and passant as it was taught. And shalt thou arise and get thee up unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. This teaches that the temple is higher than the rest of Eretz Israel, and Eretz Israel is higher than all other countries. As for the temple being higher than the rest of Eretz Israel, it is well even as it is written Talmud, Mos Kiddush, and Be'ev. There arise matters of controversy in thy gates, then thou shalt arise and go up. But how do we know that Eretz Israel is higher than all other countries? Because it is written, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, As the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I had driven. Then then why particularly state went up from Babylon, let him teach, went up to Eretz Israel. This supports our Eliezer, for our Eliezer said Ezra did not go up from Babylon until he made it like pure sifted flour. Then he went up, Abbe said, We learned they went up voluntarily. Rabbi said, We learned he Ezra brought them up against their will, and they differ over our Eliezer. As dictum, Ezra did not go up from Babylon until he made it like pure sifted flour. Then he went up, Abbe rejects it, Rabbi. Accepts it alternatively all except our Eliezer's dictum but they differ in this one master Abbe holds that he merely separated them whereupon they voluntarily ascended to Palestine the other master holds that even so he led them up against their will now on the view that they went up voluntarily it is well thus Rab Judah said in Samuel's name all countries are as dough in comparison with Palestine and Palestine is as dough relative to Babylon but on the view that he forcibly led them up they were indeed known granted that they were known to that generation they were not known to another generation on the view that they went up it is well hence it is written and I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahab and there we encamped three days and I viewed I.e. scrutinized the people and the priests and found there none of the sons of Levi but on the view that he brought them up surely he was most careful with them granted that he had been careful with the unfit yet he had not been careful with the fit priests Levites and Israelites how do we know that they had come up because it is written so the priests and the Levites and some of the people and the singers and the porters and the Nathanim dwelt in their cities and all Israel in their cities halal and proselytes and freedmen how do we know halal for it was taught our Jose said a presumptive right Hazaka is powerful as it is said and of the children of the priests the children of Habiah the children of Hak is the children of Barzillah which took a wife of the daughters of Barzillah the Jalidite and was called after their name they sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy but they were not found therefore were they deemed polluted and put from the priesthood and the tears hath said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with Urim and with Thummim now he said to them behold you remain in your presumptive Rights whereof did ye
The heat offerings of the Kodashim and the Master said explaining this the priestly dues of sacrifices Talmud, Mos Kedishin she shall not eat proselytes and freedmen how do we know it said Arista because scripture said and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land Monsarim how do we know it because it is written and sent Balat the Horonite and Tobia the slave the Ammonite heard it and it is also written moreover in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobia for there were many in Judah sworn unto him because he Tobia was the son-in-law of Shechania the son of Ara and his son Jehohanan had taken the daughter of Meshulam the son of Berchia to wife now he the tenor of our Mishnah holds that if a heathen or a slave has intercourse with the daughter of an Israelite the issue is Monsar that is well on the view that the issue is Monsar but on the view that it is legitimate cash what can be. Said moreover, how do you know that they had sons? Perhaps they did not have sons again. How do you know that they were originally here in Babylon and then migrated? Perhaps they were there in Palestine from the beginning. But it is learned from this, and these were they which went up from Telmel Tel Harsha Cherub and Amor, but they could not chew their fathers' houses nor their seed, whether they were of Israel. Now Telmel refers to those people whose deeds were like those of Sodom, which was turned into a salt heap. Tel Harsha to those who cry out, Father and their mother silenced them, but they could not chew their fathers' houses nor their seed, i.e., their mothers, whether they were of Israel. This refers to foundlings gathered in from the streets. Cherub and Amor are about said the Lord said, I said that Israel should be as precious to me as the cherub, whereas they made themselves like the leopard. Others state are about said the Lord said, though they have made themselves. Like the leopard, yet they are as precious to me as a cherub. Rabbi Barhana said, He who takes a wife who is not fitting for him, the rich stigmatizes him as though he had plowed the whole world and sown it with salt, as it is said. And these were they which went up front. Tell Melatel Harsha, Rabbi son of Arada said in Rab's name, He who takes a wife for the sake of money will have unworthy children, as it is said. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have borne strange children. And should you think their money is saved to them, therefore it is stated, Now shall the new moon devour them with their portions, and should you say his portion, but not hers, therefore it is stated, Their portions, and should you say only after a long time, therefore it is said, The new moon, what does this imply? Said Arnam and B. Isaac, a month comes and a month goes, and their money is lost. Rabbi son of Arada also said, Other state Arsala said in Arham in his name, He who marries a wife. Who is not fit for him, Elijah binds him, and the Holy One blessed be he flagellates him and attended talk concerning all these Elijah rites, and the Holy One blessed be he attests woe to him who disqualifies his seed, blemishes his family, and him who takes to wife one who is not fit for him, Elijah binds, and the Holy One blessed be he flagellates, and he who continually declares others unfit is himself unfit and never speaks in praise of people, and Samuel said with his own blemish he stigmatizes others as unfit. A certain man from Nehardia entered the butcher's shop in Pomadiva and demanded, Give me meat, wait until Rab Judah be Ezekiel's attendant takes his was the reply, and then we will serve you who is Judah be Shuiskel. He exclaimed to take precedence over me and be served before me when they went and told Rab Judah he pronounced the band against him, said they to him, He is one to call people slaves, whereupon he had him proclaimed a slave thereupon that man went and Summoned him to a lawsuit before Arnaman when the writ of summons was brought, he Rab Judah went before Arhuna and asked him, Shall I go or not? Actually, he replied, You need not go, being a great man yet in honor of the Nasai's house arise and go on his arrival. There he found him making a railing, said he to him, Do you not accept Arhuna be Edi's dictum in Samuel's name? Once a man is appointed head of a community, he may not do manual labor in the presence of three. I am merely making a small portion of a gundra that he replied, Is not my hay as written in the Torah or Megas as used by the rabbis good enough? He retorted, Said he to him, Sit you down on a carpet, a seat is not sussel as used by the rabbis or is to buy as commonly used good enough. He asked, Will you partake of Ethrong a citron? He proceeded, Thus did Samuel say, Was his reply, He who says Ethrong is a third puffed up with arrogance, either Ethrog as it is called by the rabbis or Ethrog as it is popularly called, will you? Drink and bag a cup of wine. He asked him, Are you then dissatisfied with Israel? As it is called by the rabbis, or Anpak, as it is popularly pronounced. He reproved him, Let my daughter don't come and serve drink. He proposed, Thus said Samuel, He replied, One must not make use of a woman, but she is only a child. Samuel distinctly said, One must make no use at all of a woman, whether adult or child. Will you send a greeting to my wife, Yalfa? He suggested, Thus said Samuel, He replied, To listen to it. Woman's voice is indecent, it is possible through a messenger. Thus said Samuel, He retorted, Talmud, Mos Kiddush, and be one must not inquire after a woman's welfare, then by her husband. Thus said Samuel, said he, One must not inquire after a woman's welfare at all. His wife sent word to him, Settle his case for him, lest he make you like any ignoramus. What means you're traveling hither? He asked him, You sent me a writ of summons. He replied, Seeing that I do not even know your way of speech, he exclaimed. Would I send you a writ of summons thereupon? He drew out the summons from his bosom and shoot it to him. Behold the man and behold the summons. He said, Yet since you have come here, he said, Let us discuss the matter that it may not be said that the rabbis should favor to each other. Then he asked him, Why did you place that man under the ban? Because he abused the rabbi's messenger. Then you should have punished him by stripes for rab punished with stripes him who abused the messenger of the rabbis. I dealt with him more severely. Why did you have it proclaimed that he is a slave? He answered, Because he was wont to call other people slaves, and he who declares others unfit is himself unfit and never speaks good of anyone. And Samuel said with his own blemish, He stigmatizes others as unfit. But how did Samuel say this only that one must suspect? Yet did he say that he is to be thus proclaimed at the stage? His opponent said to Rab Judah, You call me a slave, I who am descended from it. Royal house of the Hasmonians, thus said Samuel, he retorted, Whoever says I am descended from the house of the Hasmonians is a slave, said he to him, Do you not agree with what was said by our Abba in the name of Arhunad in Rab's name? Every scholar who proceeds to give a ruling if he has stated it before the event, he is heated, if not, he is not heated, but there is Armahana who supports me, he replied, Now Armahana had not seen Nehardia for thirteen years, but on that day he visited, said he to him, Do you remember what Samuel said when he stood with one foot on the bank and one foot on the bridge? Thus said Samuel, he replied, He who claims I am descended from the royal house of the Hasmonians is a slave, because there remained of them only one maiden who ascended a roof, lifted up her voice, and cried out, Whoever says I am descended from the house of the Hasmonians is a slave, then she fell from the roof and died, so he was proclaimed a slave on that day, many Kethaboth were torn up in. Nehardia when he Rab Judah issued they came out after him to stone him but he threatened them if you will be silent be silent if not I will disclose against you what Samuel said there are two families in Nehardia one called the house of Jonadab and the other the house of Urbath Raven like and the sign thereof is the unclean is unclean and the clean clean thereupon they threw away the stones out of their hands which created a stoppage in the royal canal at that time Rab Judah announced in Pomadiv Ada and Jonathan are slaves Judah be Papa is Mamzer Badi be Tobia in his arrogance refused to accept a deed of monumission Rabba proclaimed in Mahuza the members of Beladina Tila Mela and Zika all these are unfit Rab Judah said the members of Gubar Gibeonites turn on is a village of Nathanim are Joseph said this be Kubi in the vicinity of Pomadiv consists entirely of slaves Rab Judah said in Samuel's name Pashur son of Imr had 400 slaves others say 4,000 slaves and all became mixed up in the priesthood and every priest who displays impudence is descended from none but them said Abbe and they all dwell in the wall of Nehardia now he Rab Judah differs from our Eliezer for our Eliezer said if you see a priest with brazen for it have no suspicions of him for it is said that people are as the quarrels among priests are of and be are at a said in Rab's name whoever takes a wife who is not fit for him when the Holy One blessed be he causes his divine presence to rest on Israel he testifies concerning all the tribes that they are his people but does not testify unto him for it is said the tribes of the Lord are a testimony unto Israel when is it a testimony unto Israel when the tribes are tribes of the Lord are Hamabi
Countries are as dough in comparison with Palestine and Palestine is as dough relative to Babylon in the days of Rabbi it was desired to render Babylon as dough as of his Palestine said he to them you are putting thorns between my eyes if you wish our Hannah Abihama will join issue with you so our Hannah Abihama joined issue with them and said to them I have this tradition from our Ishmael son of our Jose who stated on his father's authority all countries are as dough in comparison with Palestine and Palestine is as dough relative to Babylon in the days of Arphinius it was desired to declare Babylon as dough as of his Palestine said he to his slaves when I have made two statements in the Beth Hamid Rash take me up in my litter and flee when he entered he said to them a fowl does not require slaughter by biblical law whilst they were sitting and meditating thereon he said to them all countries are as dough in comparison with Palestine and Palestine is as dough relative to Babylon thereupon. They his slaves took him up in his litter and fled they ran after but could not overtake him and they sat and examined their genealogies until they came to danger so they refrained Aryohan and said by the temple it is in our power but what shall I do seeing that the greatest men of our time are mixed up therein thus he holds with our Isaac who said once a family becomes mixed up it remains so Abbe said we have learned likewise there was a family Beth Hazarephah in Transjordania which bans Ion. Forcibly expelled there was another which bans Ion forcibly admitted such as these Elijah will come to declare unclean or clean to expel and admit hence only such as these who are known but once a family becomes mixed up it remains so it was taught there was yet another which the sages declined to reveal but the sages confided it to their children and disciples once a septenate others say twice a septenate said Arnam and B. Isaac reason supports the view that it was once a septenate even as it was taught if one vows behold I will be a Nazir if I do not reveal the families which are impure he must be a Nazir and not reveal the families Rabbi Barhana said in Aryohan and name the pronunciation of the divine name of four letters the sages confide to their disciples once a septenate others state twice a septenate said Arnam and B. Isaac reason supports the view that it was once a septenate for it is written this is my name forever Eliolam which is written Eliolam Rabbah. Thought to lecture upon it at the public session said a certain old man to him it is written Eliolam to be kept secret our Abba opposed two verses it is written this is my name but it is also written and this is my memorial the Holy One blessed be he said I am not called as I am written I am written with Yahi but I am read Allah Dalaf our rabbis taught at first God's twelve lettered name used to be entrusted to all people when unruly men increased it was confided to the pious of it. Priesthood and these swallowed it during the chanting of their brother priesthood was taught our Tarfon said I once ascended the days after my mother's brother and inclined my ear to the high priest and heard him swallowing the name during the chanting of his brother priest Rab Judah said in Rab's name the 42 lettered name is entrusted only to him who is pious meek middle aged free from bad temper sober and not insistent on his rights and he who knows it is heedful thereof and observes it. Impurity is beloved above and popular below feared by man and inherits two worlds this world and the future world Samuel said on the authority of an old man Babylon stands in the presumption of being fit until you know wherewith it became unfit other countries are presumed to be unfit until you know wherewith they are fit as for Palestine he who has the presumption of unfitness is unfit he who has the presumption of fitness is fit but this is self-contradictory you say he who has it. Presumption of unfitness is unfit hence when undetermined he is fit then you teach he who has the presumption of fitness is fit hence when undetermined he is unfit said Arunabi Talafa in Rab's name there is no difficulty Talmud, Mosk Hittishan be here it is to permit him to take a wife there it is to take the wife from him or Joseph said he who speech is Babylonian is permitted to take a wife of superior birth but nowadays that there are dissemblers we fear them Zeir I was evading R. Yohanan who was urging him marry my daughter one day they were traveling on a road when they came to a pool of water thereupon he placed our Yohanan on his shoulder and carried him across said he to him our learning is fit but our daughters are not on what is your view based shall we say because we learned ten genealogical classes went up from Babylon priests Levites etc did then all the priests Levites and Israelites go up just as some of these were left so were some of those the unfit. Enumerated in the Mishnah left in Babylon he however overlooked what our Eliezer said Ezra did not go up from Babylon until he made it like pure fine flour then he went up all of visited Rab Judah in Pamatai the seeing that our Isaac the son of Rab Judah was grown up yet unmarried he asked him why have you not taken a wife for your son do I then know whence to take one he replied do we know whence we are descended he retorted perhaps from those of whom it is written they ravished the women in Zion the maidens in the cities of Judah and should you answer if a heathen or slave has intercourse with the daughter of an Israelite the issue is fit then perhaps we are descended from those of whom it is written that lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves Sirahim upon their couches now our Jose son of our Hannah said this refers to people who pass water before their beds naked but our Abab derided this if so see what is written therefore shall they now go captive the first that go. Captive because they pass water before their beds naked they shall go captive with the first that go captive but said Arabah this refers to people who eat and drink together join their couches exchange their wives and make their couches foul mass rahim with semen that is not theirs then what shall I do he asked go after the peaceful he replied as the Palestinians make a test when two quarrel they see which become silent first and say this one is of superior birth Rab said silence. Peaceableness in Babylon is the mark of pure birth but that is not so for Rab visited the family of Shilla and examined them surely that means as to their genealogy no by silence he said thus to them examine them whether they are silent peaceable or not Rab Judah said in Rab's name if you see two people continually quarreling there is a blemish of unfitness in one of them and they are providentially not allowed to cleave to each other our Papa the elder said on Rab's authority Babylon. Is healthy messing is dead media is sick and Elam is dying and what is the difference between sick and dying most sick are destined for life most dying are for death how far does Babylon extend Rab said as far as the river Isaac Samuel said as far as the river Wani how far on the upper reaches of Tigris Rab said as far as Baghdad and Awana Samuel said as far as Moxon is and Moxon itself not included surely our high B Abba said in Samuel's name Moxon is as the land of exile in respect to genealogy but as far as and including Moxon how far on the lower reaches of the Tigris said our Samuel as far as lower Apimia there were two Apimias an upper and a lower one was fit in respect to marriage and the other unfit and one parasang lies between them and they their inhabitants were particular with each other and did not even lend fire to each other and the sign whereby you may recognize the unfit is the one that speaks the messing dialect how far does it extend on it? Upper reaches of the Euphrates Rab said to Fort Tolbacani Samuel said to the bridge of Bifrat Ar Yohanan said as far as the fort of Gazam Abbe other state are Joseph cursed Rab's definition only Rab's but not Samuel's but he cursed Rab's and all the more so Samuel's alternatively he cursed only Rab's after all and not Samuel's and the bridge of Bifrat originally lay below Talmud, Mosque Edition but now the Persians have said it higher Abbe said to our Joseph how far does it extend on this SC the west side of the Euphrates said he to him what is your motive in asking on account of Byram the most distinguished families of Pamadai that took wives from Byram our Papa said just as they differ over family purity so they differ over divorce but our Joseph said they differ only in respect to genealogy but as for divorce all agree that it is as far as the second willow clump beyond the bridge Rami B Abba said Havilyama is the glory of Babylon Shunya and Gubia are the Glory of Babylon Rabbanah said Zizura too it was taught likewise Hanan Bipinha said Habilyam is the glory of Babylon Shunya and Gubia and Zizura are the glory of Habilyam said our Papa but nowadays Kudians have become mixed up with them that however is not so one Kudian sought a wife from them but they did not give him what is Habilyam said our Papa the Euphrates land near Borsif a certain man said I come from Shot Mishat our Isaac Napaha stood up on his feet and declared Shot. Mishat lies between the rivers and what if it is situated between the rivers said Abe in the name of our Hamabi Akba in the name of our Jose son of our Hanan between the rivers is as the exile SC Babylon in respect of genealogy and where is that situated said our Yohanan from IHI to Kira and upwards but our Yohanan said the upper limit of Babylon is as far as the fort of Gidimah said Abe strip issues beyond that limit
Moxon and three ribs were in his mouth between his teeth, said Aryohan, and this refers to Holwan Adyabani and Nisabin, which it Persia sometimes swallowed and sometimes spat out, and behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, our Joseph recited. This refers to the Persians who eat and drink like a bear, are fleshy like a bear, overgrown with hair like a bear, and have no rest like a bear. When RMI saw a Persian writing, he would say, There is a wandering bear, Rabbi said to Levi, Shumi the Persians. They are like the armies of the house of David, he replied, Shumi the Kubers, they are like the destroying angels, Shumi the Ishmaelites, they are like the demons of the privy, Shumi the scholars of Babylon, they are like the ministering angels. When Rabbi was dying, he said, There is a town, Humania, in Babylon, which consists entirely of Ammonites, there is Miseria in Babylon, consisting entirely of Mazarim, there is Girka in Babylon, which contains two brothers who interchange their wives there. Is a bird hot in Babylon today? They have turned away from the Almighty. A fish hunt overflowed on the Sabbath, and they went and caught the fish on the Sabbath. Whereat Arahi, son of Arjosai, declared the band against them, and they renounced Judaism. There is a fort Agam in Babylon, wherein dwells Adabi Ahab Talmud. Mosque Kiddush and B today. He sits in Abraham's lap today. Rab Judah was born in Babylon, for a master said, When Arahi died, Rabbi was born. When Rabbi died, Rab Judah was born. When Rab Judah died, Rabbi was born. When Rabbi died, Arashi was born. This teaches that a righteous man does not depart from the world until another righteous man like himself is created. As it is said, the sun riseth and the sun goeth down before Eli's son was extinguished. The son of Samuel of Ramoth rose. As it is said, and the lamp of God was not yet gone out, and Samuel was laid down, etc. The Lord hath commanded concerning Jacob that they that are round about him should be his adversary, said Rab. Judah e.g. Humania in its relation to Pumdihar and it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelashia the son of Benai died then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said Allah God Rab and Samuel one said it was in his favor the other that it was in his disfavor he who said that it was in his favor explains it as follows for the governor of Messing was Nebuchadnezzar's son-in-law he sent word to him of all the captivity which you have brought for yourself you have sent none to stand before us he wanted to send him of the Israelites but Pelashia son of Benai said to him we who are more worthy of higher rank let us stand before the year and let our slaves go thither thus the prophet cried that he who did good for Israel should die in middle age and he who maintained that it was in his disfavor for it is written moreover the spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house which looked eastward and behold at the door of the gate five and twenty men, and I saw in the midst of them Josania the son of Itzer and Pelashia the son of Benai, princes of the people, and it is said, and he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. Now, from the implication of what is said, and their faces toward the east, do I not know that? Their backs were toward the west. Why then is it stated with their backs toward the temple of the Lord? This teaches that they uncovered themselves and committed a nuisance against the Most High. Therefore, the prophet said, Shall he who did this evil in Israel die peacefully on his bed? It may be proved that it was Samuel who interpreted it to his discredit for our high Abin said in Samuel's name, Moxon is as the exile in respect to genealogy, as for Messi, no fear was entertained for it either. On account of slavery or bastardy, but that the priests who dwelt there were not scrupulous about divorce women. After all, I may tell you that it was Samuel who explained it in his favor. Yet Samuel is consistent with his view, for he said, If one renounces ownership of his slave, he goes out free and does not require a deed of manumission. For it is said, But every man slave that is bought for money, a man slave, but not a woman slave. Hence it means this a slave whose master has authority. Over him is called a slave, a slave whose master has no authority over him is not called a slave. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, This is our mayor's view, but the sages maintain all countries have the legal status of fitness. Amimar permitted Arhu Nabi Nathan to take a wife from Hosea said Arashi to him, On what do you base your ruling? Because Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, This is our mayor's view, but the sages maintain all countries have the legal status of fitness, but the school of Arkahana did. Not learned us and the school of our Papa did not learn us and the school of Arzibid did not learn us. Nevertheless, he did not accept this ruling from him because he had heard it. See his own view from Arzibid of Nihardi. Our rabbis taught Mazarim and Nathanim will become pure in the future. This is our Jose's view. Our Mayor said they will not become pure. Said our Jose to him, but was it not already stated? And I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. Our Mayor replied when it is added, from all your filthiness and from all your idols, it implies, but not from bastardy. Said our Jose to him when it is further said, will I cleanse you? You must say from bastardy too. As for our Mayor, it is well. Hence it is written, and the bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. But according to our Jose, why and the bastard shall dwell in Ashdod? As our Joseph translated it, the house of Israel shall dwell in security in their land where formerly they were as strangers. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, the Halacha. Agrees with our Jose, our Joseph said, had not Rab Judah ruled in Samuel's name that the Halachah is as our Jose Elijah would have come and sent entire gangs away from us. Our rabbis taught a proselyte may marry a mamzareth. This is our Jose's view. Our Judah ruled a proselyte may not marry a mamzareth. A proselyte, a freed slave, and a halal are permitted to marry a priest's daughter. What is our Jose's reason? Assembly Kahal is written five times Talmud. Mosque Kiddush and a one refers to priests, one to levites. One to Israelites, one to permit a mamzareth to intermarry with a shevaki, and one to permit a shevaki to intermarry with an Israelite. As for the assembly of proselytes, it is not designated assembly, but our Judah argues priests and levites are deduced from one assembly, hence one is left in respect of an assembly of proselytes. Alternatively, it indeed is so that the SC priests and levites are two assemblies, but that a mamzareth may intermarry with a shevaki and a shevaki with an Israelite. Is deduced from one assembly, a mamzer shall not enter into the assembly of the Lord. Only a certain mamzer may not enter, but a doubtful mamzer may enter, and again only into a certain assembly he may not enter, but he may enter into a doubtful assembly. Another alternative, these two are two assemblies, but our Judah's opinion is derived from this. For the assembly, there shall be one statute for you and for the GER proselyte that sojourneth with you. But in our Jose's view, one statute breaks across. The subject, a proselyte, a freed slave, and a halal are permitted to marry a priest's daughter. The supports Rab for Rab Judah said in Rab's name, fit women, SC daughters of priests were not admonished against being married to the unfit. Our Zara lectured in Mahuse, a proselyte may marry a mamzer. Thereupon everyone pelted him with stone, said Rabba, is there anyone who lectures us in a place where proselytes abound? Now Rabba lectured in Mahuse, a proselyte may marry a priest's daughter. Whereupon they loaded him with silks, then he lectured to them again. A proselyte is permitted to intermarry with a mamzareth. Said they to him, You have destroyed your first teaching. He replied, I have done what is best for you. If one a proselyte wishes, he can marry your SC a mamzareth. If he wishes, he can marry their SC a priest's daughter. Now the law is a proselyte is permitted to a priest's daughter, and he is permitted to a mamzareth. He is permitted to a priest's daughter. Fit women were not admonished against being married to the unfit, and he is permitted to a mamzareth in accordance with our Jose. Now these are the shevaki who knows, etc. Rabbi said, By biblical law, shevaki is considered fit. What is the reason the majority are fit for her SC the mother, while only a minority are unfit for her? Now if they went to her, then he who separates himself from a mass separates himself from out of the majority. What will you say that she went to them? Then it is Kabo and every. Case of Kabo is as half and half whilst the Torah said a mamzer shall not enter only a certain mamzer may not enter but a doubtful mamzer may enter only into a certain assembly may he not enter but he may enter into a doubtful assembly then what is the reason that they, the rabbis ruled that a shedeki is unfit for fear lest he marry his paternal sister if so a shedeki should not marry a shedekith for fear lest he marry his paternal sister do all such go eternally a whoring then let him not marry the daughter of a shedekith lest he marry his paternal
considered a foundling in the swift current of the river, he is not a foundling in shallow water, he is a foundling in the side passages off public thoroughfares, he is not a foundling in a public thoroughfare, he is a foundling, said Rabba, but in famine years he is not considered a foundling, the stictum of Rabba, to what does it refer, shall we say to a public thoroughfare, because it is in famine years one, the mother is to kill him again if it refers to the side passages off a public thoroughfare. Why particularly famine years it is so even without famine years, but Rabba's dictum was stated in reference to what Rab Judah said in the name of Arab in the name of Arjuda Bizabdi in Rab's name as long as he the exposed child is in the street, his father and mother are believed concerning him, but if he has been gathered in from the street, they are not believed concerning him. What is the reason said Rabba because he has already acquired the name of a foundling, then Rabba also said, but in Famine years, even if he has been gathered in from the street, his father and mother are believed concerning him, are his da said three are believed there and then and these are the foundling a midwife and she who frees her companions from the suspicion of uncleanness. A foundling as stated a midwife as was taught a midwife is believed when she states this one issue first and this one issue second one is that only if she did not go out from the chamber of confinement and return, but if she went out and then returned, she is not believed. Our Eliza said if she was known to have been at her post, she is believed. If not, she is not believed. Wherein do they differ? They differ where she turned her face away. What is the reference to her who frees her companions? For we learned if three women were sleeping in one bed and blood was found under one of them, they are all unclean. If one examined herself and was found to be unclean, she is unclean while the others are clean, said our Hista that. Means that she examined herself forth with our rabbis taught a midwife is believed when she affirms this one is a priest, this one is a Levite, this one a Nathan, this one a Mamzer, one is that only if no protest is raised, but if a protest is raised, she is not believed. What kind of a protest shall we say? A protest by one person, surely our Yohanan said a protest is invalid if made by less than two, hence it means a protest by two. Alternatively, I may say that after all that it was a protest by one. Yet when did our Yohanan say a protest is invalid if made by less than two, only where we have a presumption of fitness, but if there is no presumption of fitness, even one is believed, the vendor is believed when he says to this one I sold it and to this one I did not sell, when is that only if his ware is in his hand, but if his ware is no longer in his hand, he is not believed. Talmud, Mosque edition, then let us see whose money he holds, this arises only when he holds money from both end states. One paid me with my consent and the other against my will and it is not known which was with his consent and which against his will a judge is believed when he says I have ruled in favor of this one I have ruled against that one when is that only if the litigants are yet standing before him but if they are no longer standing before him he is not believed then let us see who holds the judgment writ in favor this arises only if their judgment writ was torn then let us rejudge them it is. A case of the judge's discretion are and said three are believed with respect to a firstborn these are they the midwife the father and the mother the midwife only immediately the mother the first seven days the father for all time as it was taught he shall acknowledge the firstborn i.e. he shall acknowledge him before others hence our Judah said a man is believed when he says the son is my firstborn and just as he is believed when he says the son is my firstborn so is he believed when. He says this is the son of a divorced woman, this is the son of a Haliza, but the sages say he is not believed. Abbasal used to call the Shetaki Biduki what is implied by Biduki, shall we say that we examine his mother and if she maintains I cohabited with a fit person she is believed then with whom does this agree with our Gamaliel but we learned it once for we learned if she an unmarried woman is pregnant and is asked what is the nature of this child and she replies he is from so and so who is a priest our Gamaliel and our Eliza said she is believed our Joshua said we do not live by her words now Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the Halisha agrees with our Gamaliel one is to declare her the mother fit the other is to declare her daughter fit now that is well on the view that he who declares her the mother fit declares the daughter unfit but on the view that he who declares her fit declares her daughter fit too what does Abbasal come to teach us Abbasal's ruling is more Remarkable than Argamaliel's for if from there I might argue it is only there where most men are fit for her but here that most men are unfit for her I might say she is not believed hence it is necessary said Rabbi the Halacha agrees with Abbasal Mishnah all who are forbidden to enter into the assembly may intermarry with each other Arjuna forbids it our Eliezer said certain unfits are permitted to intermarry with certain unfits certain unfits with doubtful unfits doubtful with certain or doubtful with doubtful are forbidden now these are the doubtful Shetaki foundlings and Kuti and Tamara what is meant by all who are forbidden to enter into the assembly shall we say Mamzerim and Nathanim Shetaki and foundlings surely that is taught in the first clause Mamzerim and Nathanim Shetaki and foundlings are permitted to intermarry again when it states Arjuna forbids it to what does this refer shall we say to certain with doubtful but since the last clause states our Eliezer said certain unfits are permitted to intermarry with certain unfits doubtful with certain or doubtful with doubtful are forbidden this proves that our Judah does not hold thus and should you answer our Judah forbids it refers to the marriage of a proselyte and a mamzareth is it then taught a proselyte with a mamzareth all are forbidden to enter into the assembly is taught said Rab Judah Talmud, Mosque Edition B this is its meaning all who are forbidden to enter into the assembly. A priesthood namely a female proselyte less than three years and one day this disagreeing with our Simeon Biohe may intermarry with each other then let us relate it to one age three years and a day so agreeing even with our Simeon Biohe if so its refutation is at its side for we would then argue thus it is only because she is three years and a day but if less than three years and one day since she may enter into the assembly a priest she is forbidden to intermarry with the others but what of a case of her who is less than three years and a day according to our Simeon Biohe who though she may enter into the assembly of priests may yet intermarry with the others but is it a general principle that all who are forbidden to enter into the assembly of priesthood may intermarry with each other but what of a widow, divorced woman, a halala and a zona who are forbidden to enter into the assembly of priesthood and yet may not intermarry with these others furthermore the principle implies but one who is permitted to marry into the priesthood is forbidden to intermarry with these but a proselyte is permitted to a priest's daughter yet also permitted to a mamzareth but said our Nathan Bihashai this is what the Mishnah means one whose daughter a priest may not marry and who is that a proselyte married to a proselyte disagreeing with our Eliza B. Jacob may intermarry with these others now is it a general principle that one whose daughter a priest may not Mary may intermarry with these, but what of the case of a halal who marries an Israelite's daughter? Though a priest may not marry his daughter, yet he may not intermarry with these others. That is no difficulty. Our Tana teaches according to our Dostai Bijuda. But what of a halal who marries a halal? Though a priest may not marry his daughter, yet he may intermarry with these others. Furthermore, the principle implies, but one whose daughter is permitted to marry a priest is forbidden to intermarry with these. But what of a proselyte who marries an Israelite's daughter? Though a priest may marry his daughter, yet he may intermarry with these others. But said our Naman in Rabbi Abba's name here, they differ with respect to a mamzer from a sister and a mamzer from a married woman. The first Tana holds that even a mamzer from a sister is mamzer, while our Judah holds from a married woman it is mamzer, but not from a sister. Then what does he the Tana of our mission inform us? We have already learned it who is Mamzer all who are subject to he shall not enter this is our Akiba's view Simeon the Temanite said whoever involves the penalty of Kareth at the hands of heaven and the Halachah is as his ruling our Joshua said whoever involves the penalty of death by the court but said Rabbi they differ in reference to an Ammonite and a Moabite convert and this is its meaning all who are forbidden to enter into the assembly and who are the an Ammonite and a Moabite proselyte may intermarry with each other if so what is meant by our Judah forbids IT this is its meaning though our Judah forbids a proselyte to intermarry with a Mamzerath that is only a proselyte who is eligible to enter into the assembly but not Ammonite and Moabite proselytes who are not eligible to enter into the assembly or rabbis taught a male aged nine years and a day whether he be an Ammonite Moabite Egyptian or Edomite convert or a Kutian Nathan Halal or Mamzer who has intercourse with it. Daughter of a priest, a Levite, or an Israelite, he disqualifies her. Our Jose said he who seed i.e. issue is
with a widow for our Jose maintains it is like a high priest with a widow just as a high priest with a widow his issue is disqualified and he disqualifies the widow so all whose issue is disqualified disqualify while our Simeon B. Gamaliel maintains it is like a high priest with a widow just as a high priest with a widow all his issue is disqualified so everyone all whose issue even the females are disqualified disqualifies his wife thus excluding Ammonite and Moabite proselytes whose females are eligible to enter into the assembly for a master said an Ammonite shall not enter etc but not an Ammonite a Moabite shall not enter etc but not a Moabite are his daughter said all agree that the widow of a member of a suspected family is unfit for the priesthood for who is the most lenient of these Tanaim are Simeon B. Gamaliel yet he says he whose daughter you may marry you may marry his widow but he whose daughter you may not marry you may not marry his widow what does this exclude it? Excludes the widow of a suspected family teaching that she is unfit for the priesthood. This conflicts with the following Tanaim for we learned our Joshua and our Judah be, but there are testified concerning the widow of a member of a suspected family that she is fit for the priesthood. What is the reason? Because it is a double doubt and a double doubt inclines to a lenient ruling. Certain unfits are permitted to intermarry with certain unfits. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, the Halachagas is R. Eliezer, when I stated it before Samuel, he observed to me, Hillel taught ten genealogical classes went up from Babylon and all are permitted to intermarry. Yet you say that the Halachagas is R. Eliezer. Now both Rab and Samuel are self contradictory, for it was stated if an Aruza becomes pregnant, Rab maintained the child is Mamzer, while Samuel ruled the child is Shedeki and forbidden to a Mamzer. Reverse it, Rab maintained the child is Shedeki and Samuel ruled the child is Mamzer. What is it? Need of two it is necessary for if it were stated in this case of our mission I would say only here does Rab rule thus because the majority are eligible to her but there that the majority are unfit for her I might argue that he agrees with Samuel again if it were stated in the latter case only there does Rab rule thus because he the issue may be imputed to the Aru's but in this the former I would say that he agrees with Samuel hence both are necessary alternatively you need not reverse it after all and what does Rab mean by Mamzer not that he may marry a Mamzer but that he is forbidden to a daughter of Israel now when Samuel rules the child is Shevaki it means that he is forbidden to a daughter of Israel if so that is Rab's view but what is meant by Shevaki that he is silenced from the rights of priesthood surely that is obvious if he is silenced from the rights of an Israelite need it be said from the rights of priesthood but what is meant by Shevaki he is Silence from his father's estate surely that is obvious do we then know who his father is this arises only where he has taken possession alternatively what is meant by Shedeki be he examined that is to say we examine his mother and if she maintains I cohabited with a fit person she is believed with whom does this agree with our Gamaliel but Samuel has already stated it once for we learned if she an unmarried woman was pregnant and was asked what is the nature of this child and she replied he is by so and so who is a priest our Gamaliel and our Eliezer said she is believed our Joshua said we do not live by her words and Rab Judah said in Samuel's name the Halacha agrees with our Gamaliel it is necessary for if I were to deduce from there I would argue there most men are fit for her but here most men are unfit for her I would say she is not believed hence both are necessary it was taught and thus did our Eliezer say Akuti and may not marry Akuti and what is the reason said our Joseph he was treated as a proselyte after ten generations for it was taught a proselyte until ten generations may marry a Mamzareth thereafter he is forbidden to marry a Mamzareth other state he is permitted until the name of heathenism has completely fallen away from him said Abbe to him how compare there it is a proselyte of ancient stock and a recent Mamzareth so it will be said he is an Israelite marrying a Mamzareth whereas here they are both alike but when our Dimi came he said our Eliezer agrees with our Ishmael Talmud, Mosque Hiddish and B and our Ishmael agrees with our Akiva thus our Eliezer agrees with our Ishmael who maintained Kutians are proselytes through fear of lions and our Ishmael agrees with our Akiva who said if a heathen or a slave has intercourse with the daughter of an Israelite the issue is Mamzareth but does our Ishmael hold with our Akiva surely our Yohanan said on our Ishmael's authority how do we know that a heathen or a slave who has intercourse with the daughter of a Priest a Levite or an Israelite disqualifies her because it is said but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child she shall eat of her father's bread this holds good only of one who comes within the ambit of widowhood and divorce thus excluding a heathen or a slave who does not come within the ambit of widowhood and divorce now should you think that he holds with our Akiba if he the issue is Mamzer is it necessary to deduce that he the heathen disqualifies by his intercourse but our Eliezer agrees with our Ishmael who maintained that Kutians are proselytes through fear of lions and he also agrees with our Akiba who said if a heathen or a slave has intercourse with a Jewish the issue is Mamzer yet does our Eliezer hold with our Akiba but our Eliezer said Obet Shammai and Beth Hillel differ with respect to co-wives they agree that Mamzer is only from one who is forbidden on the score of consanguinity on pain of Karath, but when Rabin came he said in it, Name of our high and our Yohanan's name, other state in the name of our Abba Bizabda in our Hannah's name, other state in the name of our Jacob Bed and our Joshua Belibah's name. There are three opposing views in this matter. I or Ishmael holds Kutians are proselytes through fear of lions, and the priests who became mixed up in them were unfit priests, as it is said, and they made unto them from among themselves might saw them priests of the high places whereon Rabbi Bibar had commented from the most unworthy of the people SC priests, and on that account they were disqualified to our Akiva holds Kutians are true proselytes, and the priests who became mixed up in them were fit priests, as it is said, and they made unto them from among themselves priests of the high places which Rabbi Bibar had interpreted from the choicest of the people. Yet why did they interdict them? Because they subjected Urusa to Yubam Talmud, Mosque Hiddish, but exempted married women. What was their interpretation? The wife of the dead shall not marry without hot use unto a stranger. She who sat without shall not marry a stranger, but she who did not sit without may marry a stranger. And our Akiba follows his view, for he maintained there is Mamzer from those who are subject only to negative injunctions. Three some state because they are not thoroughly versed in the minute details of precepts. Who is meant by some state said R E D B Abin it is our Eliezer, for it was taught the unleavened bread of Akutian is permitted and one fulfills his obligation there with on Passover. But our Eliezer forbids it because they are not thoroughly versed in the minute details of precepts. Our Simeon B Gamaliel said every precept which Kutians have adopted they observe it with minute care even more than the Israelites. But here in respect to marriage wherein are they not well versed because they are not well versed in the law of betrothal and divorce. Our Naman said in Rabbi Abba's name a Mamzer by a sister and. A Mamzer by a brother's wife became mixed up among the Makutians. What does he inform us that there is Mamzer from those who are liable to corrupt? Then let one only be taught the actual event happened. Thus Rabbah said, A heathen slave and the bondmaid were mixed up in them. Now on whose account is the interdict on account of the bondmaid? Then let one only be taught the actual event happened. Thus Mishnah, he who marries a priest's daughter, must investigate her descent up to four mothers. Which are eight is her mother and her mother's mother, her mother's paternal grandmother and her mother, her father's mother, and this one's mother, her father's paternal grandmother and her mother. In the case of the daughter of a Levite or an Israelite, one more is added. We make no investigation from the altar and upwards, from the Dukan days and upwards, nor from the Sanhedrin and upwards, and all whose parents were established to have been among the public officers or charity overseers are. Permitted to marry into the priesthood and their descent is not investigated. Our Jose said also whoever was signed as a witness in the old court of Sephiroth are Hanabi and Tigona said also one who was recorded in the king's list of officers. Gamara why are the women investigated but not the men when women quarrel among themselves they quarrel only about immorality so that if there is anything it is not generally known but when men quarrel among themselves they quarrel over birth if there is anything it is generally known now let her to investigate his forebears the supports Rab for Rab Judah said in Rab's name fit women were not admonished not to marry the unfit our Adabi Ahab recited four mothers which are twelve in the very it was taught four mothers which are sixteen now as for our Adabi Ahab it is well Talmud Mosque Hiddish and
All whose parents were not established to have been among the public officers are we to say that judges were not appointed of genealogically unfit persons but the following contradicts it all are fit to adjudicate in civil matters but not all are eligible to judge capital cases now we pondered thereon what does all include and Rab Judah said it includes Mamzer said Abay in Jerusalem and so did Arsimian Bezer reside in Kiddushin of the school of Levi in Jerusalem or charity overseers are permitted to marry into the priesthood what is the reason since they quarrel with people for a master said pledges are taken for charity even on Sabbath Eve if there were a blemish in his family it would be known our Abbey Ahab's host was a proselyte and he and our BB were at variance each claiming I must carry on the administration of the town so they went before our Joseph said he to them we learned it one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over the all appointments which thou Makest must be only from the midst of thy brethren said our Abbey Ahab to him even if his mother is a Jewess if his mother is a Jewess he replied we apply to him from the midst of thy brethren therefore let our BB who is a great man give his attention to heavenly matters and do you sir pay attention to affairs of the town said Abbey therefore when one provides a scholar with residence in his boarding house let him provide it for one like our Abbey Ahab who is able to argue in his favor are Zerah took trouble over them, S.C. proselytes, Rabbi Abu took trouble over them in the West Palestine, not even an inspector of measures was appointed of them in Nihardia, not even an irrigation superintendent was appointed of them, our Jose said even one who was etc. What is the reason they first investigated and then allowed them to attest our hand of B. Antigonus etc. Rab Judah said in Samuel's name this refers to the officers in the armies of the house of David said our Joseph what verse teaches this and they who were reckoned by genealogy for service in war and what is the reason said Rab Judah in Rab's name in order that their own merit and the merit of their fathers might aid them but there was zealot the Ammonite surely that means that he was descended from Ammon know that he dwelt in Ammon but there was Uriah the Hittite surely that means that he was descended from Hate know that he dwelt among the Hittites but there was Hittite the Gittite and should you answer here to it? Means that he dwelt in Gath, but Arnam and said Itai the Gittite came and destroyed it. Moreover, Rab Judah said in Rab's name, David had four hundred children, all the offsprings of beautiful women, all with hair trimmed in front and locks growing long, and all sat in golden chariots and went at the head of armies. And they were the strong men of the house of David. They merely went to terrorize the opposing armies. Talmud, Moskidish, and Amisha, the daughter of a male Halal, is unfit for the priesthood for all time. If an Israelite marries a Halal, his daughter is fit for the priesthood. If a Halal marries the daughter of an Israelite, his daughter is unfit for the priesthood. Our Judah said, The daughter of a male proselyte is as the daughter of a male Halal. Our Elizabeth Jacob said, If an Israelite marries a female proselyte, his daughter is fit for the priesthood. And if a male proselyte marries the daughter of an Israelite, his daughter is fit for the priesthood. But if a male proselyte Marries a female proselyte, his daughter is unfit for the priesthood. The same law applies to a proselyte as to freed slaves, even unto ten generations. His daughter is unfit unless his mother is of Israelite stock. Our Jose said also, if a male proselyte marries a female proselyte, his daughter is fit for the priesthood. Tomorrow I state for all time, I might think it is analogous to an Egyptian and an Edomite, just as there after three generations the interdict is lifted, so here too after three generations the daughter is fit for the priesthood. Therefore we are informed otherwise, if an Israelite marries a halal, how do we know it? Said our Yohanan on the authority of our Ishmael, here it is stated, and he shall not profane his seat among his people, and there it is stated, he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, just as their males, but not females, so here two males, but not females, if so let a high priest's daughter from a widow be permitted to marry a priestess. It then written and he shall not profane his son his seed is written this he shall not profane his seed among his people then let the daughter of his son be permitted it is written he shall not profane his seed hence his seed is assimilated to himself just as his own daughter is unfit so is his son's daughter unfit then let his daughter's daughter too be interdicted if so what is affected by the Gezerish Hawaii of Halal marries the daughter of an Israelite his daughter is unfit but that is stated in the first clause the daughter of a male Halal is unfit for the priesthood for all time because the former clause teaches if an Israelite marries a Halal the latter clause also states if a Halal marries the daughter of an Israelite our mission does not agree with our Dost Habi Judah for it was taught our Dost Habi Judah said just as the sons of Israel are amikoi of purification for female Halalot so are the daughters of Israel amikoi of purification for male Halalim. What is our dose Tibi? Our Judah's reason scripture saith he shall not profane his seed among his people, he profanes his seed among one people, but not among two peoples. Our rabbis taught he shall not profane his seed. I know it only of his seed. How do I know it of herself? Say a minority of his seed that committed no sin is profane. She who commits sin, how much the more so that she is profaned, let him himself refute it. He commits sin, yet he is not profaned as for himself, that is because he is not profaned in all other cases. Will you say the same of her seeing that she is profaned in all other cases? And should you desire to object, then one can answer scripture saith he shall not profane his seed, which means this one shall not become profaned who was originally fit and is not profaned. What is meant by and should you desire to object this and should you say one can refute it thus as for his seed, that is because he is conceived in sin, therefore scripture saith he shall. Not profane to see this one shall not become profane who was originally fit and is now profane. Our rabbis taught what is a halal one who was born of unfit persons. What is meant by unfit persons shall we say unfit for him? But what of him who takes back his divorced wife though she is unfit for him? Yet her children are fit as it is written. She is an abomination. She is an abomination. But her children are no abomination. Said Rab Judah. This is its meaning. What is a halal one who was born of a priestly disqualification? Only one who was born of such a forbidden union, but not one who was not born thus. But what of a widow, a divorced woman, or a zona who were not born thus? And yet each is a halal. Said Rab. This is its meaning. Who is a halal mentioned that never enjoyed the period of eligibility? She who was born of a priestly disqualification. What is the meaning of mentioned? Said our Isaac B. Abin. This is its meaning. Who is a halal primarily disqualified by? The words of the Torah and who needs no rabbinical definition one who was born of a priestly disqualification or rabbis taught if a high priest has intercourse with a widow a widow a widow he incurs only one penalty if a priest has intercourse with a divorced woman a divorced woman a divorced woman he incurs only one penalty if he has intercourse with a widow a divorced and profane woman and harlot zona if they, these disqualifications are in this order he the high priest is liable for each intercourse but if she first committed harlotry was then profane subsequently divorced and finally widowed he incurs only one penalty the master said if a high priest has intercourse with a widow a widow a widow he incurs only one penalty how is this widow meant shall we say that he has intercourse with Reuben's widow with Simeon's widow and with Levi's widow why does he incur only one penalty Talmud Moskidish and B. behold they are separate persons and separate names. Again, if he has intercourse three times with the same widow, what are the circumstances? If he was not warned, it is obvious that he incurs only one penalty. But if he was warned for each, why does he incur only one penalty? Did we not learn if a Nazir drinks wine all day, he incurs only one penalty? If he is admonished, do not drink, do not drink, and he drinks, he is liable for each. This arises only if he has intercourse with Reuben's widow, who was Simeon's widow, who had been Levi's widow, I might think. Behold, they are separate names. We are therefore told that we require separate persons, which is absent. If he has intercourse with a widow, divorced, and profane woman, and harlot, what is this Tana's opinion? If he holds one prohibition, can fall on another, then it is the reverse too. Whilst if he holds one prohibition, cannot fall on another, it is not so even in this order, said Robert. This Tana does not hold that one prohibition can fall upon another, but he does accept the validity of a. Prohibition of wider scope thus a widow is interdicted to a high priest but permitted to an ordinary priest when she becomes divorced since a prohibition is added in respect of an ordinary priest it is added in respect of a high priest yet she is still permitted to partake of terima when she becomes profane since a prohibition of eating terima is added a prohibition is added in respect of a high priest but what wider prohibition is there on account of Zona said Arham a son of Arkatna. Because the designation of Harlot reason it disqualifies in
Sister, he certainly renders her a zona, but does he render her a halala too or not? Do we says it follows a minority if one becomes a halala by those who are forbidden to her by only negative injunctions? How much more so by those who are forbidden on pain of kareth or perhaps a halala results from a priestly interdict? Only he answered a halala results from a priestly interdict. Only rap said, How do we know this ruling stated by the rabbis that a halala is only from a priestly interdict? Because it was taught let a divorced woman not be stated in reference to a high priest and it could be inferred a minority from an ordinary priest. For I would argue if she is forbidden to an ordinary priest, can there be a question of a high priest? Why then is it stated to teach just as a divorced woman is distinct from zona and halala in respect of an ordinary priest? So is she distinct in reference to a high priest? But that is obvious, is it the sanctity of a high priest in any? Way diminished, but it is rather to teach just as a divorced woman is distinct from Zona and Halala in respect of an ordinary priest, so is a widow distinct from a divorced woman a Halala and a Zona in respect of a high priest. Why is Halala stated to shoot that Halala results from a priestly interdict? Only why is Zona stated? Zona is stated here and it is also stated there just as here his seat is profane, so there too his seat is profane. Said Arashi, therefore, if a priest has intercourse with his sister Talmud, Moskidish, and he renders her Zona not Halala, but if he again has intercourse with her, he renders her Halala. Rab Judah said, if a high priest has intercourse with a widow, he is flagellated twice once on account of he shall not take and again on account of he shall not profane, then let him be flagellated on account of he shall not profane his seat. This means if he does not consummate the intercourse, Rabba raised an objection if a high priest has. Intercourse with a widow and divorced woman, he is flagellated on account of two injunctions. Surely that means two injunctions and no more, no two injunctions for the one and two for the other. If so, consider the second clause for a divorced woman and Halyza, he is liable only on account of one. This is its meaning, he is liable only on account of one designation. Yet, after all, for two injunctions, now is a Halyza forbidden only by rabbinical law. Surely it was taught they shall not take a woman that is a harlot and a woman that is divorced. I know it only of a divorced woman. How do I know it of a Halyza? Because it is said, and a woman it is rabbinical, and the verse is a mere support. Abbe said, when he betrothed, he is flagellated, and when he cohabits, he is flagellated. When he betrothed, he is flagellated on account of he shall not take. When he cohabits, he is flagellated on account of he shall not profane. Rabbi said, if he cohabits, he is flagellated. If he does not cohabit, he is. Not flagellated at all because it is written he shall not take and he shall not profane. Why must he not take in order that he shall not profane? And Abbe admits in the case of one who remarries his divorced wife that if he betrothes but does not cohabit, he is not flagellated. The divine law saith he may not take her again to be his wife, which is absent here. And Rabbi admits in respect to a high priest with a widow that if he cohabits without betrothing, he is flagellated. The divine law saith and he shall not profane his seed among his people, whereas he has profaned it. And both admit in the case of one who takes back his divorced wife that if he cohabits without betrothal, he is not flagellated. The Torah forbade it by way of marriage. Arjuda said the daughter of a male proselyte is like the daughter of a halal. It was taught Arjuda said the daughter of a male proselyte is like the daughter of a male halal. And logic proves it if a halal who though he comes from a fit origin yet. His daughter is unfit and a proselyte who comes from an unfit origin. His daughter is surely unfit as for a halal. It may be argued that is because his own formation is in sin. Then let the union of a high priest with a widow prove it for his formation was not in sin. Yet his daughter is unfit as for a high priest and a widow. That is because his cohabitation was in sin. Then let a halal prove it. And so the argument revolves. The distinguishing feature of one is not that of the other. The feature common to both is that they are not as the majority of the community. So also do I just the proselyte who is not as the majority of the community and his daughter is unfit. No, what is the feature common to both that they have an element of sin? Do not say let the union of a high priest with a widow prove it, but say let a converted Egyptian of the first generation prove it as for a converted Egyptian of the first generation. That is because he is ineligible to enter into the assembly at. All then let a halal prove it and so the argument revolves the distinguishing feature of one not being that of the other the feature common to both is that they are not as the majority of the congregation and their daughter is unfit so do I also this a proselyte who is not as the majority of the community and his daughter is unfit no as for the feature common to both it is that they disqualify by their intercourse and Arjuda a proselyte who disqualifies by his intercourse and he deduces it by analogy from this very argument our Eliza B. Jacob said a proselyte etc it was taught our Simeon B.O. he said a female proselyte less than three years and a day is eligible to the priesthood as it is said but all the women children keep alive for yourselves now is not Phinehas among them but the rabbis interpret keep them alive for yourselves as bondmen and bondwomen now all deduce from the same verse neither shall they take for their wives a widow nor her that is put away I Divorced, but they shall take virgins of the seed of the house of Israel. Arjuda holds all the seed must be from Israel. Our Eliezer B. Jacob holds of the seed implies even part of the seed. Our Jose holds whoever was conceived in Israel. Our Simeon B.O.A. holds it means one whose virginity matured in Israel. Our Naman said to Rabbi Talmud, Moskid and be this verse. The first part refers to a high priest and the second to an ordinary priest. Yes, he replied, and is a verse thus written. Even so he replied, for it is written, and the lamp of God was not yet gone out, and Samuel was laid down to sleep in the temple of the Lord, but sitting was permitted in the temple only to the kings of the Davidic dynasty. Hence it must mean, and the lamp of God was not yet gone out in the temple of the Lord, and Samuel was laid down in his place, and a widow that is a widow of a priest, they shall take only of a priest, but not of an Israelite. This is the meaning of a priest, they shall take those of the other priests may take it was taught likewise of the priests they shall take i.e. those of the other priests may take Arjuda interpreted of those who can give their daughters in marriage to the priesthood they may take Arjuda is in harmony with his view for he said the daughter of a male proselyte is as the daughter of a male halal when you may marry his daughter you may marry his widow and when you may not marry his daughter you may not marry his widow our Jose said also if a male proselyte marries a female proselyte our Hamdana said on all his authority the Halachah is as our Jose and Rabbi Barhana said likewise the Halachah is as our Jose but since the day that the temple was destroyed the priests have insisted on a superior status in accordance with our Eliezer B. Jacob Arnaman said who not told me if he a priest comes to take counsel we give him a ruling in accordance with our Eliezer B. Jacob but if he marries we do not compel him to divorce her in accordance with our Jose. Mishnah, if a man declares the son of mine is a mamzer, he is disbelieved, and even if both the husband and wife admit that the child within her is mamzer, they are disbelieved. Arjuna said they are believed. Gemara, why state even if both etc. he leads to a climax, it goes without saying that he, the father who cannot be certain thereof, is disbelieved, but even she, the mother who is certain, is also disbelieved, and it goes without saying that they are disbelieved where he, the child, enjoys the presumption of fitness. But even in the case of an embryo who does not enjoy the presumption of fitness, they are still disbelieved. Arjuna said they are believed as it was taught, he shall acknowledge the firstborn, i.e., he shall acknowledge him before others. Hence, Arjuna said a man is believed when he says the son is my firstborn, and just as he is believed when he says the son is my firstborn, so is he also believed when he says this is the son of a divorced woman, this is the Son of Halyza, but the sages say he is not believed. Our Naman B. Isaac asked Rabbi as for Arjuna, it is well for that reason it is written he shall acknowledge, but on the view of the rabbis, what is the purpose of he shall acknowledge where acknowledgement is necessary in respect of what is he believed to give him a double portion that is obvious and what is the need of a verse for if he desired to make him a gift, could he not do so? This refers to property which he the father inherits only. Subsequently, but according to our Meir who maintained one can transmit property that is not existent, what is the purpose of he shall acknowledge where he inherits it while he was dying? Mishnah, if a man authorizes his agent to give his daughter in betrothal and then he himself goes and gives her in betrothal to another, if the betrothal by him was first, his betrothal is valid, if the agent's was first, the latter's betrothal is valid, but if it is unknown, Talmud, Moskid, and both must give her. A divorce, but if
Months Rab said behold she stands a Bogoreth before us since she is now a Bogoreth we assume she was a Bogoreth in the morning too but Samuel maintains she may have brought the evidences of Bogoreth only just now now according to Samuel wherein does it differ from Mikwe for we learned if a Mikwe is measured and found to be deficient all acts of purification which have heretofore been effected through it whether in private or in public ground are unclean there it is different because we can argue let the unclean person or thing stand in his presumptive status and say that he did not perform Hebelah on the contrary let the Mikwe stand in his presumptive status and say that it was not deficient but it is deficient before you then here too she stands a Bogoreth before you she has only just now matured then there too let us say only just now has it become deficient there there are two unfavorable conditions here there is only one again according to Samuel wherein does it differ from barrel for it was taught if one was wont to examine a barrel of wine in order continually to separate terimah for other barrels in reliance thereon and then it was found to be acid for full three days it is certain thereafter it is doubtful now we post barrel to Mikwe why is the latter certain and the former doubtful and our hand of Sir answered who is the authority of the Beritha about the barrel our Simeon who also in the case of the Mikwe makes it doubtful. For it was taught all acts of purification which have been heretofore effected through it whether in private or in public ground are unclean our Simeon ruled in public ground they are clean in private ground they are in suspense but in the view of the rabbis it is retrospectively tebal there it is different because one can say let the tebal stand in its presumptive status and say that it was not made fit on the contrary let the wine stand in its presumptive status and say that it had not turned. Acid but lo it is acid before you then here too she stands a bogoreth before you she has only just now become a bogoreth then here too let us say it has only just now turned acid there there are two unfavorable conditions but here there is only one shall we say it is a dispute of Tanim Talmud, Mos Kiddush and before it was taught who can collect from whom he can collect from them without proof but they cannot collect from him without proof this is our Jacob's view our Nathan said if he is well he must produce proof that he was sick and if he is sick they must produce proof that he was well shall we say that Rab rules in accordance with our Nathan while Samuel agrees with our Jacob Rab can tell you I agree even with our Jacob our Jacob rules thus only there since one can say let the money stand in its presumptive ownership but here can we say let the body stand in its presumptive state and Samuel can say I agree even with our Nathan our Nathan rules thus only there since people in General are presumed to be well hence he who withdraws himself from the generality must bring proof but here does she then withdraw herself from a previous presumptive status shall we say that it is a dispute of these ten aim for it was taught if her father gives her in betrothal on the road while she betrothes herself in the town and she is a bogoreth one buried the top behold she stands a bogoreth before us and another taught we fear the validity of the condition of both surely one agrees with Rab and the other with Samuel no both agree with Samuel here she repudiates him her father there she does not then let us say since the buried do not differ the Amram to do not differ now is that reasonable surely our Joseph son of Armanasia of Dabble gave a practical ruling in accordance with Rab whereupon Samuel was offended and exclaimed for everyone wisdom is meted out in a small measure but for the scholar it was meted out in a large measure now should you think that they do not differ why was he offended perhaps he gave his ruling where she repudiated him her father Marzitra said to Arashi thus did Amimar say the law is as Samuel but Arashi said the law agrees with Rab and the final ruling is the law is as Rab Mishnah if a man emigrated overseas together with his wife and then he his wife and his children returned and he declared behold this is a woman who emigrated with me overseas and these are her children he need not bring proof in respect of the woman or of the children if he declares she died abroad and these are her children he must bring proof of the children but not of the woman if he said I married a woman overseas and behold this is she and these are her children he must bring proof of the woman but not of the children if he said she died and these are her children he must bring proof of the woman and of the children Demar Rabbi son of Arhuna said and in all cases it means that they cling to her our rabbis taught. If a man declares I married a woman overseas he must bring proof about the woman but not about the children he must bring proof about the adults but not about the minors now what is this said in the case of one wife but in the case of two wives he must bring proof about the woman and about the children whether adults or minors Resh Lakish said Talmud, Mos Kiddush and this was taught only in respect of sanctities of the border but not in respect of genealogy but our Yohanan maintained even in respect of genealogy now our Yohanan is in accord with his view elsewhere for our high B Abba said in our Yohanan's name we flagellate on the strength of presumption we stone and burn on the strength of presumption but we do not burn terima on the strength of presumption we flagellate on the strength of presumption as Rab Judah for Rab Judah said if a woman was presumed in it by her neighbors her husband is flagellated on her account as an we stone and burn on the strength of Presumption is Rabbi son of Arhunaf, or Rabbi son of Arhunaf said if a man, woman, boy, and girl lived in a house together, they are stoned and burnt on each other's account. Our Simeon Bipas he said in our Joshua B. Levi's name on Barkipur's authority, it once happened that a woman came to Jerusalem carrying an infant on her back. She brought him up and he had intercourse with her, whereupon they were brought before Bethdin and stoned, not because he was definitely her son, but because he clung to her. But we do not burn Terimah on the strength of presumption, for our Simeon B. Lakish said we burn Terimah on the strength of presumption, whereas our Yohanan maintained we do not now they are in accord with their opinions, for we learned if a child is found at the side of a doe and there is dough in his hand, our Meir declares it clean, the sages declare it unclean because it is a child's nature to devil. Now we pondered thereon what is our Meir's reason, and the answer was he holds most children devil. Yet there is a minority who do not while the dose stands in the presumption of cleanness hence combine the minority with the presumption and the majority is weakened but the rabbis argue the minority is as non-existent now where there are a majority and a presumption opposed to each other the majority is stronger said Resh Lakish on Arashai's authority that is the presumption on the strength of which Terimah is burnt are Yohanan maintained this is not the presumption on the strength of which Terimah is burnt then on account of which presumption is Terimah burnt in our Yohanan's opinion as it was taught if there is a dough in a house wherein reptiles and frogs breed and pieces are found in the dough if they are mostly reptiles it is unclean if mostly frogs it is clean it was taught in accordance with our Yohanan two things lack the intelligence to be questioned yet the sages accounted them as though they possess it a child and another child has stated and another what is it if there is dough in a house which contains fowls and unclean fluid and holes are found Talmud, Mos Kiddush and be all over the dough the matter is in suspense it may neither be eaten as clean nor burnt as unclean our Joshua B. Levi said we learned this only of white i.e. colorless liquid but as for red liquid had it the fowl picked at the dough it would certainly be known yet perhaps the dough absorbed it said are you and Gurib I heard this thing but not its explanation which is this we learned. This only of clear fluid in which a child's reflection may be seen but not of turbid fluid Mishnah a man may not be alone with two women but one woman may be alone with two men our Simeon said even one man may be alone with two women if his wife is with him and he may sleep with them in and because his wife washes him a man may be alone with his mother and his daughter and he may sleep with them in immediate bodily contact but when they grow up she must sleep in her garment and he in his. Gemara, what is the reason Tana de Belia who states because women are temperamentally lightheaded? How do we know it said our Yohanan on the authority of our Ishmael? Where do we find an allusion to Yuhad in the Torah? For it is written, if thy brother the son of thy mother entice thee, etc., does then only a mother's son entice and not a father's son? But it is to tell you a son may be alone with his mother, but not with any other woman interdicted in the Torah. To what does the plain meaning of it? Verse refer said Abbe, its scripture proceeds to a climax, thus it goes without saying that one should disregard his father's son, for he may hate him and give him evil counsel. But as for his mother's son who does not hate him, I might say let him obey him, therefore we are told that it is not so. Our mission does not agree with Abbasal, for it was taught within the first thirty days of a child's birth it may be carried out for burial in one's bosom and buried by one woman and two men, but not by one man and two women Abbasal said even by one man and two women you may even say that it agrees with Abbasal in the time of grief one's passions are subdued but the rabbis h
intercourse with her on the way to and he the husband himself that is three there it is in order that they may be witnesses against him Rab and Rab Judah were walking on a road and a woman was walking in front of them said Rab to Rab Judah lift your feet before Gehenna but you yourself said that in the case of respectable people it is well he protested who says that respectable people mean such as you and I you retorted and such as we G R Hanan of Pappy and his companions Rab said we flagellate on account of privacy but do not interdict on account of Samar as she said this was said only of privacy with an unmarried woman but not with a married woman lest a stigma be cast upon her children Marzitra punished and proclaimed Arnaman of Parahenshia said to Arashi you too should punish and proclaim some may hear of the one but not of the other Rab said we flagellate on account of an evil rumor because it is said nay all my sons for it is no good report that I hear Marzitra laid a court about his shoulders and recited to him name my sons Rabbi said if her husband is in town we have no fear on account of privacy our Joseph said if the door opens to the street we have no fear on account of privacy our BB visited our Joseph having dined he said to them the servants remove the ladder from under BB but Rabbi said if her husband is in town we have no fear on account of privacy our BB was different because she was his best friend and intimate with him our Kahana said if there are men without IE in the outer chamber and women within we have no fear of privacy if there are men in the inner chamber and women in the outer we have fear of privacy in the very the reverse was taught said Abay now that our Kahana ruled us while the very the taught the reverse let us act stringently Abay made a partition of Jugs Rabba made a partition of Cain's Abin said the Sarist spot of the year is a festival certain redeemed captive women came to Nihardia they were taken to the house of Aram Rome the pious and the ladder was removed from under them as one passed by a light fell on the sky lights thereupon Aram Rome seized the ladder which ten men could not raise and he alone set it up and proceeded to ascend when he had gone halfway up the ladder he stayed his feet and cried out of fire at Aram Rome's the rabbis came and reproved him we have shamed you said he to them better that you shame Aram in this world than that you be ashamed of him in the next he then adjured it the tempter to go forth from him and it issued from him in the shape of a fiery column said he to it see you are fire and I am flesh yet I am stronger than you are mayor used to scoff at transgressors one day Satan appeared to him in the guise of a woman on the opposite bank of the river as there was no fairy he seized the rope and proceeded across when he had reached halfway along the rope he Satan let him go saying had they not proclaimed in heaven take heed of Armadir and his learning I would have valued your life at 2 my HSR Akiba used to scoff at transgressors one day Satan appeared to him as a woman on the top of a palm tree grasping the tree he went climbing up but when he reached halfway up the tree he Satan let him go saying had they not proclaimed in heaven take heed of our Akiba and his learning I would have valued your life at 2 my HS Palomo used to say every day an arrow in Satan's eyes one day it was the eve of the day of atonement he disguised himself as a poor man and went and called out at his door so bread was taken out to him on such a day he pleaded when everyone is within shall I be without thereupon he was taken in and bread was offered him on a day like this he urged when everyone sits at table shall I sit alone he was led and sat down at the table as he sat his body was covered with suppurating sores and he was behaving repulsively sit properly he rebuked him Talmud, Moskidish and B said he give me a glass of liquor and one was Given him he coughed and spat his phlegm into it they scolded him whereupon he swooned and died then they the household heard people crying out Palomo has killed a man Palomo has killed a man fleeing he hid in a privy he Satan followed him and he Palomo fell before him seeing how he was suffering he disclosed his identity and said to him why have you always spoken thus then how am I to speak you should say the merciful rebuke Satan every time our high B Abba fell upon his face he used to say the merciful save us from the tempter one day his wife heard him let us see she reflected it is so many years that he has held aloof from me why then should he pray thus one day while he was studying in his garden she adorned herself and repeatedly walked up and down before him who are you he demanded I am Hurtha and have returned today she replied he desired her said she to him bring me that pomegranate from the uppermost bow he jumped up went and brought it to her when he re Entered his house, his wife was firing the oven whereupon he ascended and sat in it. What means that she demanded? He told her what had befallen it was as she assured him, but he paid no heed to her until she gave him proof. Nevertheless, said he, My intention was evil that righteous man are high be as she fasted all his life until he died thereof, even as it was taught her husband hath made then void, and the Lord shall forgive her of whom does the writ speak of a woman who made a Nazi right now and her husband heard of it and annulled it, but though she was unaware that her husband had annulled it, she drank wine and defiled herself through the dead. When our came to this verse, he wept if of him who intended to eat swine's flesh, but chanced upon sheep's flesh, yet the Torah decreed that he requires atonement. How much more so of him who intended to eat swine's flesh and actually ate swine's flesh? Similarly, you read though he knew it not yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity when our Akiba came to this verse he wept if of him who intended to eat human but chanced upon Heleb yet the Torah said though he knew it not yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity how much more so of him who intended to eat Heleb and actually ate Heleb is he be Judah said though he knew it not yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity for this thing all grief stricken must grieve a man may be alone with his mother Rab Judah said in R.C.'s name a man may be alone with his sister and well with his mother and daughter alone when he stated it in Samuel's presence he said one may not be alone with any person interdicted in the Torah and even with an animal we learned a man may be alone with his mother and his daughter and he may sleep with them in immediate bodily contact this refutes Samuel Samuel can answer you and on your view how explain what was taught as regards a sister a mother-in-law and all other forbidden relations of the Torah one may be alone with them only when there are witnesses thus only in the presence of witnesses but not otherwise but you must say it is a controversy of Tanaim for it was taught Armadir said guard me from my daughter Artarfan said guard me from my daughter-in-law but a certain disciple scoffed at him said Arabah on the authority of our Hannah Begamaliel it did not take long before that disciple offended through his mother-in-law even with an animal Abbe cleared them from the whole field Arshis hate had them put on the other side of the bridge Arhanan of Nihardia visited Arkahana at Pumnihara seeing him sitting and studying while an animal stood before him he said to him do you not agree even with an animal I was thoughtless he replied Rabbah said a man may be alone with two Yegum, two co-wives a woman and her mother-in-law woman and her mother-in-law's daughter a woman and her husband's daughter and with a woman and a child who knows the meaning of intercourse but will not yield herself there to when they grow up she must sleep in her garment etc. What is the age said R.A. the son of R.A.Z. in R.C.'s name for a girl nine years and a day for a boy twelve years and a day others state for a girl twelve years and a day for a boy thirteen years and a day and in both cases they must be breast fashioned and thine hair was grown Raphram B. Papa said in R.H.'s name this was taught only of one a girl who is not shy of standing nude before him her father but if she is shy of standing nude before him it is forbidden for them to sleep in bodily contact what is the reason temptation stirs her R.A.H.B. Abba visited R.H.'s daughter's son-in-law and took his granddaughter and set her on his lap said he to him do you not know that she is betrothed and you have violated Rab's dictum for Rabba Judah said in Rab's name other state R.L.A.Z. said one may not betroth his daughter while she is a minor but must wait until she grows up and says I want so and so but you two have transgressed. Samuel's ruling for Samuel said one must not handle a woman I agree with Samuel's other dictum he retorted for Samuel said Talmud, Moskidish and all is to be done for the sake of heaven mission an unmarried man must not be an elementary teacher nor may a woman be an elementary teacher our Eliezer said one also who has no wife must not be an elementary teacher our Judah said an unmarried man must not tend cattle nor may two unmarried men sleep together under the same cover but the sages permitted tomorrow what is the reason shall we say on account of the children surely it was taught said they to our Judah Israel are not suspected of either pederasty or bestiality but an unmarried man is forbidden on account of the children's mothers and a woman on account of their fathers our Eliezer said one also who has no wife the scholars propounded does it mean one who has no wife at all or whose wife does not live with him come and here also one who has a wife but she
But all other professions are not so for when a man comes to sickness or old age or suffering and cannot engage in his craft he must die of starvation whereas the Torah is not so for it guards him from all evil in his youth and gives him a future and hope in his old age of his youth what is said but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength of his old age what is said they shall still bring forth fruit in old age and thus it is said of our father Abraham and Abraham was old and the Lord blessed Abraham with everything we find that our father Abraham observed the whole Torah before it was given for it is said because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments my statutes and my laws Gemara our rabbis taught he whose business is with women has a bad character e.g. goldsmiths carters handmill cleaners peddlers wool dressers barbers launderers bloodletters bath attendants and tanners of these neither a king nor a high priest may be appointed what is the reason not because they are unfit but because their profession is mean our rabbis taught ten things were said of a blood letter he walks on his side has a conceited spirit and leans back when sitting has a grudging eye and an evil eye he eats much and excretes little and he is suspected of adultery robbery and bloodshed bark for it taught one should always teach his son a clean and easy craft what is it said rab judah talmud mosque kiddush and be quilting it was taught rabbi said no craft can disappear from the world happy is he who sees his parents in a superior craft and woe to him who sees his parents in a mean craft the world cannot exist without a perfume maker and without a tanner happy is he whose craft is that of a perfume maker and woe to him who is a tanner by trade the world cannot exist without males and without females happy is he whose children are males and woe to him whose children are females are said one should always teach his son a clean and easy craft and Earnestly pray to him to whom all wealth and property belong, for neither poverty nor wealth comes from one's calling, but from him to whom wealth and property belong, as it is said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Seth, the Lord of hosts, our Simeon B. Eliezer said, Have you ever seen, etc.? It was taught, our Simeon B. Eliezer said, In my whole lifetime, I have not seen a deer engaged in gathering fruits, a lion carrying burdens, or a fox as a shopkeeper, yet they are sustained without trouble, though. They were created only to serve me, whereas I was created to serve my Maker. Now, if these who were created only to serve me are sustained without trouble, how much more so should I be sustained without trouble? I who was created to serve my Maker, but it is because I have acted evilly and destroyed my livelihood, as it is said, Your iniquities have turned away, these things are near, said, I abandoned every trade, etc. It was taught, our near, said, I abandoned all trades in the world and teach my son only. Torah for every trade in the world stands a man instead only in his youth but in his old age he is exposed to hunger but the Torah is not so it stands by him in his youth and gives him a future and hope in his old age of the time of his youth what is said but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles of his old age what is said they shall still bring forth fruit in old age they shall be full of sap and green.